Testing. 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 Hello. Check one two. Check. I can still hear. Check one two. Check one two. Check one two. Check. Check one. Check. Sure. Man, I didn't. Testing. testing. Mike one testing. Check one, two, check one, two, three, four, ten. Check one, two, still static, still static. Um, okay. Can you guys hear? I'm going to plug the headset back in. Check one two check 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 one two check check yeah. 
don't don't swear. We're on TV. TV. You cannot swear. Dur. Woman. Woman. Check one, two, check, check. This is the one. Check one, two, check, 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 check. Check one. Check. I really don't think I hear myself. Check one, two, test, test, test. Both up, all the way up. Check one, two, test, test, test. Check one, two. Yeah, I can, I can hear myself actually. I can hear myself, I can't hear you. Check one. Check, check. Okay, I was. I can sort of hear it. It's, yeah, it's a little low. I thought I was hearing it off the TV. Alright. Alright. Testing. 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 That went way, way fast. I, I bet. <laughs> I've never seen, could you imagine, like, when you see people, like, your trampoline imagine accident? Imagine your kneecap going right here, and you'd have a hole in the leg right here. Ow. That, that hurts. The gym, gymnastics thing, where you see that trampoline, like, their leg breaks, and it's like this, and it's flapping up, and it's like, you can zoom in there. Yeah. <laughs>
All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Ted Gennady, and I'm here to present to you the St. Clair River Classic, brought to you by Blue Water Offshore Racing Association and the OPA. With me is my good friend, Brad Kowalski. It's Brian. Hmm? It's Brian. Yeah, where did they get Brad from? I, I wasn't paying attention. Sorry. With me. With I'm, see, I'm reading, and I'm not thinking, so there uh, you go. That's all right. Well, everybody, that's how this uh, broadcast is going to go. We're just uh, shooting from the hip. We had a few problems this morning, and uh, but we're getting started. What you're going to see over the next few minutes is going to be the uh, color ceremony to begin the race today. The uh, pace boats are going to bring down the colors uh, down from the viewing stand here. 
we have an honor guard on shore. They're going to be doing the national anthem. Yep. Oh, there's no noise for it. Yes, I believe it's the Rivertown Gents performing. I'll, I'll shut up and uh, let everybody hear the good noise. There we go. We have started the two national anthems. This is a truly international race. Uh, directly across the river from us here in St. Clair is the country of Canada. So we did both the national anthems. We have help here today from both sides, uh, the public safety assistance and the first, per, uh, first responders that are helping us out are from both sides. So we really appreciate that. We're going to be bringing you a great race today, ladies and gentlemen. We have 42 boats here today. It is a great turnout in the beautiful city of St. Clair. Um, we are going to have three different races today. We will have a little break between each of the races so that you can uh, go and grab a adult beverage or a little snack or something like that. But we'll have some different things going on on the feed. And when we're not uh, giving you the normal feed, we're going to be replaying uh, each of the races as we go through. So we're happy to have you here with us on the YouTube live feed uh, from OPA Racing. And we are going to come back in just a few minutes. Uh, in the meantime, I want you to take a look at the uh, beautiful water here in St. Clair and watch what's going on out here on the water. And as soon as we get ready to race, which is probably going to be in the next 15 minutes or so, then we'll get back on the air and we will give you play-by-play uh, -play coverage of all three races today from the beautiful St. Clair River Classic. Thanks very much, and we'll see you shortly.
Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the St. Clair River Classic, brought to you by the OPA and the Blue Water Offshore Race Association. My name is Ted Gennady, and with me is Brian the Balloon Man Kowalski. <laughs> Uh, we are going to be talking to you today about this, this beautiful race here at this beautiful race site. We have a huge fleet of boats here to show you today. We have three fantastic races. Um, the first race, Brian, is looking phenomenal. Um, we've got a great group of, of boats out there, and um, I, I think I counted about 19 boats are going to be on the course. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a great race. This first race has got so much enthusiasm in it the groups are great and it's going to be really competitive yeah we've been uh, we've been seeing most of these guys out testing yesterday and everybody is trying to get their setup just right the water today is flat the water today is going to be very fast but of course they have to deal with that current that goes up and down here brian i know you've been you you live here so you're very familiar with the area here um Talk to me a little bit about that lower turn. Why does everybody seem to have a problem on the lower turn? Well, the, the lower turn's a little tighter, and, and where that current comes together, it kind of makes that water a little more choppy, a little more rough, and uh, it poses a challenge for the guys when they come through, the, through that turn. And, and how fast is the current here? I see these big freighters go through here, and it looks like they're going like water ski speed as they go down, but when they come up, they're, they're like chugging uphill. Yeah, the, the downbound current here runs anywhere from 7 to 8 miles an hour. It's usually about 7.5 miles an hour on any given day. Okay, now remember, everybody, the thing about this racing is is that many of these boats we're going to see today are speed limited. So they have a GPS on the boat, and it's going to make sure that they never go above the limit that is set for their particular class. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. But if you can imagine driving a car and one way you're driving, you're going all downhill, and the other way you're driving, you're going all uphill, obviously for the throttleman, it makes a huge difference as to how he's running the boat and make sure that it doesn't get away from him as he comes around the turn and mm -hmm. gets into the, sort of that downbound leg when he's, when he's running with the current. Yeah, they, they rely a lot on the on the GPS that they have in the boats. And if you look inside these boats, uh, if you get a chance to, to go out and look at them in the pits, a lot of guys have multiple GPSs uh, just in case one dies or, or uh, you know, whatever the case may be has a malfunction. It'll tell them how fast they're going, and that's what they're doing to, to regulate themselves out there. Absolutely. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the speeds uh, coming up in just a little bit. But for now, let's, let's talk about the, the boats that we're going to see here in this, um, in this first race. Um, in Class 7, which are our smaller boats, now these boats are typically around 20, 22 foot long. They run a single outboard. Um, they have a speed limitation of 65 miles an hour. Um, on the pole position today is going to be 723, the Bay Rat. That has Peter Gilbreth and Scott Samuelson. It is a ghost V-Hull. The uh, second coming out from the pole is PFE Racing. That is going to be David Privet and Scott Gatto in a superboat. I used to have a superboat near and dear to my heart. Anyway, um, next we're going to have Wicked Racing. That is Dante Napoli and Jay Muller. Now, the funny thing about Jay is, is that Jay is used to racing these humongous, oh, yeah. monstrous supercats um, at speeds well over 100 miles an hour. So for him to hop in the boat and run this great little Class 7 boat is awesome. Um, and, and, and I spoke with him, and he said he, he really enjoys sort of the raw, you know, getting back down on the water and mm -hmm. just and running in these little boats. He, he's having a blast with it, and uh, it's, it's great to see. Yeah, I, I, I talked to him earlier as well, and uh, he's definitely down on the water. That boat is a whole lot closer to the water than what he was used to before. Absolutely. Now, also coming up in uh, Class 7, we have 749 on a mission with Ken Bird and Justin Rose. That's a small Apache. Um, and then we have Hanging and Banging with John Hughes and Patrick Kennedy. That's a red line, and um, they're going to be out there today. So what we're looking at is five boats in Class 7. They're a little bit smaller, but they, there's absolutely some great racing between those boats because they're very close in power. They're mm -hmm. very close in speed and acceleration. Yeah, it's, uh, that's going to be a great race. You know, coming up as well in this race, we have uh, Class 6 is going to be racing. And uh, today on the pole, we have 601 Early Detection. That's Lee Baker and Chris Rindle uh, in a Rindle 1 design boat. Then we have uh, 609 Ultimate Racing Experience. That's Mark Jacobs and Tom Vogel. Again, that's another Rindle 
design. And these are the ones, uh, Ted, that the guys, uh, they commonly refer to them as bat boats. And uh, it's uh, they're an interesting looking boat. I, Absolutely, and and I've driven one of those boats, and I can tell you that it's a it's a pretty wild experience. And and for anybody out there in in OPA land who's watching our uh, video today, when you see these bat boats go by, um, if you get in touch with with Rendell uh, with with Rendell Boats, and, and I probably will be able to find you a uh, website for that later on. But Chris Rendell actually rents those boats. A couple mm -hmm. of these guys who are racing today are renting the seat in the boat, and so they're going to be racing today. Um, it's really the cheapest and best way to get into racing and get, sort of get a feel for it and see how you like it. So um, we're really happy to have them out there, have a couple of guys actually making an, a start today mm -hmm. so they can kind of get a feel for, the, for, how the, um, for how the racing works out here. Yeah, I think they're going to have a blast. You know, in our, our third position in Class 6, we have Smith Brothers CRC. That's Pete Smith and Rich Smith. They're in a joker. And then uh, following that will be uh, Bad News with... Ron Bird and Frank Albrecht. They're in a Carrera. Then we have uh, some friends from Canada in, in today, 615 sailing by Birch Point Performance. That's Jason Fame and Kevin Adams. They're out there in a velocity today. Uh, PFE Racing, another local uh, team, 619 by the way. That's Rick Kotecki and Gary Cook. They're out there in a velocity, a red velocity. Uh, 623, Boom Shakalaka. That's Eric and Jeff. Jacobs, father and son team. That's going to be a, a fun one to watch. That's a, a Swizzard craft boat. Now, you know they made that name up just so that we'd have to say, boom, shagalaga. I think so. <laughs> yes, that's exactly why. <laughs> and then uh, I know we got another boat here, uh, 626. This one's near and dear to your heart. The uh, maxed out team with Mike Yawalski and Jim Jackson. They're out there in a joker. Matter of fact, they're going by right now. Hi, guys. <laughs> Uh, 632, Whoa Mama, that's Kyle Miller and Jay Wolterman. They're in a Lorquin. And then uh, our last boat in that class is You Gun Learn. That's Warren Exner and Mike Bocchino. They're in a Martini. Yeah, the Martini is a, uh, is a great boat. It's an old school boat. Those guys came over here from the Jersey Shore. Um, the Martini is one of those 24 by 7 boats that runs hard and uh, turns hard. And, and quite mm. frankly... A lot of the boats that are in that Class 6 have all come from that Martini, or at least from that same basic P&D hull. Um, the other boats that are going to run with us today in the first race are going to be your Super V lights. Now, the one thing that's different about these boats and the other boats that are racing today is these guys are not speed limited. They're limited by the size of the motor in the boat, and they're limited by the weight of the boat, um, but they are a canopy boat. And uh, they run about 30 feet long. And what you're going to see is that they're, they're going to be hanging and banging. Those guys are just, they, they race, I mean, balls out the whole time because um, it, it's just, it's crazy racing and there's no limits to it. They don't have to watch a GPS or anything like that. Um, starting on the pole position is going to be Britt Lilly and Ron Umland in LSB Racing. Britt Lilly comes to this um, genetically. <laughs> yep. His father, Art, is here, and Art is a world champion uh, racer, is in the APBA Hall of Champions, um, can tell anybody, and can, there's nobody who can tell Art anything about racing a boat, and he has passed that along to his son. We Haul Boats is Mike Ogden and Val Fiorello. That's a phantom, um, the very competitive boat, and Val has probably piloted enough boats to, uh, well, I don't know, he could probably fill a container ship with all the boats that he's raced in. Uh, <laughs> Pirate Racing, David and Travis Denham. That's another phantom. Those guys are always competitive. Um, great guys. Love them to death. And then finally, Typhoon, um, which probably has more hours on its bottom. Um, well, the two Typhoon boats have had more hours on their bottoms than probably any other race boat in history. Yep. Uh, Louis Giacontari and Randy Schluss are in that boat. That's another extreme. So what we've got in the SVLs is we have two extremes and we have two fountains. So, I mean, excuse me, two phantoms. So those boats basically are very, very evenly matched by size, by weight, and by, by power. So that's going to be some great racing today. The boats are right now are sort of milling around in front of us. What they're going to do now is they're going to start the parade lap. Um, there's not racing going on. They're just going to take them up. And I apologize if there's a lot of noise in the background, but literally they all came by to give us a show. Oh, but doesn't that smell good? 
<laughs> I love the smell of race fuel in the morning. Oh, yeah. On your screen right now, you can see one of those Class 7 boats. Those little outboard boats are going to have, I mean, you can see just from the water getting kicked up by the other boats. Those guys have a race on their hands today. This is, this is a big deal. Sailing by, going by with the uh, Canadian flag on. Oh, yeah. I think we're supposed to go, oh, coo, 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 or some crap like that. Something eh? like that. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to roll around in a parade lap right now. Now, we're going to have three starts. There are three pace boats. And what's going to happen is, is that the pace boat, once they're, they're sure that everybody's pretty much ready to go, they want to come down this course. And when the starter is, is, is satisfied that the line of boats next to him, it's a rolling start. So he's going to straighten them out beside him and hopefully hold them until they're all pretty much even. Then it's green flag racing. They move to the inside of the course, and we're off. Right. Um, we have some great you – can, you, you, these are all local guys to you. So you, tell me, what do we have for pace boats today? Uh, you know, today our pace boats uh, uh, are, are all local guys pretty much. Um, I don't have my list right in front of me. I know uh, we do have Scott Rouse out there. Uh, he's been pacing races for us for – Oh, five or six years now. Um, we have uh, Bobby out there in the crazy Crayola boat. Uh, that's another uh, wicked paint scheme boat. Yep. And then um, I'm not sure. I don't that have beautiful. There's that beautiful 38 Top Gun. Yes, that 38 Top Gun. Actually, that's uh, actually that's the beer distributor's. Uh, boat. Oh, and we appreciate the fact that he's Absolutely. here today because we like his money and we like his <laughs> beer. Absolutely. Um, anyway, so the pace boats basically have a starter on each one of them, and they're going to bring these boats up after we go through the parade lap. Um, they're going to bring them up. Now, right in front of us is the uh, is the start finish. So the, the the boats don't actually start racing until they cross that start finish line. Mm -hmm. Now, Brian, I know you spent a lot of time looking at a lot of these boats. Oh boy! Can you explain to us how they count the laps that they have to run? You know, it's. It's old school, Ted. Um, if the guys are running like in class six, they're going to run eight laps today for 32 miles. The throttle man actually has eight pieces of electrical tape stuck to the dash, and every time he goes by the start-finish boat, completing the lap, he pulls a piece off. Yeah, and that's that's as high tech as it comes, ladies oh, and yeah. gentlemen. We may be limited by speed with all of these different. Uh, um, with all these different electronic devices and all this other kind of stuff. But when it comes to counting, these guys actually, because the problem is some of them wear gloves, so they can't really count on their fingers and toes. So we have to have them pull little pieces of tape. <laughs> yeah. um, in the case of Max Dead, apparently they're actually popping balloons. They have their eight laps on balloons. <laughs> uh, little inside joke there. Um, just a rundown, what we're going to see in this first race. The Class 7 boats are going to run five laps. This is a four-mile course, so they're going to be running a total of 20 miles. And I know it seems like a very short way to go, but trust me, in one of those little boats, 20 miles on this water today is going to be a challenge. Sure. Class 6 is going to be eight laps for 32 miles, and Class 5 is going to be nine laps, and that's going to be 36 miles. Um, so, and, and because of the speed differences with these, with these classes, That'll actually bring most of them done almost at the same time. So we're going to see. Now, if you're watching on the Internet, you can probably zoom in a little bit. If you've got a big enough screen, you'll be able to see the numbers on the boats. The boats are numbered by their class first. So class 5, class 6, class 7, whatever the case may be. And, and you know what? I said class 5. We're not running class 5 yet. It's uh, v light, which is 10 laps or 40 miles. The, the, but the classes are marked on the uh, the front of the boat so it'll say like 561 so that's boat number 61 in class five and that's how we differentiate which class each of these boats are in so it's sometimes very difficult especially for your announcers to figure out which boat is actually in front but we're going to do the best job we can sure. to figure out who's winning and who's losing and that type of thing as we go through today now you'll see the boats coming down up at the top of the course the pace boats are going to stand down there and they'll be holding up yellow flags They'll spread out a little bit, and the the race boats for each of the individual classes are going to start to mill around them in a circle. The Once the uh, pace boats have checked in with the chief score, and once our race control over here to our left has given um, the all clear, then we'll start basically each of the classes as we go through. Brian, you have been here... As, well, as long as I've been here, and I know you've been here for most of the time of the 21 years of this of this fantastic race, um, 
tell us a little bit about Racecom. Tell us a little bit about what, what goes on just to put one of these races on. I mean, Blue Water Offshore does such a great job, and they deserve a ton of credit for, oh, for putting on this fantastic race. They, you know, it is the greatest bunch of guys that I've ever had the pleasure of working with, and I truly mean that. Um, it, it literally takes 360 days a year to plan this event. I mean, we'll actually get together next week. We'll let this all digest for a week, make some notes, and start making changes for next year if need be. And um, our race control setup is phenomenal. Uh, Bob Courier is the uh, treasurer for Blue Water Offshore, and he also plays a double role as race control. He's up on a podium up here. He's got the Coast Guard up there, Marine Division. He's in contact with Angel One, that's our helicopter. That's on the course today, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, he's in contact with the freighters. It's it's phenomenal, folks. The the amount of work uh, that goes into it, not only on race day, but all the pre-planning and event coordination things. Yeah, and and I have I have worked um, m most of the jobs running one of these races oh, also, yeah. and and I can tell you that um, you know we we. Although the racers do it for the love of the sport and they get the glory and they get to run around in circles and stuff like that, a lot of times the volunteers that come out and work these things every year, they put in as much or more time in, in some cases as the racers do. Mm -hmm. And um, it's all for the love of the sport. I mean, this is a true sportsman's type sport where um, the, the big money, you know, there's a little bit of money here and a little bit of money there, but you're, you're doing it for the love of it. You're not doing it because uh, there's some big paycheck at the end of it. And, and, and you've got to hand it to all the people who volunteer and all the people who race, quite frankly. They go through huge personal sacrifice to do this, um, and, and it brings a great show out for us. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you look at the support fleet that's out on the water today, uh, there's 35 patrol boats out there just securing the course. So that's... 35 families that are spending the day obviously out here on the water with us uh, away from their other family uh, burning their own gas that sort of thing um, medical staff uh, it's it's crazy the amount of people that it takes to put this together all right it looks like our first pace boat with the super v lights is coming up on plane right now um, we have a yellow flag, so we have one, I can see one Super V, here comes the other Super V light. Um, remember, these are all four match boats, they have no speed limit, they are simply limited by the design and the power on the boat. We're watching for a green flag on that first beautiful 38 Top Gun pace boat. And when we go green, we are going to have a race. Now, the reason that the starter has his arm out is because he's trying to get them to come straight. A lot of times there's very limited visibility in these Super V lights. And we're green flag. We have a race. Coming out instantly in front is yep. LSB pulling ahead of Pirate Racing. Then Typhoon. And we haul boats. Yes. Yeah, now, Ted, they, uh, they hold their line on this first lap. Uh, they stay in their lane on this first lap. Looks like we've got to start on our, our second start, and that's the uh, Class 6 boats. All right, green flag start on Class 6. And I, there's too many of them. I can't even figure out who's in front right now. Uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah, they're going to have what they're going to have to do is hold their line through the entire first turn. And that's partly for safety and partly because the, that's the whole idea about the pole position. It gives the guy on the inside just a little bit of a help. Yep. All right, and if we can, we're looking now for the third pace boat. The yep, Class right. 7 boat should be coming up behind. Yep, here they come now. Looks like they're getting lined up. Still under yellow. There they go, green. They're going to be coming by us here in a second. We have a green start in Class 7. There they are, Class there 7 there boats. Now you're gonna. These boats are gonna put on a show today. This this water is just rough enough for them. Um, they, they can actually run fairly fast, but at the same time, it's gonna be rough enough to be throwing them around a little bit. Oh yeah, I, I imagine the chiropractor visit will be in order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they 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 all typically wear neck braces and knee pads. They all look like they're ready to go for the play roller derby. Sure. All right, coming around here in Super V Light, it looks like we have Pirate Racing. Um. 
I can see better on the screen than I can in real life. Looks like Pirate Racing has taken the lead after the first half lap in Super V Light, running along nicely. Ladies and gentlemen, when you watch these boats, you'll notice that some of them have a big rooster tail and some of them have a low rooster tail. If you have a low rooster tail, you are making every bit of power and getting every bit of speed out of the boat that you can. Good battle for second there in Super V Light between LSB and... Uh, That's Typhoon. Typhoon, yeah. Typhoon and LSB coming into the turn, neck and neck. How sharp they and then in fourth place is We Haul Boats. Watch him coming around that turn. Now what's going to happen is he's got to slow around coming around the turn, but then it's going to pull up, and we'll see him accelerate. Here we have early detection, class six. Yep. All right, coming up on us right now, we have Pirate Racing in the lead. LSB has taken a slight lead over Typhoon. And then We Haul Boats. Oh, LSB has pulled out nicely on Typhoon at oh, this yeah. point. Yeah, they got, a, they got a pretty good little lead there. And now, as I said, Louie and, and uh, Randy both have a lot of time in Typhoon, so I wouldn't count them out by any means. Pirate has a nice lead. Looks like our class six fleet's coming up uh, around the third and fourth turn as well, so they'll be coming into view here shortly for us. LSB's got their work cut out for them, dragging in Pirate. And never count out Typhoon coming up behind them. All right, coming around the uh, turn on the south side of the course, we have all the class six boats now. Should have sorted out a little bit. We'll have a little bit better idea when they come by us. Oh, yeah. There's one of them bat boats right up there in the hunt for first oh, place. Oh, yeah. Looks like we have the Smith Brothers. Yep. The Smith Brothers are in first place with a bat boat right on their tail. And then we have Bad News in third. Yeah. Whoa Mama in fourth. And Boom Shakalaka in fifth. You Gun Learn is making a move on Boom Shakalaka, and Max Stout is coming up on You Gun Learn, so they both might take a pass on Boom Shakalaka at this point. Actually, that's BFE in fifth there, Boom Shakalaka. Oh, my bad. A little bit to red the back boat. here. Yep, yeah, it's red. <laughs> and on the back side, we have the Super V lights coming down. Pirate is still holding a nice lead out in front there, trying to keep it back, but... Ronnie and Britt are right behind them, running, running very solid. Watch that rooster tail. You got a low rooster tail. You are, you are moving. You are hauling the mail. How fast do you think they're going right now, Ted? Uh, those boats in race trim are probably running a little over 90 miles an hour. That's phenomenal. Single engine, 34, th excuse me, 30 foot boat, uh, two seats in it, and uh, there ain't no stereo. No, no, no. It's a little tight in them things. I uh, tried to sit in one the other day, and let's just say they're not round guy friendly. All right, let's see. In in uh, your class seven, we have Bay Rat out in front. Yep. Followed by Turning and Burning, I believe. I uh, believe so. Oh, Hanging and Banging. <laughs> turning and Burning, Hanging and Banging. Ah, same old thing. And then PFE. Those little boats are giving them a ride. They're great boats. They're actually, for their size, they're phenomenal boats in this offshore water. But the problem with it is, is that uh, when you string them out a lot and uh, you're trying to get the most speed out of them, then it gets uh, it gets a little hairy. It's kind of nice to see Team PF, PFE out there with two different boats, two different classes today. Well, you know, once you get bitten by the ra by the racing bug. Um, things oh. just start popping up, and when, yep. you know, if, if a little boat looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, guess what? You're going to buy a little boat. All right, Pirate Racing right now has about a three, four boat lead over LSB. Yeah, they are. About... LSB is starting to rein them in just a little bit. Yep. Here comes Typhoon in third, and Typhoon has actually dropped back slightly from where they were on the last lap. Yeah, but 
We Haul Boats is coming up here. And then We Haul Boats is in fourth. Um, Mike has had some time to work on that boat, although I think he's still got, he th he's, he's only had a couple of races on it, and I think he's uh, still working on a few of the bugs. Those boats, it's all about setup because they can't just keep putting bigger power into it or, or anything like that. They have to make sure the boat is set up perfectly. Right. Yeah, that's why I think their testing on Saturday is so important to these guys. You know? They have the opportunity to, to try different things for today. Well, and don't forget, the past couple of races have been in salt water, so these boats are um, really, they, they've been running in salt water, but now all of a sudden they're in fresh water, so it changes everything. All right, in your class seven, it looks like we have hanging and banging is making a move on Bay Rat. These guys are neck and neck. We're going to have to see what happens as they come around the turn, but it looks like hanging and banging has definitely pulled up on him and taken away virtually all of his lead. This could turn out to be a really good race. Those guys are, I mean, it doesn't look like anybody's got any huge advantage. And of course, remember, they've got the issue that they can only go 65 miles an hour. Right. And it, you know, it's nice to see that these guys are all friends on and off, well, off the course. In general. <laughs> In general. In general. No, everybody will help everybody else out until the flag drops. But when the flag drops, it's on. Yep. All right, we got a little lap traffic now going by those Class 7 boats. The Super V lights have actually come around and lapped them. That's going to cause a problem because, as you'll notice, that uh, Britt Lilly has dropped back a little bit, and that's because he got caught in lap, lap traffic. It looks like the Pirate Racing got in um, around them a little faster. Yep. The biggest thing, you don't want to get caught in lap traffic in these turns because as you get caught in these turns, um, then it can really, it can screw your whole day up when you're trying to run in, in boats that are basically 30 miles an hour slower. Oh, absolutely. It just changes your whole game plan on what you're doing. These guys get in such a groove when they're out there, you know, mentally and physically. Absolutely. Now, Ronnie Umland, who is in, um, in the boat with Britt Lilly, I mean, Britt is a young, he's actually the next generation of racers. Um, Ronnie is an older guy, and I'll tell you what, Ronnie has some... <laughs> He has got some miles under his belt racing a boat, too, so um, he is no slouch on the throttles there. And then Typhoon is coming around in third. Typhoon getting a little air, or I'm sorry, if that's a Pirate there getting a little air in the corner. All right, now look, coming in front of us, here's Pirate Racing with LSB. LSB has closed the gap and is pulling on him right now. This is, look at this race. These guys are right on it. Ronnie is not gonna let him get away now. Now, notice that what, what, what Britt and Ronnie have done are to move to the inside. So if they take the inside lane coming up on this next turn, they could spread it out basically get by. Yeah, they're actually running just a little bit shorter length there when they, uh, they're on the inside like that. Absolutely. All right, you got a little lap traffic going on with the Class 7 boats and Wee Hall boats. Both Typhoon and Wee Hall have gotten around the Class 7 boats, though, so they're going to have clean water again. And right, look at this race. With between Bay Rat and um, hanging and banging, those guys are on top of each other. They haven't they haven't gone forward or back at all at this yeah, point. They are they are just neck and neck for the last couple laps here. And it's it's amazing. Here we see Typhoon getting yep, past their boats. lap traffic. We all both still trying to get the sword out a little bit. Sometimes if these boats come in, look at this look at this lead. That LSB right. has taken out over Pirate. Phenomenal. Unbelievable back there. As I said, if you can get around that turn and you can get on the inside, then you're going to end up taking some, you know, you're going to, you're going to have, a, you've got a shorter course, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's amazing what can happen in just one turn. Absolutely. In Class 7, we have, it looks like, we have on a mission coming up on, well, see, I, I don't, I can't see it well enough myself to tell exactly which boats we have. There's LSB running almost now we can't even see pirate in the picture so he's definitely taking some some room over him oh i'm sure there's some father-son conversations going on there to get back up there <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's one of the things that we have in this racing is that we've got so many father-son teams all right here we go smith brothers looks like they are in first place yep. still uh bad news is trying to make a move on them though bad news is coming up yeah they're 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 we need to up. watch this Class 6 race because they have got some pretty tight racing. Looks like early detection and whoa, mom, I have a nice rim here for third and fourth. 
14 PFE in the fifth. And you gun learn. Yep. Now you gun learn is a fast boat. Those guys are going to be. We still got to keep an eye on them. Nothing is over yet. And then we have Max Stout in sixth. There's Boom Shakalaka in seventh coming up past us. Unbelievable out there. Now look at this race. SB and Pirate. Pirate has actually taken a little bit of a little bit of distance back from LSB. So those guys definitely don't just have a ride in the park. This is a race all the way through. Yeah. Beautiful boat, that LSB boat. Yeah, the paint job is phenomenal. Well, Brent's a painter. Yeah. <laughs> Go figure, huh? <laughs> and there's a bat boat. That is, uh, that's one of the, the uh, uh, ultimate racing experience boats. Yes. John Vogel and Mark Jacobs. As I said, those Rendell One Design boats are for lease for different races. You need to get with Rendell One Design on the web. Chris is a phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal supporter of this sport. Yes. You know, they have like 15 or 16, 15 or 16 of those out in Las Vegas that they rent. Uh, out on the lake out there for corporate events or whatever. Yep. It's amazing. Yeah, it gives everybody a chance to get into, I mean, getting into a race boat is not a cheap endeavor by any means. Oh, <laughs> so being able to rent to one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Here you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm finished with this. Could you take it back, please? <laughs> Just like a rental car, but you really can drive it like you stole it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh. All right, here we go. There's uh, Typhoon coming up. We haul boats. Oh, we haul boats. Yeah, we haul right. boats. Currently in fourth in Super V Light. Look how loose he's running. Yeah. He is trying to get everything he can out of it. He's got that front end just flying on that boat. I think I may have detected a slight miss in that motor, though. Yeah, doesn't quite sound right. Now, one of the things you're going to hear on some of these boats is they're going to be hitting their rev limiters as they start to come out of the water. Oh, look at this race between, look at this race between Bay Rat and Hanging and Banging. Now, Bay Rat is a slightly oh, ahead of Hanging little... and Banging, but that is, there's no way you're going to call this one anytime early. That's no. for sure. This, they, they've got a race. No, that's the largest lead they've had all day, and it's not much. No, sure. it is not much. Beautiful blue water here. That's Oh, that's why you call blue water offshore. Hello. Who knew? <laughs> yeah, it's like being in the Caribbean. It's, it's phenomenal. The, we've actually had... Ex actually had people ask us if it's dive. Uh -huh. I, I, it blew my mind the first time I saw it, yeah. I'll tell you that much. All right, we got all these boats. The boats are, right now actually are piled up in Class 6. Um, as they come by us, I should be able to get an idea. It looks like we still got Smith Brothers in the lead. Yeah, Those oh, guys yeah. always run fast. Yep. Great boat. That's one of two jokers on the uh, course today. Max Dowd is the other one. Great guys. Both groups. Great, Great battle guys. for second there with Wall Mama and Early Detection. Wall Mama and Early Detection getting on it. They split the lap traffic between the two of them. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Careful there, Wall Mama. Yeah, I know it's a little boat, but he can still shake you up a little bit. Yeah. All right, here we go. Coming up in Super V Light. All right, there is LSB. A little passing with uh, Max Dell. And LSB has a comfortable, but certainly not insurmountable, lead over Pirate Racing. Yeah, not, not terribly too far back with them guys from Pirate. There's on a mission, a seven bow. It's about five, four or five back of the field. Yep. Camera crew is working hard trying to keep up with all these boats. It is a little difficult. It's a lot harder than you would think it is, people. Trust me. Oh, you know, we've got a great crew out here today with the camera crew. They've got them on top of the local restaurants here on the boardwalk, a little bit everywhere. Absolutely. CTV6 does a great job. They do a lot of sports uh, sports broadcasting. Unfortunately, yeah. they only get a chance to do this once a year. <laughs> yeah, it's a little different than basketball. <laughs> yeah, this is not high school football, kids. No. <laughs> so you, only, you, only, you only play ba you, you play basketball with one ball. 
<laughs> oh All right, there's the ultimate racing experience bat boat. Run along. They are a lot of fun to ride. Oh, they, yeah. And they're, they're very safe. They have a canopy over them, so you have a very good sense of, uh, of, of safety in them. They're, you're strapped in. You're comfortable. Yep. They're a handful. Oh, yeah. They, but, have, uh, they have been here all week. Testing. Good times. We haul boats currently in fourth at Super V Light. Mike's over here from, I believe, Pennsylvania. Smith Brothers, class six, still your leader. Yeah, they got that joker running nice today. Absolutely. Now remember, everything that we see here and everything, even when the race is over, um, is all unofficial. Yep. All these guys are going to have to drag their uh, GPS unit back out of the boat. They've got to humbly walk to <laughs> Frank, the GPS guy's trailer, yes. hand it in. Give him his hundred dollar bill and, and hope pray. that they didn't break out. Yes, air prayer. Yes, said, well, you know, prayers don't work with Frank. No. No. Just Benjamin. There you go. All right, look at this race in class seven. We have once again hanging and banging and bay rat on top of each other. I mean, I know they're kind of separated, but when it comes to <laughs> front and rear, they're pretty much on top of each oh, other. Yeah. So those guys are not giving up. They're both giving a great run today. Remember? They've got to make sure they stay under that 65 mile an hour speed limit or else uh, if you break out and the GPS says no, you go to the back. And that's a relatively new class, I believe, isn't it, Tim? Uh, they started that about two years ago. It was really truly to be an entry level class um, right. and it's worked out great. The guys who are running them, um, as I said, it's there. It's it's not very very expensive to put one of those boats on the water, looks and like, it makes for some great racing. Looks like we might have a boat off plane down there, and the uh, just coming up before uh, turn three. I can't quite see who that is. Uh, maybe our cameraman can get a shot for us. But uh, it's uh, they come down off plane. Looks like they're headed to the inside of the race course. Well, oh, they're on the outside, actually. Remember, it's not how fast you go, it's how long you go fast. This is a sport of attrition, folks. There you go. Once again, LSB is holding a nice lead over Pirate. I think so, yeah. Now, we're going to try and figure out what's going to, what we're going to start seeing happen here pretty shortly is, is that like class seven should be just about done. Can you get a look over there, Brian, and see what yeah, we got going on over here? The spectacles there. Oh, Ted, 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 Ted. That's the, that's a six to six maxed out boat. Uh -oh. Looks like they got the hatches up. The guys are okay. looks like they might be having some mechanical issues. I know you guys uh, were having some issues yesterday. All I got to say is if they find a balloon in that hatch, you're dead, man. <laughs> Folks, we'll explain that to you a little bit later, but there's always uh, always something fun going on uh, in our pit area. All right, in your screen right now, we have LSB who has moved out to a comfortable lead over Pirate Racing. Now, they are not speed limited, so that means that if they come across first, they are going to be the winner of this race. Um, for both Britt and Ronnie, that is not a new thing. They have done very well since they've been together in the boat, mm -hmm. and Ronnie has a, a storied racing career also. Yeah, some of these guys have trophy walls. Some guys have trophy shelves. These guys, some of these guys have trophy rooms. Now, it looks like I have one of the Super V lights down in the middle of the course, and I don't think that they're done. And I believe, if I can see it correctly, that might be Pirate Racing. Or LSB's taking a victory lap. We have On a Mission in Class 7 running by. Good little run for them today. Sure, they're having a great day out there. Now, I can see on the back side of the course, it looks like Bay Rat has lost a little bit to Hanging and Banging. So Hanging and Banging now has a nice little lead over Bay Rat, and I believe this is their last lap. So when they come around this turn, we may see the winner of Class 7. Yeah, they could be, uh, they could be neck and neck, you never know.
All right, it looks like we have LSB in the lead in Super V Light. And I believe Pirate is still behind him. Well, let's see, there's there's yeah, LSB Pirate. coming by us, and he's gonna be lapping We Haul Boats yep. and Pirate. So that means yep. that the Super V Light we saw down was Typhoon. Yes. All those guys run hard. Remember that that one boat that's that's to the right there, we haul boats, is actually getting lapped by those two boats right now. So he's got a little, a little bit down on speed. Here comes our class six leaders. That's going to be Smith Brothers Racing, facing right now a challenge from Whoa Mama. Whoa Mama is hanging right in there with him, and then followed by early detection. There's Typhoon. Oh, back Typhoon's back up again. All right then. Here comes our class seven fleet. All right, unofficially, it looks like if this is the last lap for, for seven, then that means it is going to be hanging and banging. Yeah. They're and then Bay Rat. They just took the flag. So unofficially, your winner in class seven is going to be in the center of the course, is going to be hanging and banging with Bay Rat behind him. Now we're going to wait for to see who we got third seven as they come around the lower turn here. Absolutely beautiful day out today. Weather is great. Gentlemen out of the north. Got Lily Sport Boats running. Looks like we have uh, the Rena One design, the yellow boat. And the uh, that's uh, Ultimate Racing Ultimate Experience. Racing, yep. He's okay. down now. I don't know whether he thinks his day is over or he's got an issue. Yep. He was running kind of slow when he came by us before. Sailing by. Yeah, it's truly an international event. We've got teams from U.S. and Canada here. Yeah, well, you know, hey. these people go back and forth between countries. Like, I go back and forth between, you know, cities. Oh, I know. It's just right there. It's right there. Yeah. All right, it looks like it's Super V Light right now, unofficially. Well, no, they've still got, they probably got another couple laps to go, actually. Yeah, I think so. But I believe we may have a third place here in class seven. That is going to be on a mission. I believe so. But I'm not positive about that. Class seven boys are done for the day. And like I said, it was only 20 miles, but I'll bet that was the roughest 20 miles uh, that some of those guys have had on their boat ever. Uh, yes, I'm. I'm sure. You know, the water doesn't look that bad, but in a boat that size at that speed, it makes a difference. All right, now I would say that the, the, the space between Lily and Pirate right now is going to be one, two, three, four. They got about six or seven seconds on them. Yeah. So that's a fairly significant lead. Unless something happens, um, it's going to be very, very difficult for, for Pirate to make that up. Yeah, it all, it, it, now it just comes down to driving the boat, relying on those mechanics that you worked so hard with to keep that thing going. Yeah, and unfortunately we all know that there's a whole lot of parts and pieces inside those boats, and it just takes one little 50 cent part to make your day go horribly, horribly wrong. You know, that that's an amazing thing. You know, some of these guys will see later in the day have astronomical size boats. One little piece. Absolutely. So all the Super V lights are still running. We did have one down in the middle of the course for at, at one point. Now those boats do have 525 racing engines in them, which have a smart craft system. So he may have just need to reset. Right now it looks like in your class six, Smith Brothers is still holding off Whoa Mama. And I think they may have one more lap to go. Followed by early detection. So it's Smith Brothers, Wo Mama, and early detection. Yeah, Bad News was up there for a while. I haven't seen them in a little bit. I don't know if they're No, I haven't seen them. We may have had a couple of the six. We seem to have lost a couple of the six boats. Here comes You Gun Learn, unofficially fifth place right now, and PFE is in fourth. Yep. 
We'll have all the results coming up in just a little bit. We obviously need to finish this up uh, for a couple of these classes, and then we will try to give you unofficial results from what we see. And of course, we'll have the flag ceremony at the start-finish boat for each of the classes. Always nice to see the guys. And you gun learn is pulling off the course and heading over for the Pine River. I don't think, to be honest with you, that he, that he, their day is done. I think he's got an issue and he's pulling off um, because he is not because the other six boats are still running. Now, what I'm looking for right now is to see. I believe this may be the last lap for LSB and pirate and so far and from what i can see on the back side of the course it looks like lsb is still has a healthy little lead they of course made the trip all the way up here from maryland mm -hmm. and we'll be watching the start finish line here shortly to see what we see about that because they you may know, be done you know ted we talk about our our assets out there one of the most valuable ones to us is our angel one that's our helicopter we're very fortunate this year that our helicopter is being provided by the Cleveland Construction Offshore Race Team. They actually have two other medical boats out there for us as well. Cleveland Construction is a huge, huge supporter of this race and of offshore racing in general. They have a phenomenal boat, which we're going to see out here a little later on today, um, with Evil Ed Smith. But uh, we will be looking for that shortly. So LSB is still taking another lap. So that means we probably got at least one more lap to go on the Super V Lights. And there you see Smith Brothers and Woe Mama. Now, Woe Mama is, they're, they're really not, uh, I don't know. I, I, They may have closed a couple of feet here and there, but it looks like Smith Brothers tell. is doing a nice job just staying right out there. Remember, they've got to hang in there, and they can't, they, they've got to watch that GPS speedometer. Absolutely. You can look like you won all day long, but if you break out of that class, it's... Yep. It's disheartening as a race goes. Now, we should say that all of these boats here are competing for national championship points. Yes. And you have to win or at least be at virtually every race to have a chance at that national championship. Oh, each, yeah. Each class has a national championship that they're racing for. And so the more laps you complete, the higher you are in the standings at each race. And sometimes it doesn't take winning every race. It just takes being there and maybe hitting the second or third of sure. most races. And the next thing you know... You have a national championship, but it is a long, it is it is hard fought, and it is a long, long season to get those national championship points. Yep, a lot of water miles and a lot of road miles. Yeah. Now look at this. Will Mama and Smith Brothers are right on top of each other. I told you. Unbelievable. Will like Mama is out in front. Out Smith front. Brothers unofficially is going to be in second place. That's awesome. Oh, oh. Wow. What a day. You know, the, the, the guys in Smith Brothers ran a great race all day long today. How the lead it just comes down to that last turn. Today. Unofficially in, in Class 6, we have Woe Mama first, Smith Brothers second, and early detection racing in third. I wish we'd seen that last turn. Boy, I'll tell you oh. what, I, I, Whoa Mama must have made some magic there. In fourth place, it looks like we have PFE in Class 6. Yep. Whoa Mama is certainly taking their victory lap. If they yeah. pulled that off and didn't break out, they did good. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There you see, the guys are pretty happy there. Yep. Yep. But you got to see that that's an unofficial time. Oh, sure. Looks like our Super V lights are coming up to us here. All right, coming around the back, we have the beautiful Super V light of LSB. What's ahead of Oh, that's Boom Shakalaka. Shaka It'll be about sixth in class six. Ah, uh, yep. Here's uh, LSB. Checkered flag unofficially first. For LSB, Pirate Racing is second. Well, I saw them waving the checkered flag, but it could be they still have a lap. They may have been waving that at the Class 6 boats because it looks yeah. like Boom Chakalaka is just keeping on going. And the one thing about 
prattling on here on the internet is, is that you can't count laps for all these stupid boats. No, it's it's a little difficult. A lot of tape on the table there would be. Yeah, we don't have any tape on the table. <laughs> Well, Mama is over by the start-finish boat. They, of course, want to collect their checkered flag. <laughs> Finishing up in class six, we have a, uh, Salem by. Yep. Typhoon. I'm not sure whether they're in third or fourth. I'm not sure who stopped in the middle of the course. If he was the one who stopped, then he could be in fourth. Yeah, I'd be interested to see where he's at lap-wise. I know he, he was, it was either him or um, we haul both that was lapped earlier. Yes. watching some of these safety boats and they're literally moving sideways at about four or five miles an hour down through the current. It's unbelievable how strong the current is here. Oh, I, I was watching the, the sheriff is actually out today on a jet ski out here and he, he floated by us and fairly quickly. Hey, on a hot day like this, that's not a bad job right there. He helps when you're on the top of the food chain. Yeah, I gotta grab the uh, binoculars here for a second because I said, "Oh no, LSB is down." Yeah, I was kind of thinking that we're seeing a great shot of Pirate going there. Yep, Pirate is coming around on the last turn. Yep. Now, what I can't tell is if they had done their laps or if it, we're gonna we're gonna have to watch the LSB boat and see if he goes around for the full turn because he's obviously got some kind of something going wrong. But it looks like he's pulling into the. Um, start finish boat. So I yeah. think maybe their day was over. And that's why they're done. That would make more sense. They, they were running really well. There's Boom Shock a lot. I believe they're going to take this is their last lap. No, that's actually PFE. Or PFE, I'm sorry. I think Boom is actually on their second extra credit lap. Something of that effect. You know, we were talking about the national points. I, I, I think nobody told them that... Uh, <laughs> there, there is no extra credit for extra laps. No, no, no. Nice shot of Pirate coming by. Now, Pirate may have been the one that was down in the course. He, he could be theoretically third at this point in time. Or no, excuse me. He's probably still second. Yeah, we'll have to see when the official results come out, which will be coming up soon. I'm sure we're going to get those posted up for you as soon as they're official. Yeah, that's always easier said than done. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we got a great crew inside. So. Any in the local area, by the way, uh, the award ceremony tonight is downtown in St. Clair at the new uh, Mall Center Court. Beautiful oh, place down there. We're going to have the awards. Awards roll is a good time. Everybody has a chance to get together and, and, and congratulate the guys who've worked so hard to win. Yep. If we can get a look over here at the start-finish boat, it looks like uh, LSB is picking up their checkered flag. Yeah, folks, if you enjoy the racing out here today, uh, we've got more of it coming up, obviously, all day today. Uh, and then again in two weeks, we're going to be up in Port Huron. So. Yep, the next race on OPA is going to be, and the OPA circuit is going to be up in Port Huron, Michigan. Great little town up there, not too far away. And then directly a week after that is going to be uh, Fall River, Massachusetts. So we're back out on the yep. East Coast again. <laughs> yep. A lot of weekend warrior work. There we see the boats just kind of getting ready to head back in, I believe. Yeah, well, most of the guys who are going to win today are probably going to take their uh, victory lap, come down the uh, sure. beautiful boardwalk here in, in St. Clair. It's always great. They really appreciate all the fans that come out here to see them, and, and you know, they want to give them a little bit of a show, and, and certainly when you win... Sure. You want to make sure that uh, you know. You want to make sure that you, you get the let the fans see how much you appreciate the fact that they're out here and that type of thing. Here we got coming up here. On that should be Boom Shagalaga. I think, like yep. I said, I think he pretty much he's on his maybe second extra credit lap.
All right, so unofficially in Class 6, we have Woe Mama and then Smith Brothers and then Early Detection. And unofficially in Class 7, we have um, Hanging and Banging and then Bay Rat and then I believe it was On a Mission. And then your unofficial winner in, well, actually it's more official winner in uh, Super V Light is going to be LSB Racing, followed by um, Racing, and then Typhoon and We Hall, but I'm not positive of those numbers. Yeah, I'm sure Chief Score is working on that right now to try to get that all squared away. It does look like they gave the checkered flag to LSB out there. Yep, and Woe Mama has their, their checkered flag in Class 6. Our class seven unofficial winner, seven five five. Hanging and banging. Yep. Good for them. Yeah, it's nice to have a collection of checkered flags every once in a while. Yep. Well, the good thing about it is, is that um, with their with their spare laps, uh, Boom Shakalaka got a lot of good camera time because uh, sure. you know, <laughs> and it's all by themselves. Out there in the middle of the course, we have uh, Team LSB with their checkered flag. And I suspect we will see them make a little run along the boardwalk. Yeah, that's the highlight of a lot of the guys' day. It's a highlight of a lot of the fans' day, too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on a hot day, a little bit of spray doesn't hurt. Yeah, absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be taking a little bit of a break here shortly. I wanted to talk about a couple of our sponsors real quick because we have some phenomenal sponsors that are bringing this, this broadcast to you. If you're in the area or you come up to St. Clair, and by the way, I would recommend it as one of your bucket list races, we would love to see at the Voyager. Uh, the Voyager is a great entertainment and restaurant complex here um, at the end of St. Or, or at the end of the race course here in St. Clair. Um, Mike Laporte is a phenomenal host, and we would love to see you come out there and, and spend some time. They have some great food. Um, it is actually, by the way, the best place pretty much on the whole river to watch the race, except for, well, our vantage point. But, yeah, uh, I'm liking it. but we don't have a waitress. They get a waitress over there, so that's something. Um, Beware, Beware Lumber um, is right down the street. Oh, sorry. Got Pepper Joe's up there. My bad. All right, so we're going to run a few commercial things here. Uh, Rivers Bend Marina is one of our sponsors, and it is also the sponsor and the owner of Cleveland Construction, the race boat. There's Beaver Lumber. They're right down the street. Big sponsor of this race. Have been for quite some time, and we appreciate it. Bill McDonald Ford has some awesome-looking pickup trucks out uh -huh. here on the street. Um, you know, I, I would I would love to take one of those home with me, actually, but I have a plane flight to catch tomorrow. <laughs> LaCroix Riverside Pub, great place. Stop by. Um, if you're here in St. Clair and St. Clair Landscaping and Irrigation uh, in East China, yeah, we do, do appreciate their sponsorship. There's the message for the Voyager. We love the Voyager over here. Our control room is actually set up inside there, and I think they're all, uh, they've got a waitress. We don't have a waitress. But. I know, I tell you. The Big Boy in Marine City. I've, I've been to the Big Boy in Marine City. I yeah. like it over there. Yeah, we, we lost all the big boys down around where I live, oh, so it's, no. it's kind of cool to get back. Oh, Murphy Inn. Oh. I've had some crazy nights in Murphy Inn. <laughs> Pizza on Monday half off. It's <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. See, you're the local guy. You should be oh, doing yeah. all these. You can talk all the good <laughs> stuff about that. Anyway, so we will be back in just a little while. There's our beautiful start and finish boat out there. Um, we are going to be back with St. Clair River Classic, brought to you by Blue Water Offshore Racing Association and the OPA Offshore Professional Association. Um, we will be back shortly. Please stay tuned. We've got a couple little things going on, and we will be doing a replay of the race, so you're going to get to see some of the action that went on that uh, you probably missed when you were in the bathroom or something. Um, here comes LSB coming down, the, taking their little victory lap past the boardwalk. I want to know who's steering that boat. Uh, Two feet. toes. <laughs> feet. It's got autopilot. Oh, yeah. They don't have a stereo, but they got autopilot. All right, everybody, we will we will be back shortly to bring you the second race um, of the St. Clair River Classic here on this beautiful Sunday in St. Clair, Michigan.
beside them and hopefully hold them until they're all pretty much even. Then it's green flag racing. They move to the inside of the course and we're off. Right. Um, we have some great, you can, you, you, these are all local guys to you. So you, tell me, what do we have for pace boats today? Uh, you know, today our pace boats uh, uh, are, are all local guys pretty much. Um, I don't have my list right in front of me. I know uh, we do have Scott Rouse out there. Uh, he's been pacing races for us for, oh, five or six years now. Um, we have uh, Bobby out there in the crazy Crayola boat. Uh, that's another uh, wicked paint scheme boat. Yep. And then um, I'm not sure. I don't that have. Beautiful, that beautiful, there's that beautiful 38 Top Gun. Yes, that 38 Top Gun. Actually, that's uh, actually that's the beer distributor's uh Oh. oh, and we appreciate the fact that he's Absolutely. here today because we like his money and we like his <laughs> beer. Absolutely. Um, anyway, so we're, the pace boats basically have a starter on each one of them, and they're going to bring these boats up after we go through the parade lap. Um, they're going to bring them up. Now, right in front of us is the uh, is the start finish. So the, the, the boats don't actually start racing until they cross that start finish line. Mm -hmm. Now, Brian, I know you spent a lot of time looking at a lot of these boats. Oh boy. Can you explain to us how they count the laps that they have to run? You know, it's it's old school, Ted. Um, if the guys are running like in class six, they're going to run eight laps today for 32 miles. The throttle man actually has eight pieces of electrical tape stuck to the dash, and every time he goes by the start-finish boat, completing the lap, he pulls a piece off. Yeah, and that's that's as high tech as it comes, ladies oh, yeah. and gentlemen. We may be limited by speed with all of these different, uh, um, with all these different electronic devices and all this other kind of stuff. But when it comes to counting, these guys actually, because the problem is some of them wear gloves, so they can't really count on their fingers and toes. So we have to have them pull little pieces of tape. <laughs> yeah. um, in the case of Max Dead, apparently they're actually popping balloons. They have their eight laps on balloons. <laughs> uh, little inside joke. There. Um, just a rundown, what we're going to see in this first race, the Class 7 boats are going to run five laps. This is a four-mile course, so they're going to be running a total of 20 miles. And I know it seems like a very short way to go, but trust me, in one of those little boats, 20 miles on this water today is going to be a challenge. Sure. Class 6 is going to be eight laps for 32 miles, and Class 5 is going to be nine laps, and that's going to be 36 miles. Um, so, and, and because of the speed differences with these, with these classes, That'll actually bring most of them done almost at the same time. So we're going to see. Now, if you're watching on the Internet, you can probably zoom in a little bit. If you've got a big enough screen, you'll be able to see the numbers on the boats. The boats are numbered by their class first. So class 5, class 6, class 7, whatever the case may be. And, and you know what? I said class 5. We're not running class 5 yet. It's uh, V-Lite, which is 10 laps or 40 miles. The, the, but the classes are marked on the uh, the front of the boat so it'll say like 561 so that's boat number 61 in class 5 and that's how we differentiate which class each of these boats are in so it's sometimes very difficult especially for your announcers to figure out which boat is actually in front but we're going to do the best job we can sure. to figure out who's winning and who's losing and that type of thing as we go through today now you'll see the boats coming down up at the top of the course the pace boats are going to stand down there and they'll be holding up yellow flags They'll spread out a little bit, and the the race boats for each of the individual classes are going to start to mill around them in a circle. The Once the uh, pace boats have checked in with the chief scorer, and once our race control over here to our left has given um, the all clear, then we'll start basically each of the classes as we go through. Brian, you have been here... As, well, as long as I've been here, and I know you've been here for most of the time of the 21 years of this of this fantastic race. Um, tell us a little bit about Racecom. Tell us a little bit about what, what goes on just to put one of these races on. I mean, Blue Water Offshore does such a great job, and they deserve a ton of credit for, oh, for putting on this fantastic race. They, you know, it is the greatest bunch of guys that I've ever had the pleasure of working with, and I truly mean that. Um, it, it literally takes... 360 days a year to plan this event. I mean, we'll actually get together next week. We'll let this all digest for a week, make some notes, and start making changes for next year if need be. And um, our race control setup is phenomenal. Uh, Bob Courier is the uh, treasurer for Blue Water Offshore, and he also plays a double role as race control. He's up on a podium up here, 
He's got the Coast Guard up there, Marine Division. He's in contact with Angel One, that's our helicopter that's on the course today, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, he's in contact with the freighters. It's, it's phenomenal, folks, the, the amount of work uh, that goes into it, not only on race day, but all the pre-planning and event coordination things. Yeah, and, and I have I have worked um, m most of the jobs running one of these races also, oh, yeah. and and I can tell you that um, you know we we although the racers do it for the love of the sport and they get the glory and they get to run around in circles and stuff like that. A lot of times the volunteers that come out and work these things every year they put in as much or more time in in some cases as the racers do, mm -hmm. and um, it's all for the love of the sport. I mean this is a true sportsman's type sport where. Um, the, the big money, you know, there's a little bit of money here and a little bit of money there, but you're, you're doing it for the love of it. You're not doing it because uh, there's some big paycheck at the end of it. And, and, and you've got to hand it to all the people who volunteer and all the people who race, quite frankly. They go through huge personal sacrifice to do this, um, and, and it brings a great show out for us. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you look at the support fleet that's out on the water today, uh, there's 35 patrol boats out there just securing the course. So that's... 35 families that are spending the day obviously out here on the water with us uh, away from their other family uh, burning their own gas that sort of thing um, medical staff uh, it's it's crazy the amount of people that it takes to put this together all right it looks like our first pace boat with the super v lights is coming up on plane right now um, we have a yellow flag, so we have one, I can see one Super V, here comes the other Super V light. Um, remember, these are all four match boats, they have no speed limit. They are simply limited by the design and the power on the boat. We're watching for a green flag on that first beautiful 38 Top Gun pace boat. And when we go green, we are going to have a race. Now, the reason that the starter has his arm out is because he's trying to get them to come straight. A lot of times there's very limited visibility in these Super V lights. And we're green flag. We, we have a race. Coming out instantly in front is yep. LSB pulling ahead of Pirate Racing. Then Typhoon. And we haul boats. Yes. Yeah, now, Ted, they, uh, they hold their line on this first lap. Uh, they stay in their lane on this first lap. Looks like we've got a start on our, our second start, and that's the uh, Class 6 boats. All right, green flag start on Class 6. And I, there's too many of them. I can't even figure out who's in front right now. Oh, a lot. <laughs> yeah, they're going to have What they're going to have to do is hold their line through the entire first turn. And that's partly for safety and partly because the, that's the whole idea about the pole position. It gives the guy on the inside just a little bit of a help. Yep. All right, and if we can, we're looking now for the third pace boat. The yep, class right. seven boat should be coming up behind. Yep, here they come now. Looks like they're getting lined up. Still under yellow. There they go, green. They'll be coming by us here in a second. And we have a green start in class seven. There they are, class there seven boats. Else. Now you're gonna. These boats are gonna put on a show today. This this water is just rough enough for them. Um, they, they can actually run fairly fast, but at the same time, it's gonna be rough enough to be throwing them around a little bit. Oh yeah, I, I imagine the chiropractor visit will be in order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and they 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 all typically wear neck braces and knee pads. They all look like they're ready to go for, play roller derby. Sure. All right, coming around here in Super V Light, it looks like we have Pirate Racing. Um. I can see better on the screen than I can in real life. Looks like Pirate Racing has taken the lead after the first half lap in Super V Light. Running along nicely. Ladies and gentlemen, when you watch these boats, you'll notice that some of them have a big rooster tail and some of them have a low rooster tail. If you have a low rooster tail, you are making every bit of power and getting every bit of speed out of the boat that you can. Good battle for second there in Super V Light between LSB and that's Typhoon. Typhoon, yeah. Typhoon and LSB coming into the turn. Neck and neck. See how sharp they And then that in fourth place is We Haul Boats. Watch him coming around that turn. Now what's gonna happen is he's got to slow around coming around the turn. 
but then it's going to pull up and we'll see him accelerate. Here we have early detection, class six. Yep. All right, coming up on us right now, we have Pirate Racing in the lead. LSB has taken a slight lead over Typhoon. And then We Haul Boats. Oh, LSB has pulled out nicely on Typhoon at this point. Yeah, they got a, they got a pretty good little lead there. Now, as I said, Louie and, and uh, Randy both have a lot of time in Typhoon, so I wouldn't count them out by any means. Pirate has a nice lead. Yeah, it looks like our Class 6 fleet's coming up uh, around the third floor turn as well, so they'll be coming into view here shortly for us. LSB's got their work cut out for them, dragging in Pirate. And never count out Typhoon coming up behind them. All right, coming around the uh, turn on the south side of the course, we have all the Class 6 boats now. Should have sorted out a little bit. We'll have a little bit better idea when they come by us. Oh, yeah. There's one of them bat boats right up there in the hunt for first Oh, place. yeah. Looks like we have the Smith Brothers the Smith brothers are in first place with a bat boat right on their tail. And then we have bad news in third. Yeah. Whoa Mama in fourth and Boom Shakalaka in fifth. You Gun Learn is making a move on Boom Shakalaka and Max Stout is coming up on You Gun Learn. So they both might take a pass on Boom Shakalaka at this point. Actually, that's BFE in fifth there. Boom Shakalaka. Oh, my bad. A little bit to the red back boat. here. Yeah, it's red. <laughs> And on the back side, we have the Super V lights coming down. Pirate is still holding a nice lead out in front there, trying to keep it back. But Ronnie and Britt are right behind them, running, running very solid. Watch that rooster tail. You got a low rooster tail, you are, you are moving. You are hauling the mail. How fast do you think they're going right now, Ted? Uh, those boats in race trim are probably running a little over 90 miles an hour. That's phenomenal. Single engine, 34, th excuse me, 30 foot boat, uh, two seats in it, and uh, there ain't no stereo. No, no, no. It's a little tight in them things. I uh, tried to sit in one the other day, and let's just say they're not round guy friendly. All right, let's see. In in uh, your class seven, we have Bay Rat out in front, yep. followed by Turning and Burning, I believe. I uh, believe so. Oh, hanging and banging. Keep turning and burning, hanging and banging. Ah, same old thing. And then PFE. Those little boats are giving them a ride. They're great boats. They're actually, for their size, they're phenomenal boats in this offshore water. But the problem with it is, is that uh, when you string them out a lot and uh, you're trying to get the most speed out of them, then it gets, uh, it gets a little hairy. Kind of nice to see Team PFE. PFE out there with two different boats, two different classes today. Well, you know, once you get bitten by the ra by the racing bug, um, things oh. just start popping up. And when, yep. you know, if, if a little boat looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, guess what? You're going to buy a little boat. All right, Pirate Racing right now has about a three, four boat lead over LSB. Yeah, they are. About... LSB is starting to rein them in just a little bit. Yep. Here comes Typhoon in third, and Typhoon has actually dropped back slightly from where they were on the last lap. Yeah, that Wee Hall Boats is coming up here. And then Wee Hall Boats is in fourth. Um, Mike has had some time to work on that boat, although I think he's still got, he's, he's only had a couple of races on it, and I think he's uh, still working on a few of the bugs. Those boats, it's all about setup because they can't just keep putting bigger power into it or, or anything like that. They have to make sure the boat is set up perfectly. Right. Yeah, that's why I think their testing on Saturday is so important to these guys. You know, they have the opportunity to, to try different things for today. Well, and don't forget, the past couple of races have been in salt water, so these boats are um, really, they, they've been running in salt water, but now all of a sudden they're in fresh water, so it changed everything. All right, in your class seven, 
it looks like we have hanging and banging is making a move on Bay Rat. These guys are neck and neck. We're going to have to see what happens as they come around the turn, but it looks like hanging and banging has definitely pulled up on him and taken away virtually all of his lead. This could turn out to be a really good race. Those guys are, I mean, it doesn't look like anybody's got any huge advantage. And of course, remember, they've got the issue that they can only go 65 miles an hour. Right. And, it, you know, it's nice to see that these guys are all friends on and off, well, off the course. In general. <laughs> In general. In general. Now, everybody will help everybody else out until the flag drops. But when the flag drops, it's on. Yep. All right, we got a little lap traffic now going by those Class 7 boats. The Super V lights have actually come around and lapped them. That's going to cause a problem because, as you'll notice, that uh, Britt Lilly has dropped back a little bit. And that's because he got caught in lap, lap traffic. It looks like the pirate racing got in um, around him a little faster. Yep. The biggest thing, you don't want to get caught in lap traffic in these turns because as you get caught in these turns, um, then it can really, it can screw your whole day up when you're trying to run in, in boats that are basically 30 miles an hour slower. Oh, absolutely. It just changes your whole game plan on what you're doing. These guys get such a groove when they're out there, you know, mentally and physically. Absolutely. Now, Ronnie Umland, who is in um, in the boat with Britt Lilly, I mean, Britt is a young, he's actually the next generation of racers. Um, Ronnie is an older guy, and I'll tell you what, Ronnie has some, <laughs> he has got some miles under his belt <laughs> racing a boat, too. So um, he is no slouch on the throttles there. And then Typhoon is coming around in third Typhoon getting a little air, or I'm sorry if that's a pirate there getting a little air in the corner. All right, now look, coming in front of us, here's Pirate Racing with LSB. LSB has closed the gap and is pulling on him right now. This is, look at this race. These guys are right on it. Ronnie is not going to let him get away now. Now, notice that what, what, what Brynn and Ronnie have done are to move to the inside. So if they take the inside lane coming up on this next turn, they could spread it out and basically get by. Yeah, they're actually running just a little bit shorter length there when they, uh, they're on the inside like that. Absolutely. All right, you got a little lap traffic going on with the Class 7 boats and Wee Hall boats. Both Typhoon and Wee Hall have gotten around the Class 7 boats, though, so they're going to have clean water again. And right, look at this race with between Bay Rat and um, Hanging and Banging. Those guys are on top of each other. They haven't they haven't gone forward or back at all at this yeah, point. They are they are just neck and neck for the last couple laps here, and it's it's amazing. Here we see Typhoon getting past Weehaul their boats. lap traffic. We all boats still trying to get the sword out a little bit. Sometimes if these boats come in, look at this, look at this lead that LSB oh, has taken out over Pirate. Phenomenal. Unbelievable back there. As I said, if you can get around that turn and you can get on the inside, then you're gonna end up taking some, you know, you're gonna you're gonna have a, you've got a shorter course, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's amazing what can happen in just one turn. Absolutely. In class seven, we have, it looks like we have on a mission coming up on, well, see, I, I don't, I can't see it well enough myself to tell exactly which boats we have. There's LSB running almost, now we can't even see Pirate in the picture. So he's definitely taking some, some room over him. Oh, I'm sure there's some father-son conversations going on there to get back up there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the things that we have in this racing is that we've got so many father-son teams. All right, here we go. Smith Brothers looks like they are in first place yep. still. Uh, Bad News is trying to make a move on them, though. Bad News is coming up. Yeah, they're they're. they're we need to on. watch this Class 6 race because they have got some pretty tight racing. Looks like Early Detection and Woe Mama have a nice run here for third and fourth. Team PFE in fifth. And you gun learn. Yep. Now you gun learn is a fast boat. Those guys are going to be. We still got to keep an eye on them. Nothing is over yet. And then we have maxed out at sixth. There's Boom Shakalaka in seventh coming up past us. Unbelievable out there. Now look at this race. Let's be and Pirate. Pirate has actually taken a little bit of a little bit of distance back from LSB. So those guys definitely don't just have a ride in the park. This is a race all the way through. Well, 
Beautiful boat, that LSB boat. Yeah, the paint job is phenomenal. Well, Brent's a painter. Yeah. <laughs> Go figure, huh? <laughs> and there's a bat boat. That is, uh, that's one of the the uh, uh, ultimate racing experience boats. Yes. John Vogel and Mark Jacobs. As I said, those Rendell One Design boats are for lease for different races. You need to get with Rendell One Design on the web. Chris is a phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal supporter of this sport. Yes. You know, they have like 15 or 60, 15 or 16 of those out in Las Vegas that they run uh, out on the lake out there for corporate events or whatever. Yep. It's amazing. Yeah, it gives everybody a chance to get into I mean, getting into a race boat is not a cheap endeavor by any means. Oh, <laughs> so being able to rent to one. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm done. Here you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm finished with this. Could you take it back, please? <laughs> Just like a rental car, but you really can drive it like you stole it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh. All right, here we go. There's uh, Typhoon coming up. We haul boats. Oh, we haul boats. Yeah, we right. haul boats. Currently in fourth in Super V Light. Look how loose he's running. Yeah. He is trying to get everything he can out of it. He's got that front end just flying on that boat. I think I may have detected a slight miss in that motor, though. Yeah, it doesn't quite sound right. Now, one of the things you're going to hear on some of these boats is they're going to be hitting their rev limiters as they start to come out of the water. Oh, look at this race between, look at this race between Bay Rat and Hanging and Banging. Now, Bay Rat is a slightly oh, ahead of Hanging little... and Banging, but that is, there's no way you're going to call this one anytime early. That's no. for sure. This, they, they've got a race. No, that's the largest lead they've had all day, and it's not much. That's no, sure. it is not much. Beautiful blue water here. That's Oh, that's why you call blue water offshore. Hello. Who knew? <laughs> Yeah, it's like being in the Caribbean. It's it's phenomenal. The, we've actually had ex, actually had people ask us if it's dive. Uh-huh. I, I, it blew my mind the first time I saw it, yeah. I'll tell you that much. All right, we got all these boats. The boats are, right now actually are piled up in Class 6. Um, as they come by us, I should be able to get an idea. It looks like we still got Smith Brothers in the lead. Yeah, Those oh, guys yeah. always run fast. Yep. Great boat. That's one of two jokers on the uh, course today. Max Dowd is the other one. Great guys. Both groups. Great, great battle guys. for second there with Wall Mama and early detection. Wall Mama and early detection. Getting on it. They split the lap traffic between the two of them. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Careful there, Wall Mama. Yeah, I know it's a little boat, but he can still shake you up a little bit. Yeah. All right, here we go. Coming up in Super V Light. All right, there is LSB, a little passing with uh, Max Dell. And LSB has a comfortable, but certainly not insurmountable, lead over Pirate Racing. Yeah, not, not terribly too far back with them guys from Pirate. There's On a Mission, a seven boat. It's about four or five back in the field. Yep. Camera crew is working hard trying to keep up with all these boats. It is a little difficult. It's a lot harder than you would think it is, people. Trust me. Oh, you know, we've got a great crew out here today with the camera crew. They've got them on top of the local restaurants here on the boardwalk. A little bit everywhere. Absolutely. CTV6 does a great job. They do a lot of sports uh, sports broadcasting. Unfortunately, yeah. they only get a chance to do this once a year. <laughs> yeah. It's a little different than basketball. <laughs> yeah, this is not high school football, kids. No. <laughs> so you only you only you only play bat you, you play basketball with one ball. Ah. <laughs> oh my. All right, there's the ultimate racing experience bat boat. Run along. They are a lot of fun to ride. Oh, they yeah. and they they're very safe. They have a canopy over them, so you have a very good <laughs> sense of, uh, of of safety in them. They're you're strapped in. You're comfortable. Yep. They're a handful. Oh, yeah. They, but, have, uh, they have been here all week. Testing. Good times. We haul boats currently in fourth at Super V Light. Mike's over here from, I believe, Pennsylvania. Smith Brothers, class six, still your leader. Yeah, 
they got that joker running nice today. Absolutely. Now remember, everything that we see here and everything, even when the race is over, um, is all unofficial. Yep. All these guys are going to have to drag their uh, GPS unit back out of the boat. They've got to humbly walk to <laughs> Frank, the GPS guy's trailer, yes. hand it in, give him his $100 bill, and, and hope that they didn't break out. Yes, air prayer. Yes, and well, you know, prayers don't work with Frank. No. No. Just Benjamins. There you go. All right, look at this race in Class 7. We have, once again, hanging and banging and Bayrat on top of each other. I mean, I know they're kind of separated, but when it comes to <laughs> front and rear, they're pretty much on top of each other. Oh, yeah. So those guys are not giving up. They're both giving a great run today. They've got to make sure they stay under that 65 mile an hour speed limit or else uh, if you break out and the GPS says no, you go to the back. And that's a relatively new class, I believe, isn't it, Tim? Uh, they started that about two years ago. It was really, truly to be an entry-level class, um, right. and it's worked out great. The guys who are running them, um, as I said, it's, it's, it's not very, very expensive to put one of those boats on the water, looks and like, it makes for some great racing. Looks like we might have a boat off-plane down there in the, uh, just coming up before uh, turn three. I can't quite see who that is. Uh, maybe our cameraman can get a shot for us, but uh, it's, uh, they come down off plane, looks like they're headed to the inside of the race course. Well, oh, they're on the outside, actually. Remember, it's not how fast you go, it's how long you go fast. This is a sport of attrition, folks. There you go. Once again, LSB is holding a nice lead over Pirate. going to try and figure out what's going to what we're going to start seeing happen here pretty shortly is, is that like class seven should be just about done can you get a look over there brian and see what yeah, we got going on over here the spectacles they here oh ted 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 that's the that's a six two six maxed out boat. Uh oh looks like they got the hatches up the guys are okay looks like they might be having some mechanical issues I know you guys uh, were having some issues yesterday. All I got to say is if they find a balloon in that hatch, you're dead, man. <laughs> Folks, we'll explain that to you a little bit later, but there's always uh, always something fun going on uh, in our pit area. All right, in your screen right now, we have LSB who has moved out to a comfortable lead over Pirate Racing. Now, they are not speed limited, so that means that if they come across first, they are going to be the winner of this race. Um, for both Britt and Ronnie, that is not a new thing. They have done very well since they've been together in the boat, mm -hmm. and Ronnie has a, a storied racing career also. Yeah, some of these guys have trophy walls. Some guys have trophy shelves. These guys, some of these guys have trophy rooms. Now, it looks like I have one of the Super V lights down in the middle of the course, and I don't think that they're done. And I believe, if I can see it correctly, that might be Pirate Racing. Or LSB's taking a victory lap. We have On a Mission in Class 7 running by. Good little run for them today. Sure, they're having a great day out there. Now, I can see on the back side of the course, it looks like Bay Rat has lost a little bit to Hanging and Banging. So Hanging and Banging now has a nice little lead over Bay Rat, and I believe this is their last lap. So when they come around this turn, we may see the winner of Class 7. Yeah, they could be, uh, they could be neck and neck, you never know. All right, it looks like we have LSB in the lead in Super V Light. And I believe Pirate is still behind him. Well, let's see, there's there's yeah, LSB Pirate. coming by us, and he's going to be lapping We Haul Boats yep, and coming. Pirate. So that means that the Super V Light we saw down was Typhoon. Yes.
All those guys run hard. Remember that that one boat that's that's to the right there, we haul boats, is actually getting lapped by those two boats right now. So he's got a little, a little bit down on speed. Here comes our class six leaders. That's going to be Smith Brothers Racing. Facing right now a challenge from Whoa Mama. Whoa Mama is hanging right in there with him. Really? And then followed by early detection. Yeah, there's Typhoon. Oh, right Typhoon's there. back up again. All right then. Here comes our class seven fleet. All right, unofficially, it looks like if this is the last lap for, for seven, then that means it is going to be hanging and banging. Yeah. They're and waiting. then Bay Rat. They just took the flag. So unofficially, your winner in class seven is going to be in the center of the course is going to be hanging and banging with Bay Rat behind him. Now we're going to wait for to see who we got third seven as they come around the lower turn here. Absolutely beautiful day out today. Weather is great. Gentlemen out of the north. Got Lily Sport Boats running. Looks like we have uh, the Rena One design, the yellow boat. And the uh, that's uh, Ultimate Racing Ultimate Experience. Racing, yep. He's down now. I don't know whether he thinks his day is over or he's got an issue. Yep. He was running kind of slow when he came by us before. Sailing by. Yeah, it's truly an international event. We've got teams from U.S. and Canada here Yeah, well, it's, you know, hey. these people go back and forth between countries like I go back and forth between, you know, cities. Oh, I know. It's just right there. It's right there. Yeah. All right, it looks like it's Super V Light right now, unofficially. Well, no, they've still got, they probably got another couple laps to go, yeah, actually. I think so. But I believe we may have a third place here in Class 7. That is going to be on a mission. I believe so. But I'm not positive about that. Class 7 boys are done for the day. And like I said, it was only 20 miles, but I'll bet that was the roughest 20 miles uh, that some of those guys have had on their boat ever. Uh, yes, I am. I'm sure. You know, the water doesn't look that bad, but in a boat that size and that speed, it makes a difference. All right, now I would say that the, the, the space between Lily and Pirate right now is going to be one, two, three, four. They got about six or seven seconds on them. Yeah. So that's a fairly significant lead. Unless something happens, um, it's going to be very, very difficult for, for Pirate to make that up. Yeah, it all, it, it, now it just comes down to driving the boat, relying on those mechanics that you work so hard with to keep that thing going. Yeah, and unfortunately, we all know that there's a whole lot of parts and pieces inside those boats, and it just takes one little 50-cent part to make your day go horribly, horribly wrong. You know, that that's an amazing thing. You know, some of these guys we'll see later in the day have astronomical size boats. One little piece. Absolutely. So all the Super V lights are still running. We did have one down in the middle of the course for at, at one point. Now those boats do have 525 racing engines in them, which have a smart craft system. So he may have just need to reset. Right now it looks like in your class six, Smith Brothers is still holding off Whoa Mama. And I think they may have one more lap to go. Followed by early detection. So it's Smith Brothers, Woe Mama, and early detection. Yeah, Bad News was up there for a while. I haven't seen them in a little bit. I don't know if they're No, I haven't seen them. We, we may have had a couple of the six. The, we seem to have lost a couple of the six boats. Here comes U Gun Learn, unofficially fifth place right now, and, and PFE is in fourth. Yep. We'll have all the results coming up in just a little bit. We obviously need to finish this up uh, for a couple of these classes, and then we will try to give you unofficial results from what we see. And of course, we'll have the flag ceremony at the start finish boat for each of the classes. Always nice to see the guys. And you gun learn is pulling off the course and heading over for the Pine River. I don't think, to be honest with you, that, he, that he, their day is done. I think he's got an issue and he's pulling off. 
um, because he is not, because the other six boats are still running. Now, what I'm looking for right now is to see, I believe this may be the last lap for LSB and Pirate. And so far, and from what I can see on the back side of the course, it looks like LSB is still has a healthy little lead. They, of course, made the trip all the way up here from Maryland. Mm -hmm. And we'll be watching the start finish line here shortly to see what we see about that because they you may know, be done. You know, Ted, we talk about our, our assets out there. One of the most valuable ones to us is our Angel One. That's our helicopter. We're very fortunate this year that our helicopter is being provided by the Cleveland Construction Offshore Race Team. They actually have two other medical boats out there for us as well. Cleveland Construction is a huge, huge supporter of this race and of offshore racing in general. They have a phenomenal boat, which we're going to see out here a little later on today, um, with Evil Ed Smith. But uh, we will be looking for that shortly. So LSB is still taking another lap. So that means we probably got at least one more lap to go on the Super V Lights. And there you see Smith Brothers and Woe Mama. Now, Woe Mama is, Close they're really not, uh, I don't know. I. I they may have closed a couple of feet here and there, but it looks like Smith tell. Brothers is doing a nice job just staying right out there. Remember, they've got to hang in there, and they can't, they've can't. they got to watch that GPS speedometer. Absolutely. You can look like you won all day long, but if you break out of that class, it's, yep. it's disheartening as a race goes. Now, we should say that all of these boats here are competing for national championship points. Yes. And you have to win or at least be at virtually every race to have a chance at that national championship. Oh, each, yeah. each class has a national championship that they're racing for. And so the more laps you complete, the higher you are in the standings at each race. And sometimes it doesn't take winning every race. It just takes being there and maybe hitting the second or third of sure. most races. And the next thing you know, you have a national championship. But it is a long it is, it is hard fought, and it is a long, long season to get those national championship points. Yep, a lot of water miles and a lot of road miles. Yeah. Now look at this. Will Mama and Smith Brothers are right on top of each other. I told you. Unbelievable. Will like Mama is Will out Mama in front. Out Smith Brothers unofficially is going to be in second place. That's awesome. Oh, oh. Wow. What a day. You know the. The, the guys at Smith Brothers ran a great race all day long today. How's the lead? It just comes down to that last turn today. Unofficially in, in Class 6, we have Woe Mama first, Smith Brothers second, and Early Detection Racing in third. I wish we'd seen that last turn. Boy, I'll tell you oh. what, I, I, Woe Mama must have made some magic there. In fourth place, it looks like we have PFE in Class 6. Yep. Well, Mama is certainly taking their victory lap. If they pulled that off and didn't break out, they did good. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There you see, the guys are pretty happy there. Yep. Yep. But you got to see that that's an unofficial time. Oh, sure. Looks like our Super V lights are coming up to us here. All right, coming around the back, we have the beautiful Super V light of LSB. What's ahead of them? Oh, boom, boom shakalaka. Be about sixth in class six. Ah, uh, yep. Here's right. LSB. Checkered flag, unofficially first. For LSB, Pirate Racing is second. Well, I saw them waving the checkered flag, but it could be they still have a lap. They may have been waving that at the Class 6 boats because it looks yeah. like Boom Chakalaka is just keeping on going. And the one thing about prattling on here on the Internet is, is that you can't count laps for all these stupid boats. No, it's, it's a little difficult. A lot of tape on the table there would be. Yeah, we don't have any tape on the table. <laughs> well, Mama is over by the start-finish boat. They, of course, want to collect their checkered flag. Finishing up in class six, we have a, uh, Salem by. Yep. Here 
goes Typhoon. I'm not sure whether they're in third or fourth. I'm not sure who stopped in the middle of the course. If he was the one who stopped, then he could be in fourth. Yeah, I'd be interested to see where he's at lap-wise. I know he, he was, it was either him or um, we Hall Bulls that was lapped earlier. Yes. watching some of these safety boats and they're literally moving sideways at about four or five miles an hour down through the current. It's unbelievable how strong the current is here. Oh, I, I was watching the, the sheriff is actually out today on a jet ski out here and he, he floated by us and fairly quickly. Hey, on a hot day like this, that's not a bad job right there. He helps when you're on the top of the food chain. Yeah, I got to grab the uh, binoculars here for a second because I said, oh, no, LSB is down. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that we're seeing a great shot of Pirate going there. Yep. Pirate is coming around on the last turn. Now, what I can't tell is if they had done their laps or if, if we're going to we're gonna have to watch the LSB boat and see if he goes around for the full turn because he's obviously got some kind of something going wrong, but it looks like he's pulling into the... Um, start finish boat. So I yeah. think maybe their day was over. And that's why they're done. That would make more sense. Because they were running, they were running really well. There's Boom Shock and Lockout. I believe they're going to take this is their last lap. No, that's actually PFE. Or PFE, I'm sorry. I think Boom is actually on their second extra credit lap. Something of that effect. You know, we were talking about the national points. I, I, I think nobody told them that. Uh, <laughs> there, there is no extra credit for extra laps. No, no, no. A nice shot of Pirate coming by. Now, Pirate may have been the one that was down in the course. He, he could be theoretically third at this point in time. Or no, excuse me, he probably still second. Yeah, we'll have to see when the official results come out, which will be coming up soon. I'm, I'm sure we're going to get those posted up for you as soon as they're official. Yeah, that's always easier said than done. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we got a great crew inside. Any in the local area, by the way, uh, the award ceremony tonight is downtown in St. Clair at the new uh, Mall Center Court. Beautiful oh, place down there. We're gorgeous. going to have the awards. Awards roll is a good time. Everybody has a chance to get together and, and, and congratulate the guys who worked so hard to win. Yep. If we can get a look over here at the start-finish boat, it looks like uh, LSB is picking up their checkered flag. Yeah, folks, if you enjoy the racing out here today, uh, we've got more of it coming up, obviously, all day today. Uh, and then again, in two weeks, we're going to be up in Port Huron. So. Yep, the next race on OPA is going to be, and the OPA circuit is going to be up in Port Huron, Michigan. Great little town up there, not too far away. And then directly a week after that is going to be uh, Fall River, Massachusetts. So we're back out on the yep. East Coast again. <laughs> yep. A lot of weekend warrior work. There we see the boats just kind of getting ready to head back in, I believe. Yeah, well, most of the guys who are going to win today are probably going to take their uh, victory lap, come down the uh, sure. beautiful boardwalk here in, in St. Clair. It's always great. They really appreciate all the fans that come out here to see them, and, and you know, they want to give them a little bit of a show, and, and certainly when you win... Sure. You want to make sure that uh, you know. You want to make sure that you, you get the, let the fans see how much you appreciate the fact that they're out here and that type of thing. Here we got coming up here. On. That should be Boom Shagalaga. I think, like yep. I said, I think he pretty much he's on his maybe second extra credit lap. All right, so unofficially in Class 6, we have Woe Mama and then Smith Brothers and then Early Detection. And unofficially in Class 7, we have um, Hanging and Banging and then Bay Rat and then I believe it was On a Mission. And then your unofficial winner, in, well, actually, as 
pr more official winner in uh, Super V Light is going to be LSB Racing, followed by um, Racing and then Typhoon and We Hall, but I'm not positive of those numbers. Yeah, I'm sure Chief Score is working on that right now to try to get that all squared away. It does look like they gave the checkered flag to LSB out there. Yep, and Woe Mama has their, their checkered flag in class six. our class seven unofficial winner seven five five hanging and banging yep good for them yeah it's nice to have a collection of checkered flags every once in a while yeah well the good thing about it is is that um, with their with their spare laps uh boom shakalaka got a lot of good camera time because sure. uh, you know <laughs> and it's all by themselves out there in the middle of the course, we have uh, Team LSB with their checkered flag. And I suspect we will see them make a little run along the boardwalk. Yeah, that's the highlight of a lot of the guys' day. It's a highlight of a lot of the fans' day, too. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on a hot day, a little bit of spray doesn't hurt. Yeah, absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be taking a little bit of a break here shortly. I wanted to talk about a couple of our sponsors real quick because we have some phenomenal sponsors that are bringing this, this broadcast to you. If you're in the area or you come up to St. Clair, and by the way, I would recommend it as one of your bucket list races, we would love to see it at the Voyager. Uh, the Voyager is a great entertainment and restaurant complex here um, at the end of St. Or, or at the end of the race course here in St. Clair. Um, Mike Laporte is a phenomenal host, and we would love to see you come out there and, and spend some time. They have some great food. Um, it is actually, by the way, the best place pretty much on the whole river to watch the race, except for, well, our vantage point. But, yeah, uh, I'm liking it. but we don't have a waitress. They get a waitress over there, so that's something. Um, Beware, Beware Lumber um, is right down the street. Oh, sorry. Got Pepper Joe's up there. My bad. All right, so we're going to run a few commercial things here. Uh, Rivers Bend Marina is one of our sponsors, and it is also the sponsor and the owner of Cleveland Construction, the race boat. There's Beware Lumber. They're right down the street. Big sponsor of this race. Have been for quite some time, and we appreciate it. Bill McDonald Ford has some awesome-looking pickup trucks out oh, here on oh. the street. Um, you know, I, I, would, I would love to take one of those home with me, actually, but I have a plane flight to catch tomorrow. <laughs> LaCroix Riverside Pub, great place. Stop by. Um, if you're here in St. Clair and St. Clair Landscaping and Irrigation uh, in East China, yeah, we do, do appreciate their sponsorship. There's the message for the Voyager. We love the Voyager over here. Our control room is actually set up inside there, and I think they're all, uh, they've got a waitress. We don't have a waitress. I know, I tell you. The Big Boy in Marine City. I've, I've been to the Big Boy in Marine City. I yeah. like it over there. Yeah, we, we lost all the big boys down around where I live, oh, so it's, oh. it's kind of cool to get back. Oh, Murphy Inn. Oh. I've had some crazy nights in Murphy Inn. <laughs> Pizza on Monday half off. It's <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. See, you're the local guy. You should be oh, doing yeah. all these. You can talk all the good <laughs> stuff about that. Anyway, so we will be back in just a little while. There's our beautiful start finish boat out there. Um, we are going to be back with St. Clair River Classic, brought to you by Blue Water Offshore Racing Association and the OPA Offshore Professional Association. Um, we will be back shortly. Please stay tuned. We've got a couple little things going on, and we will be doing a replay of the race, so you're going to get to see some of the action that went on that uh, you probably missed when you were in the bathroom or something. Um, here comes LSB coming down, the, taking their little victory lap past the boardwalk. I want to know who's steering that. Uh, Two feet. toes. <laughs> feet. It's got autopilot.
Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the second race of the St. Clair River Classic, brought to you by the OPA and the Blue Water Offshore Association. I'm Ted Gennady. I'm with my good friend Brian, the balloon man, Kowalski, and we are here to announce your race today. The second race is going to be as easily, easily as good as the first one was. We've got a ton of boats out there. We've got several different classes, and we are going to have some racing today. Brian, yes, sir. what are we looking like in the first race for the big boys? Uh, you know, we've got a great race coming up this uh, next race in the extreme class. We've got the, ninth, the number 19, Cat Can Do. That is Ed Smith and Keith Holmes. Uh, local guys here, they're going to be uh, a force to be reckoned with out there. They're going to put on a good show. And then in the super stock class, we've got the S19 FJ propeller. That's Gary Chancellet and Gary Ballou. Now, Gary races uh, all over the world. I think he races out in Dubai a lot, doesn't he? Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's going to be a good one. They're in a Doug Wright boat. And then uh, the S110 Smart Marine is... Chris Schoenbaum and Tyler Chaslett, and they're also in a dug right. So that class is going to be a, a nice, nice race right there. Now, in, Clay, in case out there in viewer land that you didn't pick that up, you will notice that the name Chastelet, there is one in each boat. What we have here is the dad who has been racing forever and always um, in the S19 boat. And we have his son, Taylor, who recently started racing last year in the S110 boat. So apparently Dad decided that uh, Junior was getting a little, uh, a little too froggy and needed to be shown something. So today I think Dad is going to be out there in the super stock boat um, to, to teach him a lesson. Class 5, um, these are a little bit smaller and a little bit slower, but we have a huge field. Uh, starting out with 502, Wanna Race, which is uh, Lee Baker and Chris Rendell. That is uh, one of the bat boats, um, which is also, by the way, um, a lease boat. And then Wings on the Water with Matt Burt and Tom Vogel is another one of the Rendell One design boats. And as we spoke about during the first race, those boats, um, you can lease a seat in there and uh, sort of get a feel for the racing experience, which is kind of cool. Now, joining the OPA again after a few years uh, away on vacation is uh, Mark Gallagher and Jonathan Wood in Specialized Racing. This is an older outboard superboat. Um, they, they have a lot of time racing here with the OPA, um, but Mark sort of took a little bit of time off, but things are good, and he's back, and we're happy to see him. Um, we also have Was Up 2 with Nick Smith, Anthony Smith, and uh, their navigator, Matt DiGiacomo. Um, they are racing a uh, Carrera. Uh, it's an old boat, but it's unbelievably fast, oh and that boat has won a lot of races. Um, then we have uh, Are You Faster Racing? EJ Salamone and Ken Salamone. EJ is the son. Ken is the dad. They have a 30-foot superboat. Um, it has won the past three races, and they oh. are looking to make it a fourth. I'll so, tell you what, they're in for a... In for a run out there. Well, they've got a lot of competition, but uh, Are You Faster has been rocking and rolling this year. They've done a great job. BK Motorsports is Brian Klinek and uh, Ben Buffa. They're in a Wellcraft. Um, then we have a repeat offender, Eric Robb and David Robb, uh, with their navigator, Rob DiStefano, uh, which is a Magnum. And then we have another superboat, another 30 superboat reinforcer with Al Piscano and Don Goodwin. Um, these Superboat Y2Ks are pretty much dominating um, the Class 5 racing. Um, Fast Eddie Simmons, uh, who normally runs yep. a Cisco boat, they're out right now. They had a, a, a mechanical issue, but they have won a ton of these races. Um, the Superboats are very, very difficult to beat um, in, in both rough water and smooth water, quite frankly. Um, then we have um, Ultimate Ride, uh, Rich Stebb and Josh Wall. And that's a Pantera. And then finally, Push It Tin is Paul and Jake Jenkins in a DCB. That boat has won a lot of races. Um, in fact, the fact that they're racing far outside from the pole is because they won last race um, in Manasquan. So I can see looking over here that we have the pace boats out on the course. Um, also, this uh, time we're going to have the Class 4 boats. What do you got there, Brian? Uh, in Class 4, 
469, Tyler Crockett, or Cro the Crockett Rocket. Uh, that's Tyler Crockett and Chris Carbone. They're out, in the, out there in the Joker. And then we've got the 489 PFE RMK. That's Rick Kotecki and Gary Cook, uh, long-standing racers up here. They're in a Yucca <laughs> catamaran. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later. That, that boat's pretty special. Yeah, we've got a, a very special boat out there today, this little Yucca Cat. Um, we're looking at um, our live feed right now. We have one of the Baja Pace, or excuse me, the Cigarette Pace boat out there. We have two Bajas today and a beautiful 30, 38 foot cigarette Top Gun as our Pace boats. Um, it is a great honor uh, to be a Pace boat. Um, usually it's reserved for sponsors or guys who've spent a lot of time working with the clubs to do this and that type of thing. Um, I've done it before. It was, um, it was an awesome time. Of course, I did it in the ocean, and by the time it was all said and done, I really just wanted to drop the green flag so I could get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little and rough let, out there. And let the racers go racing. Right now, you're looking at the FJ uh, uh, propellers, the S19, and there coming into your screen is the Cat Can Do Extreme boat. That boat uh, with Ed Smith in it is uh, Ed, Evil Ed Smith from up here in uh, beautiful St. Clair. Is, uh, is in that boat today, and they are going to put on a show. That boat is unbelievably fast. They're actually doing double duty. Uh, both both Keith and Ed will be in the Cleveland construction boat um, coming up here on our next race a little bit later on this afternoon. There you go. They're going to take a little run down here uh, along the seawall so that all their local hometown fans, that is, by the way, a, a local boat, and uh, all their fans are here. They, everybody's wearing Cat Can Do stuff today. Everybody's excited to see about. The beautiful water here, and uh, the reason they call it the Blue Water Offshore Series, and the reason that uh, we're here in St. Clair today, um, awesome place, beautiful water, beautiful weather. Couldn't be any better today, Brian. Oh, it's gorgeous out there. Uh, you know, the weather's great today. We've got a nice little breeze coming out of the north. It's just very comfortable. We had a little bit of rain yesterday, and today is just awesome. Absolutely. Um, the, the, the boardwalk down from me is complete. I mean, it's completely full of people. It is amazing. This town comes out for these races, and of course, this race is very special because they have a carnival, and they have vendors, and they have a, sort of a you know, they close the streets down and everybody walks within the, you know, within the boats and, and sees the racers and everything. But it is, this town embraces racing like almost none other I've ever been in. It's, it's fantastic. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the community is really behind it. You know, the concerts the last couple nights have been phenomenal. Uh, last night we had Candle Box out here. Uh, that was a great show. And then uh, Starship, Starship was, here. was here on Friday. Uh, another great group. It's just, it's awesome. This event, uh, it turns about 110,000 people from Friday to Sunday, and uh, it's, it's just a great time. Now, you live here. How many people are in this town when there's not 110,000 people here? Like six. <laughs> <laughs> no. So you, the wife, yeah. your four friends, yeah. and that's pretty much that's it. Pretty much it. No, oh, very nice. Yeah. No, seriously, the town population is around, around 4,000 in the summer. It dwindles down to about 2,500 in the winter because everybody seems to go sell. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, the winners here are um, winner. Yeah, we race icebergs in the winter. There you go, there you go. It is it is phenomenal up here in, in St. Clair. It's one of the race sites that I love to come to. And, and quite frankly, if you have a bucket list of race sites and you want to come out, and obviously if you're out there on the Internet today, on this beautiful day in most parts of the country watching this race, then you're serious about it. So if you're serious about it and you want to put it on your bucket list, this is one of the races I would definitely recommend you come to. Oh, by far, by far one of the best ones on the circuit. Now, right now, we're just milling around a little bit. The pace boats are trying to bring everybody into place. We're going to do a quick parade lap so that everybody can, number one, the racers are going to want to get a look at the uh, course, and number two, all the fans want to get a look at all the race boats. Um, so we're going to get them up, and they're going to do their, their uh, pace lap and take a look at that. Then, once again, we are going to have three starts in this race. Cat can do getting uh, getting up over the over the hump as it were. Yep. Really looking forward to these two super stock boats going at each other. Um, the the outboard boats are fantastic. They're very reliable, um, and they're very very evenly matched. So they when they run, it's it's real racing, which is which is awesome to watch. Yeah, they're gonna 
they're actually going to run 11 laps for 44 miles this afternoon. So for them, it's, it's a good run. And then the uh, extreme, uh, the Cat Can Do, they're going to run 12 laps for 48. I, I'm I'm intrigued by this little outboard cat, this single outboard cat. I mean, it looks like I'm looking at it on the land anyway. It looks like it'd be a lot of fun to run it. Yeah. Um, it, it is for for those guys like us that are height challenged. Um, it could be a problem. And, and when I say height challenged, I mean we, we have a lot less height than our weight should should have. But yeah. um, but it, it is a very cool looking boat, and it looks like it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I was talking with Rick. Uh, Rick Kozaki is the owner of that boat. Uh, he had that shipped over from Turkey, actually. And uh, I guess that's a real big class out there that way. Yeah, they um, they have a lot of different boats over there in, in Europe, and they have a great, I mean, a, a, a very, very good uh, race series over there also. Yep. Um, quite frankly, I'm a little partial to this race series, but, you know, hey, Merca. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. <laughs> you know, and, that, and that's one thing. If you look at all the boats out there, Ted, I, I'll bet you 98% of them got American flags somewhere on them. All these guys are just America at heart. That's and that's the truth. Um, Brian. Yeah. That's in the rule book. You have to have an American flag on your boat. Oh. Because okay. America. Oh, I got it. <laughs> 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 so well, I like my explanation better. Oh okay, yeah, yeah, they're they're all they're all oh, oh, they're all patriotic. Trust me, you know, every one of them stands up for the for the national anthem. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of rules in the rule book, and I I sure. will talk about you know I could talk about decals that are supposed to be on the boat and decals that aren't supposed to be on the boat oh, and God, things yeah. like that. But we'll just leave that be for the time being. Yeah. You can see our, our uh, pace boats are running around the course now. They've taken the boats around at about 55, 60 miles an hour. It's very important for these guys. Some of them didn't test yesterday, so they didn't have a good feel for the course. And some of them really just need to um, just, just get a look at the course. Now, can you tell me, trivia question, what's different about this race than every other race that we do? This one is an international race, obviously. Um... Not quite different than Port Huron, so I, I know I'm losing on that home front. And this race races clockwise. Exactly. And and that's the thing. This is the only race that the, in the series where we race clockwise. And it just it has a lot to do with the currents here on the St. Clair River, and it has a lot to do with the way the course is set up. Over the years, they found out that it's best to race clockwise. But it's really, really unnerving for some of the drivers <laughs> out here because they're so used to turning into a corner to the left and in fact, some of the boats are even set up specifically yeah. with the with the steering wheel on the left hand side, so that they can hit that corner really tight. And now all of a sudden, it's on the wrong side of the boat. Yeah, it, it's it's truly a challenge. I, I was talking with uh, Ed Smith with Cleveland Construction. That's a new boat for them this year. Actually, they got it late last year, but um, they they switch boats. And when they did, the position switch driver and throttleman, and that and that took some getting used to for them guys. Absolutely, and that boat is an unbelievable. I mean, I, I've, I've known that boat for a long time, and it, it, it in all of its iterations, and it is an awesome boat. I can't wait to see it out here running today, especially with the great competition we're going to see with him and the Emsel boat with Bob Teague, because those guys are both guys with a lot of, of experience under their belts, and they are not playing around. They are in it to win it. Oh, absolutely. They, they are chasing points for their national championship together. Um, friends off the course but when it's on the course and race time it's race time and uh they they are definitely both in it to win it you know bob's got so many years of experience in so many races and so does ed i mean he's can't be counted out he's got a lot of years in this too now you know we've been talking about driver and and that type of thing and 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 the funny thing is is that i suppose you know there's probably i realize that the people out here watching this today are probably kind of hardcore but i gotta tell you the one thing that people that astounds people all the time when you talk to them about it is the fact that these boats require a driver and a throttleman. And, you know, just like I'm not here driving this show today by myself, i got to have my driver over here. I'll, th I'll throttle. You drive. Okay. Um, it, it, it's, it's a great teamwork type of thing where, 
These guys have to get in the boat. They have to get comfortable with one another. And, and, and quite frankly, because over the years, we've learned that there's just so much going on in the boat that one guy really, it, it's very difficult for him to, to, to handle it all and to keep it all, yep. you know, to keep it all together. Yeah, and, and communication, that's where communication is the key with the whole thing. You know, a lot of these guys have got intercoms. They're talking back and forth. When their intercoms go out, they're using hand signals. Some are friendly, some are not. Uh -huh. But uh, communication is a key along with mechanics, and it's just very interesting. Very yeah, and, and, it, and it is. It's the difference, really, quite frankly, between a winner, a winning and a losing team. Um, they have to be able to, to get together. They have to trust each other. They have to know when sure. when, a, when a driver is going to dive in or when a driver is going to run wide or whatever the case may be on a turn. It's very important for the throttleman to understand you know, what's going on and, and sort of be able to anticipate how he thinks his driver is going to go and vice versa. I mean, if the guy's pouring on the coals, you don't want to be starting to whip into a turn when you know when he gets into that turn. So, oh, absolutely, yeah. One one wrong mistake in these things, and and it, it can be devastating. Yeah, and you've had some issues here. I mean, not not issues. You've had incidents here um, on this course, yep. and 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 we've had a couple of fairly large boats, in fact, who've who've run into trouble. Even though it's a very calm course compared to an offshore course like like Atlantic City or something like that. Um, and, and obviously, the Blue Water Offshore has always done a fantastic job. You have a great safety fleet here. You have unbelievable control over everybody. And the communication is, is to be envied by, really, truthfully, every safety fleet in the country. Because you guys, I mean, after 21 years, kind of got it figured out. Yeah, we appreciate it. It's just been, uh, you know, you, you, you take and you review it every year, and you kind of see what you can make it better for next year. Now, it looks like we have the pace boat bringing the two super stock boats up. So what we're going to be looking for here, and I believe the extreme boat is coming up with them too. He's going to be the outside so he does not mess up the racing between those two super, super stock boats. But what we're looking for is a green flag on the boat, which we have. We have a green flag start in super stock and in extreme. Well, they are just screaming right along there. Look at that cat. Yeehaw. I tell you, that's going to be a great race in Super stock there. Yeah, those boats are not limited by speed like some of the other boats are. We've talked about the GPS units and everything. The super stock boats are limited by the weight and the horsepower on the engines. Um, so we're going to keep an eye on them. Those boats are very, very closely matched. And of course, we have a father-son du duel going on in yeah. there. So that's going to be awesome to see how that how that comes out. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting at the award ceremony. <laughs> Being an older guy, I want to say that uh, age and experience will uh, will overcome youth and cunning, but we'll see what happens. That's true. All right, we have a start now in class four. The Crockett Rocket has pulled out in front All right. immediately. But you know what? That little Viking, uh, that little Viking catamaran is right on his heels. So this is going to yep. be a great race too. Now these boats are limited by their GPS to. 85 miles an hour, so they have to stay under that speed. Yeah, this is the maiden voyage for Rick and that Yuka, so we'll see how that plays out. Now here is your race right here. Look at all these Class 5 boats. This is incredible. This is the oh way my. racing is supposed to be. Side by side. Okay. By side, by side, by side, by side. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, so we have three clean starts in all in all classes. The class five boats are there's so many of them I, I I won't even begin to try and call it at this point. <laughs> Looking on the back side of the course, obviously we have the uh, extreme boat out there just taking a nice little walk in the park. We have the super stock boats. It looks like FJ what, Propeller. It looks like FJ Propeller is out in front right now. So oh, how's Mr. that going, Mr. Chaslin? Uh huh. There you go. Look at him dicing up in that oh, turn. You. Here we go. We're coming down. Cat Can Do is coming around. Probably running in the. Well, it's classified. I'd, I'd have to kill somebody if I told them exactly how fast they're running. But it's it's there's there's three digits on their GPS right yeah. this minute. That boat is an older skater hull, but yep. it runs phenomenally well. It has unbelievably good horsepower, great acceleration, fantastic boat. Yeah, 
Yeah, number 19, your extreme cat can do. Yeah, that's one of the few boats left on the circuit with the independent contracts. All right, here we have uh, your Smart Marine Super Stock. That is unofficially, well, it's in second place right now in Superstock. FJ Propellers is in first. Actually, FJ looks like they have pulled about, oh, I don't know, five, 300 yards, maybe 200 yards? Yeah, something like that. Good, good three, four seconds. All right, it looks like class five is coming around the lower turn now. This is going to be nuts because there's so many of them, and they're still all pretty well bunched together. So, we'll, oh, there they are on the back street. Yeah, we got Tyler Crockett coming up. Oh, class four. four there, yeah. Get a little air there. Bounce it down a little bit. Left and right. He's got it loose. Remember, he's going to have to run pretty loose against that cat because once that cat's up on its cushion of air, they've got a they they've got a serious advantage when it comes to uh, running a cat over a V hole in this kind of smooth water. Sure. Of course, the Crockett Rocket has had a lot of uh, races under its hull, and it. Uh, I've heard it'll actually do 222 miles an hour, but that, that may that may just be propaganda. Hard to say. You know, Tyler's got a dyno out there. <laughs> I'm thinking that if Tyler wanted to build a boat that would go that fast, he'd probably figure out a way to do it. Absolutely. Well, I see our class fives are finally hanging down to turn three and four. And I'm going to tell you, that's going to be a turn to watch it on there. Absolutely. All right, here comes one of the bat boats around. Around, Pushing around. tin right behind him. Ruster right back in the in the hunt. Look at all those boats all piled up on top of each other. This is anybody's race at this point in time. Now look at that bat boat. That that is running those Rendell boats. That you might be he might be renting that seat, but I'll tell you what, that boat is rocking. Yeah. They've been out all week testing out here, and I'll tell you what, that's paying off for them. That Aki Manor felt design has been around for about 20 years now, but I'll tell you, it's it's hard to beat when it's running right. Looks like we have the bat boat, then we have Push 10, Ruster. Who is that? Ultimate ride. Ultimate ride. If I wasn't such an old guy, I could probably call these better, but you know, when they get a little too far away. There we have some. on your screen right now the Rab Brothers and Repeat Offender running good. Great team, they've been around for a while. Absolutely. Got a lot of got a lot of runs on that hole right there. Great guys too. Good guys. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to uh, be around all the guys. They're so friendly. I just like to have a like to have a good team and have fun. Well, as I said, everybody does this for the love of the sport, and, sure. and you know they they like being with their people. They like being with our friends and, and seeing each other at, at race sites and that type of thing. All right, so right now in Superstock, you have FJ Propellers leading Smart Marine by about three or four hundred yards. Little father son battle going on there. Action in the five boats up in the turn. Now remember, these guys are fighting against a current that is trying to push them into the turn on that top turn, but it's trying to pull them out of the turn as they go to the bottom turn. And that can cause a problem, especially as we go into these faster and faster cats. Um, the, the, the water overcomes the, the, the air underneath the cat, and so it, be, it, it begins to become a balancing act to just get around these turns. Yeah, that's, that south turn is a challenge. The, the river narrows down there, and the current still goes the same. So yep. water gets a little uh, flaky down there sometimes. Crockett Rocket, good. Here comes Catman, Cat Can Do, excuse me. Boy, that boat is just hauling the mail, let me tell you. Sounds good. Boat always runs well. Fans love it. Local guys, CK Motorsports, those guys, uh, they, a lot of people around here know them. A lot of people here in the Michigan area use them for their for their uh, boat repairs and service. There goes the Yuka. 
person like saying it. Yuka? The Yuka. Yuka. I would think that as light as it is and with that little single engine, it probably, probably gets probably three, four miles a gallon. It's probably the most efficient uh, race boat out here anyway. <laughs> I would venture to say. No stereo in that one either, though. I checked. <laughs> Yeah, when they shipped it over here, they fit it into a shipping container. Look at all these boats in Class 5. Everybody is right on top of each other. This is anybody's race at this point in time. They are bunched up on top. I'm not even sure I want to try and call it at this point because of the way they're all running up together like that. I'm going to tell you, take a look who's out in the lead there, Tad. Uh, going for number four today. Four in a row. Now, that says we were calling that Ruffster. Oh, oh. We were calling it Ruffster for a while, and then all of a sudden we found out that well, EJ, EJ is like 16, and he came up with the name because if he was texting, he would say, are you faster? Yep. <laughs> that boat is prepared by Saris Racing Engines up in Lake George, New York. Johnny and Jason are not here today, but I'm sure they're paying attention. They're probably out there watching on the internet. Hi, guys. Hey, fellas. Your boat's running good, boys. Yep. Smart Marine Super Stock running hard. Boats are very safe. You'll notice the very small windows in the canopy. The reason they do that is because it can it can withstand the force of the water. Boat running 100 miles an hour turns over in the water, and you need a lot of strength in the canopy to keep those drivers safe. And so they've, they've all pulled the, the, the canopy size down and the, and the window size of the canopies down to make sure they're... Yeah, water's a pretty deceiving thing, you know, with the surface tension and all. It's, it's like hitting concrete. Huh? Careful now. Let's not get all physical on us or something. Oh, or, you I know, know, don't, was, don't bring science. That was science the highlight of my me. science day. Was it? Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. Surface tension he's up here with. Surface tension. Surface tension. Mm. It's kind of like blue. I... All right, this is awesome. Look at that. Tur it, it, all those, I was just looking at those while we, while, while we were jabbering. I was watching all those five boat coming through that turn, and it's like, it, it just they just keep coming. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go, the Crockett Rocket. Still keeping a nice little lead over the uh, Kuka Yuka Yuka Kuka boat. <laughs> Of course, uh, Tyler Crockett is local here to Ruby, Michigan. Yep. He's built built actually a fair amount of the boats, the motors that are in these boats. Um, very good engine builder, and uh, his boats always run well. You're looking at it. Yeah, he's got a new partner in the boat this year. His uh, long-standing partner, Joyce, George Eisenhardt, retired last year, and uh, this year Chris Carbone is joining him, I believe. But I saw George walking around the pits, and you never know. <laughs> oh yeah. He's still here. He's only like 86 or something. I mean, he's got probably had a couple more good years in him, right? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you put Carbone in there. You know, he's a young buck, so he could be in there for years and years and years and years. Tyler have a lot of gray hair. Surely. We'll see how that works out. All righty. See our class four boats. Here we have the super stock boats coming around in the turn. Well, look at that bad boy. Just lays right over there. They do. They 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 seem like they're out of control, but quite frankly, they're very easy to control and they're very forgiving, which is part of the reason why they rent them like they do, because they, they will roll over on their side like that, make the turn, and keep on getting it. Now those wings, does that help with stability on that? Tip? Uh, it, it keeps it from it from diving all the way over. Is the idea behind it? Aki, when he put the thing together, wanted something that was going to be stable, even though it's got a very narrow hull. Yep. Unofficial first place in class five is R U Faster, the thirty foot super boat. And then we have the yellow bat boat, and I'm not sure exactly what they're calling that under this one. And then five twelve specialized racing, the other older super boat with outboards. Push and tin, the DCB. Reinforcers out there, ultimate ride. And was, was up two. Nice 
nice shot of that smart marine coming down through the. Storm. You know, those boats run so smooth. Everybody, you know, everybody looks at them and thinks, well, how tough could that be? You're just basically just gliding along, you know, and and they do. They they still they they do a great job running. Those Doug Wrights are, are phenomenally well built, and um, it's a great ride for the size of the boat. You know, it's almost like they're flying. It. There's not so much of it in the water. Well, the catamaran basically yep. does use high, or aerodynamics to pull it, to fill it with, uh, I know, we're getting back into physics again, but, uh, you know, <laughs> blah, 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 whatever, aerodynamics, blah, blah. Anyway, it's packing air. How about that? There we go. <laughs> you ride on that cushion of air at about 100 miles an hour, and life is good. This class five, this this class five race at this point in time is anybody's ball game. They're all dicing it up in there. They're all taking different lanes coming through the turns. Yeah. Um, I will say though that that when when are you faster has stayed in the game. Those guys are just man, they are tough, tough, tough to beat. Yeah, they got a great boat this year. It's it's they had a good boat last year, but I don't know what they did off season, but. Man, has it been running really good this year. I think they spent a lot of money in Saris Racing Engines. Hi, Johnny. Hi, Jason. <laughs> it's okay. You know what? <laughs> doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter what you spend as long as it works. Exactly. <laughs> There's Tyler Crockett cruising along in Class Four. Rick Kotecki in the Yuka. I really think it has something to do with being up there in Lake George. Lake George is such a beautiful place that I think it just it just makes things better. I heard they got a great shop up there. Oh yeah, yeah, and they do they do great work up there. We're missing them this weekend. Yeah. Now, I, I'm looking at this FJ Propellers boat, and I I don't know something just doesn't it, it's running. I don't know. Something just doesn't look right to me, and I'm not quite sure what that is, but uh, they, they're doing great right now, and it looks like it's, it's going along fine. Note that, see, and you can see right there in that picture how little of the boat is actually touching the water. Yeah. They, don't, they just don't need that much contact with the, with the water to make that boat work. Inches. Inches. There's Are You Faster coming around the turn. Yeah, it looks like he's putting a little bit of lead on the uh, wings on the water, that boat there. He is pulling out a little bit, and it looks like Specialized is definitely picking up some. Look at Specialized. Holy. They are loose. All over the place. That's the one thing about Mark Gallagher. He is not scared. <laughs> no. But you see that the, now the wings, the wings boat, you can, they, those things accelerate so well because that small wetted surface. Yep, they just punch it right in there, I tell you. I'd, to, I'd have to have a drama meeting riding one of those, I think. Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Pushing 10 on the officially fourth place. Reinforcer fifth. Was up to sixth. And ultimate ride in seventh. And I, what, there's like seven other ones. I don't know. Yeah. It seems like they, they just keep coming. Yep. BK Motorsports. Looking like eighth and uh, want to raise ninth. Great field in the Class 5 today. We're missing a couple of favorites like Cisco. Yeah. Oh, looks like the Cat Candies come down off plane down there in turn three or four. They are. Oh, yep, they are. Yep, they are under power, but they are in the center of the course. Unfortunately, we must have had some mechanical issues now. They can fix that on the water. Is that right, Ted? They can. Uh... The way the rule book works is, is that as long as no one touches your boat and gives you outside influence, then yes, if you can fix the boat um, with whatever it is and get back running again, then you you still get counted for points. Well, so that, that's a good thing. I shudder to think that they got a toolbox in there, but you'd be surprised with a little. Well, you know, back in the day when there was you know real offshore racing, what what the old timers called the real offshore racing. And they would race to Bimini. They would actually take a mechanic and a toolbox with them because a lot of times a mechanic would be fixing stuff in the middle of the ocean. Wow, that's that's crazy. <laughs> in some cases, that was the only way they were getting home. So you had more of a, you know, you, had, <laughs> you really had more of an incentive to get it right. Yeah, next thing you know, you drift to Cuba. <laughs> I really like that little Viking boat. I don't know what it is, yeah. but I, it looks like it, if nothing else, it'd be a lot of fun to just take out and play around with. Can I get air conditioning in that thing, though? I think I'd be hot in that cabin. Oh, I'll tell you. 
It is. And it looks like the day is over for Cat Can Do. Yeah. They are under power, but uh, it looks like they are heading for the Pine River, and they're going to call it a day. Now, remember, they really aren't out here racing against another boat, so they've got their winning points anyway. So if anything even looked maybe just a little bit of a problem on that boat, they're going to shut it down and save the equipment for the next race. Oh, absolutely. You know, with their... Our next race coming up in two weeks. They want to be make sure they're on top of their A game, and less damage the better. Another hometown race for them, Port Huron. Yep. It'll be fantastic in two weeks. The Port Huron Sarnia. What do they call that? The Classic International Grand International Offshore race. Offshore race. Yeah, and it is truly international. Boats go over to Sarnia for the day, and absolutely, you just got to show your passport around turn two and three. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Here comes. Are you faster? Your leader in Class Five. I am kind of partial since I did own one of those boats. You liked it. I like it. And I like that color scheme. They did the old golf color scheme. Yeah. That's like the old golf race cars. Yep, the old GT40. Like the Porsches. Yep. And it looks like, wow, look at this race for second place. Oh, Specialized on top of wings on the water. With Push and Tin right behind. There's your race right there. Are you faster? Seems to have checked out a little bit, but this is your race. The wings on the water boat is, it, it can't seem to get away from Specialized, and Specialized is hanging right on them. They have got it all, all hung out at this point. Yeah, for taking a couple of year vacation there, Mark's really got it going. Yeah, he's not playing around. And you can see, he just crossed over the other side, so if one side don't work, he's going to try the other, I guess. Well, and you got to make sure with those outboards, you've got fairly clean water, because if the water starts getting messed up, the one thing that... Where he's got a disadvantage is he's got outboards that are wide and up. Oh. And so he's got to have a little bit cleaner water than a single engine boat, which has the which has a deeper, what, what we call an X dimension. There's the Rob Brothers, a repeat yep. offender. Look at all those boats. This really is, I mean, are you faster? Definitely has some room, but anything could happen at this point. And that second, third, fourth is is completely up in the air right now. Crockett Rocket out here taking a ride. Yep. Rough for heading on the corner. <laughs> God, it's a beautiful day out here, Ted. Great day for racing. Brian, I I, I tell you, the one in fact the one <laughs> The one race that my wife always says, are we going Are we going to St. Clair? Are we going to St. Clair? Because she's not really all into the racing, but she's really into the St. Clair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there's a lot for ladies to do on these, on these tours. <laughs> no, it's a great place to be, and sure. we love everybody up here. And, and you all with the BWRA, they, you do such a fantastic job. It's, it's, it's really nice to see, and, well, and it's, uh, it's the kind of job that I, I think any race site should, should strive to do. Yeah, we, we appreciate it, and, you know, it, it definitely helps to have an organization like OPA and individuals like yourself who are behind the sport so much for the love of the sport to help bring it out there. I don't love it, but they pay me thousands and thousands of dollars to do this. <laughs> Yo, <okay. laughs> Yo. That's why you're driving an Omni, right? I got a Hyundai, man. I got a Hyundai, and it's a rental car. <laughs> it's a rental. <laughs> <laughs> and tonight I'm going to drive it like I stole it. You didn't hear that, Thrifty. <laughs> Are you faster is your unofficial leader in class number five. Right now it looks for them like it's a walk in the park. As long as that boat uh, holds together, they are doing great. Nobody seems to be able to put up any time on them, but partly that's because they're all dicing up there back in, in second and third place. So, you know, that's that's what happens, Brian. You you When you get diced, when, when you get in close and you're dicing up with other boats, it's very difficult to make up any time because you're really, you're, you're, you're fighting for your life. You're trying to find the best, you know, the best line, and you're yeah. trying to do what you need to do. Um, at the same time, you got two or three other guys who are doing the same thing, and so it, it slows those guys down a little bit. And so if you can get out like Are You Faster has yeah. and, and, and just put a little bit of water between you, well, you know, you, then you, you let them worry about themselves at that point. Yeah, you know, the amount of mental concentration that you have to have when you're racing in a group like Class 5, when they start out like that, is just, it, it blows my mind because you got, you're looking forward, you're looking to the left, you're looking to the right, your partner's looking in the rear. Oh, it's, it's crazy. 
Now, if you're on the internet and you're watching this and you're thinking to yourself, well, why, if we're doing all this stuff, why do we have to limit these guys in speed? By the way, it looks like second place right now is Specialized Racing. They did get around Wings on the Water in third, and then Pushing Tin is coming up in fourth. Yep. Um, but why would you limit them in speed? Well, the reason you do that is because if you look at this race right now, we have five or six or seven different types of boats, and, and, it, and in fact, boats are completely different from one another, but they can all race in the same class together because all they have to worry about is not breaking out of that speed class. Yeah, you know, not to get all science in the end, but the different style of boats, they'll run different speeds with the same power plants. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Right now, it looks like FJ Propeller is out to an easy first place in super stock. In fact, I haven't seen at this point smart racing, which means, hmm, no. looks like uh, they may have backed off. I don't see them out there anywhere. There's a little Viking catamaran. Now that's a very new boat for those guys. So obviously they're out there oh, taking sure. a ride, and and I and I'm I'm sure that that trying to go up against two veteran racers like Tyler and, and Chris is is a little daunting. But um, it's very cool to see him out there, and it looks like um, it's looks like it's it's running really nice. Yeah, not quite know. sure what he's going to do with it though. We don't have a class like that here. Uh, no, you know I, I was like I said earlier. I was talking with Rick yesterday, and it's nice to see the boat on here. It's even nicer to see Rick out here. And, and I want to just send like a message Rick. out to his his family and himself. You know, uh, he's had some issues that he's dealt with over the past year and stuff, and he's he's out there on top of things. So good, great thing for him. Good guy. Oh yeah. Now in Europe, they have classes for those little boats, and you'll have ten or fifteen of them on the water. And I could I can imagine that would be um, actually pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And those guys in Europe, they don't fool around. They'll 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 rub and bump. And, uh, I mean, that's yeah. you know we got NASCAR, but they got that they got that powerboat racing stuff over there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they uh, they're crazy over there. But it does make for great YouTube videos. Oh yeah, check it out. There's a ton of them out there. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got your leader in class five. Are you faster? And at this point. Mm, will answer no. Yeah, it does look like the, the smart marine boat is down off a plane in the center course uh, on uh, turn two up there on the north end. So May have had some kind of an issue. They may get it sorted out, although they're pretty far behind now. It would be very difficult to pick back up. Definitely. Remember, when we talk about are you faster being in the lead, he is, but you also have to worry about breaking out. They are a GPS limited class, so they will turn in their GPS to... Uh, Frank the tank, and uh, Frank will run it on the computer and see if they broke out any. And if they didn't break out, if they didn't go faster than 75 miles an hour, then they get the win. Yep. If they did, they get the back. Oh, yeah. Second place in Class 5 is going to be Specialized Racing, Mark Gallagher. Little outboard boat. That boat is very old, but, um, but it runs good. Yep. And he is not scared. And then wings on the water, the Rendell bat boat. Pushing yep. 10, 555. Five, five. Yeah, the change. Then we got the reinforcer out there. Oh, it was up. Two, getting a little air. Ultimate ride, 554. Five, PK Motorsport. Up in the number 524. And repeat offender, the Rob Brothers. Rab, Rob, I think it's Rab. Is it Rab? Ray? Yeah, Is it Ray? I think. I apologize, guys. Sorry. Same here. Now remember, coming up in the next race, we have the Super Cats, we have the Vs, the Super Vs. It is going to be some awesome racing. These boats are not speed limited. They are 
deck to deck, hardcore, serious racing. And the, the guys who are running them, <laughs> they have so many years racing boats that, uh, well, they're going to put on a great show. So we want you to make sure that when we do get into the third race, you've got to be here for this. It's going to be awesome. Did you see the paint scheme on the bat boat? The 211 bat boat. The bat boat? The bat boat. Yeah, because we've been talking about these little bat looking boats, the, the Rendles. But yes, the bat boat is here, and the bat boat is a beautiful MTI. Yes. Unbelievable paint on it. Yeah. Elliot is just, they, he, he brings it to these races, and I, I bet that boat, that boat's going to fade from all the flashes of people taking pictures of it because oh. it is beautiful. I bet you there was a thousand pictures yesterday of that boat. Easy, easy, unbelievable. Yeah, that uh, that boat. A, a lot of these. That's the thing. I mean, when you talk about a race boat, a lot of times guys will they'll slap a coat of paint on it and stuff sure. like that, and maybe throw some wax on it, make sure they keep it clean. But you know, it's a race boat. That the bat boat is actually a, it's a work of art. It's it's a it's it's something else. It's really something to see. Yeah, you know, we got another boat in that class, too. We'll talk about it later, Team 27, that's going to be new today for this site. And, another uh, pretty MTI. Beautiful. There is your leader, for sure. Yes. <laughs> FJ Propellers at Superstock. Yeah. So it looks like Father's going to take it home today. Well. I don't know what Tyler's going to say to him when they get back to the back. Old and cunning, that's how it works. Yeah. Or old and wise. Is it old and wise? Old and wise and young and cunning. There you go. All right, you got wow, a little hook there from uh, Reinforcer. Are you faster? Still holding on to a really nice lead in class five. Oh yeah. Now that boat, that boat sounds awesome with them tractor pipes. I tell you. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta love the tractor pipes. Not very good for a pleasure boat, but it's awesome for a race boat. Yeah, it was the thing that it was the biggest complaint, Roy. There's pushing ten, your third place. Wow, pushing ten is moving. Oh, up. look at BK Motorsports all over the place. Left the night in the screen, the screen shot. You know, this is this is flat water. I mean, we're talking about a river here, and yet these boats still they they. There's no doubt about it. With the with the walls on both sides and the and the fact that the, the waves kind of amplify themselves, um, it, it's challenging out here. I mean, these guys are these guys are driving these boats. It's not just a walk in the park. Yeah, some days you know it's, it's not like out in the ocean, you know, where there's waves and there rollers. It's it's choppy here, washboardy. You know, it's it it's a challenge. There's a shot of. Is that FJ Propellers now? Yep, I think oh. his day is done. He's he's done his laps, and he's uh, waiting to pick up his checkered flag. There we go. See if he moves towards the uh, start-finish boat in a little bit. In the meantime, we've got all those boats. Look at it. You know, really, truthfully, you've only got a couple of hundred yards between a majority of the Class 5 boats. They're still hanging right in there with each other. Yeah, that it's probably the most competitive class we've got going right now out there. I mean, not that any of the other classes don't have competition, but those guys, they have, they've really stepped it up. And that class has grown quite a lot over the last couple of years. Uh, they're all super buds. <laughs> 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 yeah. John, John Cohen. Hi, John. John Cohen will tell you that you're either you're either driving a super boat or you're chasing one in class five. Oh. We'll, see, well, you know, so far today, that's how it's working out. That's we'll, true. We'll see. And yeah. of course, your high points champion from last year in class five was Cisco, which super boat. Uh -huh. So you know, it's it says something. It says something. Cisco is not here today. They had some mechanical problems in Manasquan. I'm sure they'll be getting it back together here shortly and get back out on the water. That's uh, an awesome team, an awesome team. Yeah, great bunch of guys. I'm sure they're watching on the web today, and we'd like to say hello to you, and hopefully we'll see you in a couple weeks. Yo, boys. Still walking the park for EJ. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they got that thing dialed in really, really good these past couple races. It is an amazing thing about the OPA. We we have a, a very long-standing tradition of fathers and sons doing this together. And uh, 
you know, uh, Ed Smith, the president, and his sons Anthony and Boomer both um, both race, yep. um, and and have you know, and, and Ed told me at one point he said the reason he did it was because Anthony wanted to be involved in it, and so he was like, okay, I guess we can do something with a race boat, and now you know he's the president of the organization. They have two or three race boats. They're racing all these other boats. They're doing all this work on everybody's boat. Yep. They work very hard for what they do, but uh, it's awesome to see fathers and sons out there. Looks like we have Are You Faster has finished their lap, so that puts them unofficially first place in, in Class 5. Second will be Specialized Racing. And third will be Wings on the Water. Pushing Tin in fourth, Reinforcer in fifth. Was up two takes sixth. Crockett's gonna take. Well, I don't know. Crockett may have another lap, but he'll be in first anyway. Yeah. yeah. There's the ultimate right. Yeah, that's another another returning racer. Uh, Josh Wall's out there. You know, we haven't seen him in a couple years. Yep. We're looking forward to having him back out this season. I did talk to John the other day. He was in. So they're hoping to get that boat back out on the water. All the Class 5 boats are done now. We're going to see. It looks like uh, we'll probably see. I'm expecting to see once they get these checkered flags weighed, we should see a uh, super stock boat uh, FJ propellers. And uh, are you faster? We'll probably head over to the start finish boat pick yep. up their checkered flags Let's see if we've got anything left out on the course uh -huh. obviously uh Coming oh, around crockett there. rocket yep. is still out there crockett rocket still out there very important we, we we sometimes lose sight of it after we get a bunch of the the racers done and off the course they're all sitting in the middle they're grabbing their checkered flags everything's good um, we forget that, that sometimes we still got a hot race course. It's like, you know, it's like running out in the middle of the Indy 500. You, you really don't want to do that. So um, it's always important. It's the big job that, uh, that Racecom does, and, and they, you know, they're, they're very good about making sure that they, they contact everybody and make sure that everybody knows what's going on before the race course is officially shut down. Oh, yeah, Bob's. Bob is all about the safety, above anything else, you know. We're all out here to have a good time, but the most important thing is to be safe in, in doing it. There's a great picture of the S-19 boat with their checkered flag. Well deserved for FJ propellers. Yeah. Once again, it's not how, long, how, how fast you go, but how long you go fast. And they went longer, faster, so there you go. Yeah, see the guys climbing out of the cockpit on the Are You Faster boat. Looks like they're going to be hopefully headed over there in a second to pick up their checkered flag. Well, as well. I'm pretty sure that EJ is about uh, 16, maybe 17 years old. So uh, yeah. picking up that checkered flag, well, it's pretty cool for any of us, but to be that age and already picking up checkered flags in, in big boat races Don't is you know. uh, it's pretty cool. How it's cool, pretty cool. How cool would that be at 16 when your buddies come over and go, look at my wall? Yeah, right? <laughs> trophies? Yes, I have trophies. And they're not for Little League. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excuse me, yeah. <laughs> you ought to see my uniform, he says. <laughs> Shorts and a t-shirt. Once again, Little League, you only play with one ball. <laughs> <laughs> True. So they had an easy run today. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, they got out in front and stayed out there. As long as, uh, as, long as the GPS doesn't tell a tale on them, then... Uh, they got a great win today, and that'll be four in a row. That's yeah. awesome for them. They're, they're, that boat is, is consistent, um, yep. running great, and uh, we're happy to see it. Yeah, they're headed for a, a, a great finish. As we kind of get into the home stretch of the season now. Um, you know, coming up in a... Oh, I don't know, man. It seems like there's an awful lot left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're over the hump, let's put it that yeah, way. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. So there we go. We've got Are You Faster as your winner in Class 5. The uh, bat boat taking a little run past the thing. At least, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you do. You, 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 pay your, you pay your dues and you rent your seat and you get to be a racer. That's, that's pretty cool. It's that's amazing what a checkbook does. Well, you know, 
Comparatively? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cheap. There you go. <laughs> You pay almost that much to ride a jet ski around for the day. Shoot, yeah. <laughs> You're racing, man. <laughs> Shoot, yeah. Let's see, we got Angel One still out on the course, obviously. They're taking a nice little ride by. Yep, they got to make sure everything's clear and everybody's good. Yep. Looks like the Crockett Rocket out there in the middle is going to pick up their checkered flag. Yep. So... Let's see where we're at. Unofficially, because nothing is ever official until it's official. Exactly. But unofficially in Extreme, your winner is Cat Can Do. In Superstock FJ Propellers. In Class 4, the Crockett Rocket. And in Class 5, Are You Faster or Roughster or whatever you want to call it. So it's been a great uh, second race. We are... Starting to wind things down now. Everybody will take their little victory laps and head down by the, the uh, head down by the boardwalk and see the uh, twenty or thirty or forty thousand adoring fans. Oh yeah, there's a ton of them out there. Yep. Please, please, please make sure you stand by for the third race. The third race is going to have some great boats in it. We are talking the likes of Bob Teague in the Amsoil boat, Eva Ed Smith in the Cleveland Construction Skater. You are going to see in class two the bat boat, which is absolutely beautiful. Team 27, another beautiful boat. And the old Cleveland construction, which is a hometown favorite, yep. Blown Rush, is coming back as, as Blown Rush, number 129. Yep. We are also going to see Was Up and Strictly Business and thrown into the mix this time is Steve Kerr, and I believe Steve Kerr, in, uh, <laughs> in the Miss Pete. Uh, so now we have three Super Vs out there, yep. um, and they all rock it. I mean, those boats are all very, very similar, and it, it can be anybody's, absolutely anybody's race. Yeah. So we're really going to want to see that. It's going to be a good one, that's for sure. Absolutely. There's Repeat Offender taking a uh, lap by the fans. Sure. The Crockett Rocket out there in the middle with their checkered flag. Nice to see. Yep. Hometown guys. Tyler is up there in Ruby, Michigan. He'll run by. I'm sure he probably uh, knows quite a few of the people out there on the boardwalk. Oh, I, th I think so. Most of the people around here, anybody with high performance boats around here, most of them have dealt with Tyler at one time or the other because uh, if you want somebody to build you a race boat motor or a fast boat oh, motor, he's the man. He's, uh, he's, he's a good guy, he's a very sharp guy. He was building engines for NASCAR for a while, and just it's just unbelievable. There's FJ coming in with their victory lap. EJ is looking a little happy there. That's uh. Oh no, I'm sorry, uh, Tyler. Wait a minute. I got my paperwork all mixed up here. Bring your paperwork. I'm sorry. In Superstock, FJ yes. is Gary Ballou and Jerry Chastelet. By the way, this isn't that big a deal for neither of those guys because they win all the time. They're both yeah. <laughs> they're both pretty solid veterans. Very seasoned. <laughs> I apologize, fellas, for the name. It's up. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> they're gonna we're happy to see that. We're actually happy to see all the Superstocks come out and race with oh. the OPA because uh, we really appreciate having them around, and, and, and they always put on a good show, and they're, they're great. It's, it's a great bunch of guys, and a lot of them, um, you know, Gary Ballou has spent a lot of time overseas racing and stuff like that, and the experience and the, and the professionalism that they bring to it is, is, is fantastic. And yeah. now with, uh, with Taylor coming up, and, and, and Chris Schoenbaum has shown that, that you know, the, the, these guys can come out and have a professional organization and, and run those boats, and it's, it's really... It's a beautiful thing to see. Yeah, it's that's a class I, I enjoy watching because it's just it's it's competitive and fun. Absolutely. Well, we are going to uh, we are going to start um, we are going to start wrapping it up for this second race. Um, Brian, I, I know that um, I know that recently um, the the Blue Water Offshore has has had a huge loss. And um, I wanted you to talk for just a second about Tony before we before we sign off for the second race. 
and um, and 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 it's it's we really all of our hearts go out to everybody at Blue Water and, and everybody here in town because I know he was very important to everyone and it's 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 just a terrible thing. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a pretty traumatic uh, past week and a half or so. Um, last Wednesday we we lost uh, Tony Pizzo to a uh, motorcycle accident. Uh, his experience right here, just one of them freak things that happened. And um, Tony was a great guy. Ted. I mean, he served his country as a, a took a tour in Nam, in the Navy, coming back to the States for a couple of years. Then he re-enlisted in the Army and took another tour in Nam, come back here. He was a paramedic. He was a police officer. We were on the fire department together, uh, Knights of Columbus. I mean, just an all-around great guy. He's got a huge family. Uh, Julie and, and all the kids, our, our hearts go out to them. Um, he was just a real big, real big family man, and, and we truly miss him. And uh, the sport will never be the same. He was uh, involved with Blue Water Offshore for pretty much all the 21 years, and uh, everybody's got... Uh, if you look on their boats this weekend, there's tribute stickers to Tony. It's a Harley Davidson uh, symbol with his name in it. And we just want everybody to know out there that we love him and we're thinking about him and thinking about his family. Well, I think he's looking down on everybody and he's happy with what he sees this week. So, yep. All right, we're going to sign off and uh, we will see you again for uh, race number three.
12 laps from 48. I, I'm I'm intrigued by this little outboard cat, this single outboard cat. I mean, it looks like, looking at it on land anyway, it looks like it'd be a lot of fun to run in. Yeah. Um, it, it is, for, for those guys like us that are height challenged, um, it could be a problem. And, and when I say head challenged, I mean we, we have a lot less height than our weight should should have. But yeah. um, but it, it is a very cool looking boat, and it looks yeah. like it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I was talking with Rick. Uh, Rick comes back, he's the owner of that boat. And, uh, he, had, he had that shipped over from Turkey, actually. And uh, I guess that's a real big class out there that way. Yeah, they, um, they have a lot of different boats over there in, in Europe, and they have a great, I mean, a, a, a very, very good uh, race series over there also. Yep. Um, quite frankly, I'm a little partial to this race series, but, you know, hey, Merca. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. <laughs> you know, and, that, and that's one thing. If you look at all the boats out there, Ted, I, I'll bet you 98% of them got American flags somewhere on them. All these guys are just America at heart. That's and that's the truth. Um, Brian, yeah, that's in the rule book. You have to have an American flag on your boat. Oh, because okay. America. Oh, I got it. <laughs> 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 so well, I like my explanation better. Oh okay, yeah, yeah, they're they're all they're all oh, oh, they're all patriotic. Trust me, you know, every one of them stands up for the for the national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of rules in the rule book, and I, I sure. will talk about you know I could talk about decals that are supposed to be on the boat and decals that aren't supposed to be on the boat oh, and God, things yeah. like that. But we'll just leave that be for the time being. Yeah. You can see our our uh, pace boats are running around the course now. They've taken the boats around at about 55, 60 miles an hour. It's very important for these guys. Some of them didn't test yesterday, so they didn't have a good feel for the course, and some of them really just need to um, just just get a look at the course. Now, can you tell me, trivia question, what's different about this race than every other race that we do? This one is an international race, obviously. Um, not quite different than Port Huron, so I, I know I'm losing on that home front. And this race races clockwise. Exactly. And, and that's the thing. This is the only race that, that, that in the series where we race clockwise. And it just it has a lot to do with the currents here on the St. Clair River, and it has a lot to do with the way the course is set up. Over the years, they found out that it's best to race clockwise. But it's really, really unnerving for some of the drivers <laughs> out here because they're so used to turning into a corner to the left. And, in fact, some of the boats are even set up specifically yeah. with, the, with the steering wheel on the left-hand side so that they can hit that corner really tight, and now all of a sudden it's on the wrong side of the boat. Yeah, it, it, it's truly a challenge. I, I was talking with uh, Ed Smith with Cleveland Construction. That's a new boat for them this year. Actually, they got it late last year, but um, they they switched boats, and when they did, the position switched, driver and throttleman, and that, and that took some getting used to for them guys. Absolutely, and that boat is... An unbelievable. I mean, I, I've, I've known that boat for a long time, and it, it, it in all of its iterations, and it is an awesome boat. I can't wait to see it out here running today, especially with the great competition we're going to see with him and the Emsel boat with Bob Teague, because those guys are both guys with a lot of, of experience under their belts, and they are not playing around. They are in it to win it. Oh, absolutely. They, they are chasing points for their national championship together. Um, Friends off the course, but when it's on the course and race time, it's race time. And uh, they, they are definitely both in it to win it. You know, Bob's got so many years of experience in so many races, and so does Ed. I mean, he can't be counted out. He's got a lot of years in this, too. Now, you know, we've been talking about driver and, and that type of thing, and, and, and the funny thing is, is that I suppose, you know, there's probably, I realize that the people out here watching this today are probably kind of hardcore, but I got to tell you, the one thing that people that astounds people all the time when you talk to them about it is the fact that these boats require a driver and a throttleman. And, you know, just like I'm not here driving this show today by myself, i got to have my driver over here. I'll, th I'll throttle. You drive. Okay. Um, it, it, it's, it's a great teamwork type of thing where these guys have to get in the boat. They have to get comfortable with one another. And, and, and quite frankly, because over the years, we've learned that there's just so much going on in the boat that one guy really, it, it's very difficult for him to, to, to handle it all and to keep it all, yep. you know, to keep it all together. 
again, and communication, that's where communication is the key with the whole thing. You know, a lot of these guys have got intercoms and talking back and forth. When their intercoms go out, they're using hand signals. Some are friendly, some are not. Uh, but uh, communication's a key along with mechanics, and it's just very interesting. Very yeah, and, and, it, and it is, it's the difference really, quite frankly, between a winner, winning and a losing team. Um, they have to be able to, to get together. They have to trust each other. They have to know when sure. when, a, when a driver's going to dive in or when a driver's going to run wide or whatever the case may be on a turn, it's very important for the throttleman to understand, you know, what's going on and, and sort of be able to anticipate how he thinks his driver is going to go and vice versa. I mean, if the guy's pouring on the coals, you don't want to be starting to whip into a turn when, you know, when he gets into that turn. So, Oh, absolutely. Yeah, one, one wrong mistake in these things, and, and it, it can be devastating. Yeah, and you've had some issues here. I mean, not, not issues. You've had incidents here um, on this course, yep. and, and, and we've had a couple of fairly large boats, in fact, who've, who've run into trouble. Even though it's a very calm course compared to an offshore course like, like Atlantic City or something like that, um, and, and obviously the Blue Water Offshore has always done a fantastic job. You have a great safety fleet here. You have unbelievable control over everybody. And the communication is, is to be envied by really, truthfully, every safety fleet in the country because you guys, I mean, after 21 years, kind of got it figured out. Yeah, we appreciate it. It's just been, uh, you know, you, you, you take and you review it every year and you kind of see what you can make it better for next year. Now it looks like we have the pace boat bringing the two super stock boats up. So what we're going to be looking for here, and I believe the extreme boat is coming up with them too. He's going to be the outside so he does not mess up the racing between those two super, super stock boats. But what we're looking for is a green flag on the boat, which we have. We have a green flag start in super stock and in extreme. Well, they are just screaming right along there. Look at that cat. Yeehaw. I tell you, that's going to be a great race in super stock there yeah those boats are not limited by speed like some of the other boats are we've talked about the gps units and everything the super stock boats are limited by the weight and the horsepower on the engines um so we're going to keep an eye on them those boats are very very closely matched and of course we have a father-son du duel going on in yeah. there so that's going to be awesome to see how that how that comes out yeah, it's going to be very interesting at the award ceremony. Right? <laughs> Being an older guy, I want to say that uh, age and experience will uh, will overcome youth and cunning, but we'll see what happens. That's true. All right, we have a start now in Class 4. The Crockett Rocket has pulled out in front All right. immediately. But you know what? That little Viking, uh, that little Viking catamaran is right on his heels. So this is going to be a great race too. Now these boats are limited by their GPS to 85 miles an hour, so they have to stay under that speed. Yeah, this is the maiden voyage for Rick and that Yuka, so we'll see how that plays out. Now here is your race right here. Look at all these Class Five boats. This is incredible. This is the oh way my. racing is supposed to be. Side by side, okay. Side by side by side by side by side. Oh, wow. yeah. All right, so we have three clean starts in all in all classes. The class five boats are there's so many of them I, I, I won't even begin to try and call it at this point. <laughs> Looking on the back side of the course, obviously we have the uh, extreme boat out there just taking a nice little walk in the park. We have the super stock boats, it looks like. FJ Propeller. It looks like FJ Propeller is out in front right now, so oh, how's that going? Mr. Chaslin. Uh-huh. There you go. Look at him dicing up in that oh, turn. Yeah. Here we go. We're coming down. Cat Can Do is coming around. Probably running in the... Well, it's classified. I'd, I'd have to kill somebody if I told them exactly how fast they're running. But it's it, there's there's three digits on their GPS right yeah. this minute. That boat is an older skater hull, but yep. it runs phenomenally well. It has unbelievably good horsepower, great acceleration, fantastic boat. Yeah, number 19, your extreme cat can do. Yeah, that's one of the few boats left on the circuit with the independent. All right, here we have uh, your Smart Marine Super Stock. 
that is unofficially well it's in second place right now in super stock fj propellers is in first actually fj looks like they have pulled about I don't know, five, 300 yards, maybe 200 yards? Yeah, something like that. Good, good three, four seconds. All right, it looks like class five is coming around the lower turn now. This is going to be nuts because there's so many of them, and they're still all pretty well bunched together. So, we'll, oh, there they are on the back street. Yeah, we got Tyler Crockett coming out. Oh, class four. four there, yeah. Getting a little air there, bouncing around a little bit. Left and right. He's got it loose. Remember, he's going to have to run pretty loose against that cat because once that cat's up on its cushion of air, they've got a they've, they've got a serious advantage when it comes to uh, running a cat over a V-hole in this kind of smooth water. Sure. Of course, the Crockett Rocket has had a lot of uh, races under its hull, and it uh, I've heard it'll actually do 222 miles an hour, but that, that may <laughs> that may just be propaganda. I, Hard to say. You know, Tyler's got a dyno out there. <laughs> I'm thinking that if Tyler wanted to build a boat that would go that fast, he'd probably figure out a way to do it. Absolutely. Well, I see our class five are finally hanging down to turn three and four. And I'm going to tell you, that's going to be a, a turn to watch on there. Absolutely. All right, here comes one of the bat boats around. They're all bouncing around. Pushing tin around. right behind him. Ruster right back in the in the hunt. Look at all those boats all piled up on top of each other. This is anybody's race at this point in time. Now look at that bat boat. That that is running those Rendell boats. That you might be he might be renting that seat, but I'll tell you what, that boat is rocking. Yeah. They've been out all week testing out here, and I'll tell you what, that's paying off for a big time. That Aki Manor felt design has been around for about 20 years now, but I'll tell you it's it's hard to beat when it's running right. Looks like we have the bat boat, then we have Push 10, Ruster. Who is that? Ultimate ride. Ultimate ride. If I wasn't such an old guy, I could probably call these better, but you know, when they get a little too far away, there we have. On your screen right now, the Rab Brothers and Repeat Offender running good. Great team, they've been around for a while. Absolutely. Got a lot of got a lot of runs on that hole right there. Great guys too. Good guys. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to uh, be around all the guys that are so friendly. I just like to have a like to have a good team. Well, as I said, everybody does this for the love of the sport, and, sure. and you know they they like being with their people, they like being with our friends, and, and seeing each other at, at race sites and that type of thing. All right, so right now in Superstock, you have FJ Propellers leading Smart Marine by about three or four hundred yards. Little father-son battle going on there. Action in the five boats up at the turn. Now remember, these guys are fighting against a current that is trying to push them into the turn on that top turn, but it's trying to pull them out of the turn as they go to the bottom turn. And that can cause a problem, especially as we go into these faster and faster cats. Um, the, the, the water overcomes the, the, the air underneath the cat, and so it, beca it, it begins to become a balancing act to just get around these turns. Yeah, that's a, that south turn is a challenge. The, the river narrows down there, and the current still goes the same. So yep. water gets a little uh, flaky down there sometimes. Crockett Rocket, good. Here comes Catman, Cat Can Do, excuse me. Boy, that boat is just hauling the mail, let me tell you. Sounds good. Boat always runs well. Fans love it. Local guys, CK Motorsports. Those guys, uh, they a lot of people around here know them. A lot of people here in the Michigan area use them for their for their uh, boat repairs and service. There goes the Yuka. I just like saying it. Yuka. The Yuka. Yuka. I would think that as light as it is, and with that little single engine, it probably probably gets. Probably three, four miles a gallon is probably the most efficient uh, race boat out here anyway. <laughs> I would venture to say. No stereo in that one either, though, I checked. 
<laughs> yeah, when they shipped it over here, they fit it into a shipping container. Look at all these boats in Class 5. Everybody is right on top of each other. This is anybody's race at this point in time. They are bunched up on top. I'm not even sure I want to try and call it at this point because of the way they're all running up together like that. I'm going to tell you, take a look who's out in the lead there, Tad. Uh, going for number four today. Four in a row. Now, that says we were calling that Ruffster. Oh, we were calling it Ruffster for a while. <laughs> and then all of a sudden we found out that well, EJ, EJ is like 16. <laughs> and he came up with the name because if he was texting, he would say, are you faster? Yep. <laughs> That boat is prepared by Saris Racing Engines up in Lake George, New York. Johnny and Jason are not here today, but I'm sure they're paying attention. They're probably out there watching on the internet. Hi, guys. Hey, fellas. Your boat's running good, boys. Yep. Smart Marine Super Stock running hard. Boats are very safe. You'll notice the very small windows in the canopy. The reason they do that is because it can it can withstand the force of the water. Boat running 100 miles an hour turns over in the water, and you need a lot of strength in the canopy to keep those drivers safe. And so they they've all pulled the the, the canopy size down and the, and the window size of the canopies down to make sure they're. Yeah, water's a pretty deceiving thing, you know, with the surface tension and all. It's it's like hitting concrete. Actually. Careful now. Let's not get all physical on us or something. Oh, or, you know, know, don't, was, don't bring science. That was science the highlight of my me. science thing. Was it? Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. Surface tension he's up here with. Surface tension. Surface tension. Mm. It's kind of like blue. I... All right. This is awesome. Look at that. Tur it, it, all those. I was just looking at those while we, while, while we were jabbering. I was watching all those five boat coming through that turn. And it's like it, they, it just they just keep coming. Mm -hmm. All right. Here we go. The Crockett Rocket. Still keeping a nice little lead over the uh, Kuka Yuka Yuka Kuka boat. <laughs> of course, uh, Tyler Crockett is local here to Ruby, Michigan. Yep. He's built it built actually a fair amount of the boats, the motors that are in these boats. Um, very good engine builder, and uh, his boats always run well. You're looking at it. Yeah, he's got a new partner in the boat this year. His uh, long-standing partner, Joyce. George Eisenhardt retired last year, and uh, this year Chris Carbone is joining him, I believe. But I saw George walking around the pits, and you never know. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's still here. He's only like 86 or something. I mean, he's got probably a couple more good years in him, right? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you put Carbone in there. You know, he's a young buck, so he could be in there for years and years and years and years. Tyler having a lot of gray hair. Surely. We'll see how that works out. Our class four boats. Here we have the super stock boats coming around in the turn. Well, look at that bad boy. Just lays right over there. They do. They 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 seem like they're out of control, but quite frankly, they're very easy to control and they're very forgiving, which is part of the reason why they rent them like they do, because they, they will roll over on their side like that, make the turn, and keep on getting it. Now those wings, does that help with stability on that? Tip? Uh, it, it keeps it from it from diving all the way over. Is the idea behind it? Aki, when he put the thing together, wanted something that was going to be stable, even though it's got a very narrow hull. Yep. Unofficial first place in Class Five is R U Faster, the 30-foot superboat, and then we have the yellow bat boat, and I'm not sure exactly what they're calling that under this one. And then 512 Specialized Racing, the other older superboat with outboards. Push and tip, the DCB. Reinforcers out there, ultimate ride. And was, was up two. Nice shot of that smart marine coming down through there. You, you know, those it. boats run so smooth. Everybody, you know, everybody looks at them and thinks, well, how tough could that be? You're just basically just gliding along, you know, and, and they do. They, they still, they, they do a great job running. Those Doug Wrights are, are phenomenally well built, and um, it's a great ride for the size of the boat. You know, it's almost like they're flying. It's, there's not so much of it in the water. Well, the catamaran basically yep. does use high, or aerodynamics to pull the, to fill it with uh, 
I know we're getting back to the physics again, but uh, you know, <laughs> blah blah blah, whatever aerodynamics, blah blah. Anyway, it's packing air. How about that? There we go. <laughs> you ride on that cushion of air at about 100 miles an hour, and life is good. This class five, this this class five race at this point in time is anybody's ball game. They're all dicing it up in there. They're all taking different lanes coming through the turns. Yeah. Um, I will say though that that when when are you faster has stayed in the game. Those guys are just man, they are tough, tough, tough to beat. Yeah, they got a great boat this year. It's it's they had a good boat last year, but I don't know what they did off season, but. Man, has been running really good this year. I think they spent a lot of money at Saris Racing Engines. Hi, Johnny. Hi, Jason. <laughs> it's okay. You know what? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter what you spend as long as it works. <laughs> exactly. There's Tyler Crockett cruising along in Class Four. Rick Kotecki in the Yuka. I really think it has something to do with being up there in Lake George. Lake George is such a beautiful place that I think it just it just makes things better. I heard they got a great shop up there. Oh yeah. Yeah, they do they do great work up there. We're missing them this weekend. Yeah. Now I, I'm looking at this FJ propellers boat and I I don't know, something just doesn't it, it's running I don't know. Something just doesn't look right to me, and I'm not quite sure what that is, but uh, they, they're doing great right now, and it looks like it's, it's going along fine. Note that you see, and you can see right there in that picture how little of the boat is actually touching the water. Yeah. They, don't, they just don't need that much contact with the, with the water to make that boat work. Inches. Inches. There's RU Faster coming around the turn. Yeah, it looks like he's putting a little bit of lead on the uh, wings on the water, that boat there. He is pulling out a little bit, and it looks like Specialized is definitely picking up some. Look at Specialized. Holy. They are loose. All over the place. That's the one thing about Mark Gallagher. He is not scared. No. But you see that, that now the wings, the wings boat, you can, they, those things accelerate so well because that small wetted surface. Yep, they just punch it right in there, I tell you. I'd, to, I'd have to have a Dramamine to ride one of those, I think. Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Pushing 10 on the officially fourth place. Reinforcer fifth, was up to sixth. And ultimate ride in seventh. And I, what, there's like seven other ones. I don't know. Yeah. It seems like they, they just keep coming. Yep. BK Motorsports, looking like eighth and uh, want to raise ninth. Great field in the class five today. We're missing a couple of favorites like Cisco. Yeah. Oh, looks like the Cat Candies come down off plane down there in turn three or four. They are. Oh, yep, they are. Yep, they are under power, but they are in the center of the course. Unfortunately, we must have had some mechanical issues now. They can fix that on the water. Is that right, Ted? They can. Uh... The way the rule book works is, is that as long as no one touches your boat and gives you outside influence, then yes, if you can fix the boat um, with whatever it is and get back running again, then you you still get counted for points. Well, so that, that's a good thing. I shudder to think that they got a toolbox in there, but you'd be surprised with a little. Well, you know, back in the day when there was you know real offshore racing, what what the old timers called the real offshore racing and they would race to Bimini, they would actually take a mechanic and a toolbox with them because a lot of times the mechanic would be fixing stuff in the middle of the ocean. Wow, that's, that's crazy. In some cases, that was the only way they were getting home, so you had more of a, you know, you, had, you, you really had more of an incentive to get it right. Yeah, next thing you know, you drift to Cuba. <laughs> I really like that little Viking boat. I don't know what it is, yeah. but I, it looks like, it, if nothing else, it'd be a lot of fun to just take out and play around with. Can I get air conditioning in that thing, though? I think I'd be hot in that cabin. Oh, I'll tell you. It and it looks like the day is over for Cat Can Do. Yeah. They are under power, but uh, it looks like they are heading for the Pine River, and they're going to call it a day. Now, remember, they really aren't out here racing against another boat, so they've got their winning points anyway. So if anything even looked maybe just a little bit of a problem on that boat, they're going to shut it down and save the equipment for the next race. Oh, absolutely. You know what they're... Our next race coming up in two weeks. They want to be make sure they're on top of their A game and 
less damage, the better. Another hometown race for them, Port Huron. Yep. It'll be fantastic in two weeks. The Port Huron Sarnia, what do they call that? The Classic? International, Grand Prix? international Offshore, race. Offshore Race. Yeah. And it is truly international. Boats go over to Sarnia for the day. and Absolutely. You just got to show your passport around turn two and three. Oh, yeah. Right. Here comes Are You Faster, your leader in Class 5. I am kind of partial since I did own one of those boats. You like them. I like it. And I like that color scheme. They did the old golf color scheme. Yeah. That's like the old golf race cars. Yep, the old Like the Porsches. Yep. And it looks like, wow, look at this race for second place. Oh, Specialized on top of wings on the water with pushing 10 right behind. There's your race right there. Are you faster? Seems to have checked out a little bit, but this is your race. The wings on the water boat is, it, it can't seem to get away from Specialized, and Specialized is hanging right on them. They have got it all, all hung out at this point. Yeah, for taking a couple of year vacation there, Mark's really got it going. Yeah, he's not playing around. And you can see, he just crossed over the other side, so if one side don't work, he's gonna try the other, I guess. Well, and you gotta make sure with those outboards, you've got fairly clean water, because if the water starts getting messed up, the one thing that, where he's got a disadvantage is he's got outboards that are wide and up. Oh. And so he's got to have a little bit cleaner water than a single engine boat, which has the which has a deeper, what, what we call an X dimension. There's the Rob Brothers, the repeat yep. offender. Look at all those boats. This really is, I mean, are you faster? Definitely has some room, but anything could happen at this point. And that second, third, fourth is, is completely up in the air right now. Crockett Rocket out here taking a run. Yep. Rough for heading on the corner. <laughs> God, it's a beautiful day out here, Ted. Great day for racing. Brian, I I, I tell you, the one in fact the one <laughs> the one race that my wife always says, are we going are we going to St. Clair? Are we going to St. Clair? Because she's not really all into the racing, but she's really into the St. Clair. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there, there's a lot for ladies to do on these on these tours. <laughs> no, it's a great place to be, and sure. we love everybody up here. And, and you all with the BWRA, they, you do such a fantastic job. It's 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 really nice to see, and, well, and it's uh, it's the kind of job that I, I think any race site should should strive to do. Yeah, we we appreciate it. And, you know, it, it definitely helps to have an organization like OPA and individuals like yourself who are behind the sport so much for the love of the sport to help bring it out there. I don't love it, but they pay me thousands and thousands of dollars to do this. <laughs> okay. Yo. That's why you're driving an Omni, right? I got a Hyundai, man. I got a Hyundai, and it's a rental car. <laughs> it's a rental. <laughs> <laughs> and tonight I'm going to drive it like I stole it. You didn't hear that, Thrifty. <laughs> Are You Faster is your unofficial leader in class number five. Right now, it looks for them like it's a walk in the park. As long as that boat uh, holds together, they are doing great. Nobody seems to be able to put up any time on them, but partly that's because they're all dicing up there back in, in second and third place. So, you know, that's that's what happens, Brian. You you when you get dice when when you get in close and you're dicing up with other boats, it's very difficult to make up any time because you're really you. You're, you're fighting for your life. You're trying to find the best, you know, the best line, and you're yep. trying to do what you need to do. Um, at the same time, you got two or three other guys who are doing the same thing, and so it, it slows those guys down a little bit. And so, if you can get out like Are You Faster has, yeah, and, and and just put a little bit of water between you, well, you know, you, then you you let them worry about themselves at that point. Yeah, you know, the amount of mental concentration that you have to have when you're racing in a group like Class 5, when they start out like that, is just, it, it blows my mind because you got, you're looking forward, you're looking to your left, you're looking to your right, your partner's looking in the rear. Oh, it's, it's crazy. Now, if you're on the internet and you're watching this and you're thinking to yourself, well, why, if we're doing all this stuff, why do we have to limit these guys in speed? By the way, it looks like second place right now is specialized racing. They did get around wings on the water in third, and then pushing tin is coming up in fourth. Yep. Um, but why would you limit them in speed? Well, the reason you do that is because if you look at this race right now, we have five or six or seven different types of boats, and, and, and in fact, boats are completely different from one another. 
but they can all race in the same class together because all they have to worry about is not breaking out of that speed class. Yeah, you, you know, not to get all science again, you know, but the different style of boats, they'll run different speeds with the same power plants. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Right now, it looks like FJ Propeller is out to an easy first place in super stock. In fact, I haven't seen at this point smart racing, which means hmm, no. looks like uh, they may have backed off. I don't see them out there anywhere. There's a little Viking catamaran. Now that's a very new boat for those guys. So obviously they're out there oh, taking sure. a ride, and and I and I'm I'm sure that that trying to go up against two veteran racers like Tyler and, and Chris is is a little daunting. But um, it's very cool to see him out there, and it looks like um, it looks like it's it's running really nice. Yeah, not quite know. sure what he's going to do with it though. We don't have a class like that here. Uh, no, you know I, I was like I said earlier. I was talking with Rick yesterday, and it's nice to see the boat out here. It's even nicer to see Rick out here. And I want to just send like a message Rick. out to his his family and himself. You know, uh, he's had some issues that he's dealt with over the past year and stuff, and he's he's out there on top of things. So good, great thing for him. Good guy. Oh yeah. Now in Europe, they have classes for those little boats, and you'll have ten or fifteen of them on the water. And I could I could imagine that would be um, actually pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And those guys in Europe, they don't fool around. They'll 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 rub and bump. And, oh. I mean, it's yeah. you know we got NASCAR, but they got that they got that powerboat racing stuff over there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they uh, they're crazy over there. But it does make for great YouTube videos. Oh yeah, check it out. There's a ton of them out there. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got your leader in class five. Are you faster? And at this point. Mm, will answer no yeah it does look like the the smart marine boat is down off a plane in the center course uh on uh, turn two up there on the north end so may have had some kind of issue they may get it sorted out although they're pretty far behind now it'd be very difficult to pick back up definitely remember when we talk about are you faster being in the lead he is but you also have to worry about breaking out they are a gps limited class so they will turn in their gps to uh Frank the tank, and uh, Frank will run it on the computer and see if they broke out any. And if they didn't break out, if they didn't go faster than 75 miles an hour, then they get the win. Yep. If they did, they get the back. Oh, yeah. Second place in class five is going to be specialized racing, Mark Gallagher. Little outboard boat. That boat is very old, but, uh, but it runs good. Yep. And he is not scared. And then wings on the water, the Rendell Bat Boat. Push yeah. 10, 555. Five, five. Yeah, and we got the reinforcer out there. Oh, it was up two, getting a little air. Ultimate ride, 554. Five, DK Motorsport. Number 524. And repeat offender, the Rob Brothers. Rab, Rob, I think it's Rab. Is it Rab? Ray? Yeah, Is it Ray? I think. I apologize, guys. Sorry. Same here. Now remember, coming up in the next race, we have the Super Cats, we have the Vs, the Super Vs. It is going to be some awesome racing. These boats are not speed limited. They are deck to deck, hardcore, serious racing. And of the guys who are running them, <laughs> they have so many years racing boats that, uh, well, they're gonna put on a great show. So we want you to make sure that when we do get into the third race, you've got to be here for this. It's gonna be awesome. Did you see the paint scheme on the bat boat, the 211 bat boat? The bat. Good afternoon, everybody. We are back for race number three 
the Blue Water Offshore Racing Association, the OPA, the St. Clair River Classics. My name is Ted Gennady. I am here with Brian the Balloon Man Kowalski. And joining us, just coming off the race course after a, uh, a, a slight blip in the, uh, in the racing, is uh, Mike Kowalski, driver of the uh, Maxed Out Motorsports team. Hi, everybody. You there, Mikey? Yeah, how are you guys? You got him? Barely. Barely. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. He's way off. Wait. Check, check, check. Is this one any better? Well, technical difficulties. That's what you get when you get uh, live TV, live YouTube TV. Oh, I don't know about these. I don't either. <laughs> oh. Give me something, Mike. How you doing out there? No. Yep. Try that. How we doing out there, guys? There oh, we there are. we go. Hey, yeah. we found it. Yeah. Hey. They there have, we are. They have the same problems on Family Look Feud. Look over at the camera. Everybody yeah. wants to see you. Hi. They have the same problems on Family Feud and Price is Right, so. Yeah, you know, I know. It's, it's, all, it's a common problem. That's how it industry. goes. <laughs> yeah. That's how it goes. And they have three weeks to get it in the can. We've got uh, three minutes and right. Uh, right. A, a popsicle stick. Right. They get 12 hours of video time. You have three hours. All right, so, Mike, we're gonna, let's get this over with right away. I know all your fans are out there wondering, so what happened to 629? 626. 626. Uh, My appreciate bad. the uh, correction there. Uh, looks like we possibly wiped a cam. Uh, it definitely is a valve train problem, so the boat's going to head home here in about an hour, and we're going to pull it out, pull the motor out, tear it down, find out what happened. We'll probably order some parts from T Custom Marine and put it back together. Well, thank God you've got that huge professional team to, uh, yeah. you know, take care of all your transportation needs, and, and you're just going to jet back in your in your private uh, yep. plane tonight, right? The helicopter is going to take me from here to the airport, and I'll walk right on the runway right up to my personal plane, and then when on my personal plane, I'll fly home. Now you got to take the Bentley ride from the helicopter to the plane. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yes, that's how yeah. Brian rolls. <laughs> yes. Brian, that's how Brian Mr. Rolls. Brian Kowalski. All the exactly. skis roll that way. I told him. I, nothing wrong with that. I no. told him if something happened underneath that uh, underneath that hatch because there was a balloon in there, he was a dead man. But when I pulled the valve cover, I, I did see a little piece pieces of rubber in there. So uh. Uh, <laughs> I think it's time to you probably explain what happened. Okay, so you have to understand that uh, Brian and and the team from Maxed Out have had a little ongoing battle with the little pranks here and little pranks there. Somehow. Not quite sure how it happened, but uh, on Friday night, uh, the Maxed Out Motorsports high-performance professional hauler <laughs> ended up with approximately, I don't know, what, 150 balloons in it? 166. 166 balloons. Now, Brian says he knew nothing about it. However, since he is also chief of security here at the uh, Blue Water Offshore Series, um, we figure that he may have had something to do with it just just saying. Chief I, of Security. That's yeah, that's a new one. That's a that's a superior title to That's to, above dry pits, man. Right. I like that. Well there you go. So <laughs> so that's what we're looking at and uh, it was it was pretty uh, you're an offshore racer. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. And they spelled I your like name it. right too. They didn't yeah, th Brad. Brad, 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 Brad Kowalski or something. Uh, <laughs> I maybe, maybe we're clo more closer related than you thought. You know what was really <laughs> freaky is Brad Kozlowski, the uh -huh. uh, stock car driver, was down at this thing I was at in, in Detroit, and I was thinking, they didn't really get him to come up to this. Kozlowski, by the way. Whatever. Yeah. You people are saying your Polish names. I just don't get it. Come on, man. No. I'm, 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 I'm into this offshore boat race thing. I'm not into NASCAR. Right, you know, right. I, I'm just happy that the production company got a Polish vendor out on the f street out there. It yeah. was great. Get your pierogies. I did. There you go. Very you nice. Pierogies up there. Yeah. Wow. Uh oh. Now Mikey knows what he's gonna have for his for missed, his dinner. I missed that part. Plain snack. So, so no, it, you know it was a good race. Uh, the the start was tough, and and when you have ten boats and and you're sixth, you, you have to maintain your line through that corner, and and we just got pushed really wide, and it's, you know, when your boats can only go seventy, it's really really hard to make up the ground, and. Uh, and we just we just couldn't do it. It was about four laps in. We were just on going to turn three and four, and the motor started uh, motor over revved and started pinging and popping really bad. And then uh, we just shut it down and uh, worked on it. When we got back into land. So tough day for the six two six maxed out boat, but that's racing. Now, of course, you guys are in the in the hunt for the uh, national points championship. So this means to get the boat back together fairly shortly because you've got to be back here in Port Huron this 
in two weeks, right? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, this is probably this is going to probably take us out of points. The way the points work in OPA is obviously you can drop your lowest, your worst finish. You can drop the points. Well, our zero in Lotto because we didn't go to Lake of the Ozarks was our race that we would drop. So uh, we don't have the option to drop this one. And we, you know, we were only one of I think two boats that broke, maybe three. Not really sure, but. Uh, it, it's going to be pretty detrimental to the championship run and uh, just kind of have to figure out what we're going to do with it and how things go. Yeah, that's a shame. Uh, looks like we are starting to get the uh, boats on the course, so I suppose we should talk about who everybody is going to see out here in the next race. This is going to be uh, race three, and um, in the first start we have Supercat, and that's going to be Cleveland Construction, which is uh, Ed Smith and I'm not sure. I believe Sean is in the boat with him. No, no. Keith Holmes. Oh, Keith Holmes. Okay, so they just so they basically got out of Cat Can Do and got into Ed's boat. Yes. Yeah, Very nice. Double, Very nice. Double indeed. duty today. All righty. Oh, and Mike's gone. Okay. So, um, and then we have, um, of course, Amzo with Paul Whittier and Bob Teague. Um, came about 2,400 miles from California to come over here and race. See, St. Clair should be on your bucket list because even Bob T drives across the country to come here. Does it every year, and we thank him for coming. Awesome uh, awesome boat. Always love to see uh, Bob and, and Paul run. And uh, today I think is going to be an awesome, uh, an awesome race, a truly, uh, a, a, a really, really closely matched race between Cleveland Construction and uh, who – and, uh, and Cleveland Construction and Amsoil. Um, before we go into it uh, any further, I, I wanted to thank a couple of our sponsors. Um, we have some fantastic sponsors. Uh, Peppers, Pepper Joe's over here on Clinton Street in St. Clair. Um, great restaurant, great bar. Had, a, had some great times over there. River Bend Marina, which is the owner of Cleveland Construction, Ed Smith. Huge part of this... Uh, huge part of this race. Beware Lumber down the street um, has been a great supporter of the St. Clair River Classic. We really appreciate it. Um, and uh, Bill McDonald Ford great uh, has, has been a, a, a fantastic uh, supporter of the St. Clair River Classic and, uh, and the city itself. The Murphy Inn over on Clinton Street Big sponsor of uh, Cleveland Construction and uh, always has a great party there on Friday and Saturday night during the races. And I can't, oh, St. Clair Landscaping and Irrigation. Call them for your needs over here in East China. And the big boy in Marine City, Michigan. Great hamburger. Mm. You like your big boy, big boy? Yes, I do. <laughs> And we appreciate all the sponsors that made this uh, broadcast happen. If you're here, it, oh, and the Voyager. I almost forgot the Voyager. Um, the Voyager is our host uh, site here today. We are really happy to, that they could take care of us like this. Um, I love the Voyager. Great food, great, great service, and we've had some great times over here. So when you do come up on your bucket list trip here to St. Clair, if you're listening to us out there on the interwebs, Make sure you see those great sponsors because they're helping to bring this broadcast to you today. All right, Brian, so we've already talked about the uh, Super Cats. What about uh, Class 3, your second start? Class 3, I'll tell you, that's going to be uh, one to watch. That's... Uh... <laughs> There's one now. Yes, that's, uh, <laughs> that's uh, Miss PTM, by the way. That's a V7, Steve Kerr and Steve Kerr Jr. Uh, they're driving a Phantom out there in the Super V class. V6, Strictly Business, Louis G. Kong Terry and Johnny Stanch. They're in a fountain. Um, and then uh, Was Up, V1. That's Ed Smith and Anthony Smith, another father and son team, uh, in a fountain as well. So three fountains are going to go for that. All right, we've got our pace boats up. They're taking the, the boats around on a grade lap. I'll be quiet here for a minute so you can hear the music play. <laughs> Nothing like the sound of about 5,000 horsepower. 
lovely. All right, in class two, which is going to be your third start, is the beautiful Bat Boat MTI Cat that's driven by Elliot Gray and throttled by Jay Mueller. Um, along a new team to the to the race, uh, Team 27, John Jackman and Chip Miller. They are also in a beautiful new, fairly new uh, MTI Cat. And finally, 229 Blown Rush. That is the old Cleveland construction boat, the Talon Cat. Um, in that boat, you have Dennis Billock and Ken Plouffe. Plouffe? 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 Plouffe. Whatever. Um, sorry, Ken, if I messed up your name. Um, that, that boat has more experience than the other two boats, certainly on the water. Um, but the driver and the throttleman um, are certainly fairly new to the sport. So... We have a, a situation where all of these boats are very fast. All these boats are very well set up. We know they can all run very fast. Now it's just a matter of, you know, how well is it put together and, and how long it can stay running and, and what kind of lines they're going to take and that type of thing. Remember that your Class 2 boats are basically uh, limited to 105 miles an hour, so they can, they can get some pretty good speed up there, but they're still running underneath the GPS. Yeah, and those, those will be verified after the race. Uh, just like in our other races today, they'll pull the GPSs out of them, run them up to Frank there in the GPS trailer, and he'll run his magic on them and see, make sure everybody's all in line. Now, you can look at those two boats over there, the Cleveland construction boat and the Amsoil boat, and you will notice that they are virtually identical. Yes. Actually, the Cleveland construction boat is a little bit newer, but um, I, I, wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't give any edge just because it's a little bit newer boat. However, the pilots, um, the, 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 the drivers of the throttlemen of both those boats have probably literally 100 years of experience between them racing oh. power boats. Oh, God, so yeah. it's going to be an awesome, awesome race. Yeah, the, I, I think the only difference between the two boats is two foot of running length, or two foot of overall length, I'm sorry. And uh, not even that on running length, I right. don't believe. So. Um, the one thing about the uh, the Cleveland construction boat is it was um, it was completely redone. Its canopy was completely redone uh, at one point because they had a while it was um, under a different name, uh, talking trash. It had a uh, a, a mishap, yes. shall we say, and um, so they redid the canopy and made it much stronger, much safer. Um, so it does have a little bit of new technology in it that maybe the uh, the the Emsel boat doesn't, but. Obviously, Bob Teague being uh, a, a phenomenal boat rigger, um, and, and by the way, owns Teague Custom Marine, so if you need anything um, specific for your high-performance boating needs, Teague Marine is um, definitely one of the ones that you'd want to get in touch with, but uh, obviously his boat is going to be cutting-edge, state-of-the-art, too, maybe just a little bit older. Yeah, the, Bob is phenomenal with parts and and setups, he helps teams out. Uh, I remember, I think it was a couple of years ago, uh, a team blew a motor. He lo loaned them a motor out of his hauler, and they went on to win the race that day with the motor that he loaned them. And yeah. they were racing him. <laughs> yeah, that was an, that was that was truly a, 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 it was a, it was an awesome act of, of sportsmanship, oh. and it was it was very cool to be here and see that. Um, you know, it's to, to see a competitor who gives up a, an entire engine um, to to one of his one of his stiffest competition. When he easily just said, "Oh, you know, sorry for your luck. You got a broken motor. I get the first place points. Have a nice day." Right. Um, and then ends up losing to him and losing the points. But but I, I think in a lot of ways, Mr. Teague won that day. So absolutely. And it just shows how this uh, it shows how this sport brings guys together. You know, even. Even I was I was speaking with Mike when he was talking about Max Stout having an issue, and uh, um, Bob Teague actually came to him right when he got off the water and said, "Look, anything you need, you give me a call and we'll ship it overnight to you if that's what you need to get that boat back running again." So yeah, you can't ask for a better guy than that. And you know Ed Smith and the Cleveland construction boat, he's the same way. He's got a marina down here too. So it's th those guys are they're awesome. Yeah, Riverbend Marina is a fantastic place. Um, a lot of the, it looks like we have a green flag start. I was, I'm, yeah. I was like, wow, oh, they oh, just got the race started. And that is in Supercat. Oh, Here we go. That. Cleveland construction out to an early lead there. Oh, no, 
Both boats very closely matched. Beautiful boats. This is going to be an awesome race to watch. We'll need to let them sort it out a little bit. They've got quite a few laps to go. In fact, those boats are going to be running today. Let me look on my little sheet here. Looks like they're going to be running 12 laps for 48 miles. Here we go with your class three start. What's up? Strictly business and Miss PPM. Looks like Miss PPM is up to a slight lead, but he is also on the outside, so he's got a little bit longer course to go. Yes. Now, once again, those boats are not limited by a GPS, so um, they, well, oh no, let's see. I guess they probably are running GPSs today. Normally, they would yeah. not be. Here's our start in class two coming up. Uh, Still under yellow there. Man, it doesn't look like we're going to... Oh, there it is. Well. Two what? MTIs coming up uh, on the inside. It looks like, obviously, the, uh, the, the rush boat started to the outside because they're brand new. The Talon up against the MTIs. That's going to shake up to be a pretty good race, too. Remember, they are limited in speed somewhat, so it's not just an all-out drag race at this point. Look at these boats on the back turn. Amsoil and Cleveland Construction almost tied together. Now, Cleveland Construction can tie, come in tighter on the turn. He's yep. got a little shorter of a run to come around that turn, so he could pick up a little bit, but Teague is slightly out in front, and now it looks like they've come even in the turn. Yeah, that's a beautiful shot right there you're looking at. Beautiful. And those boats, both those boats look fantastic. That's so, the, the silver is, is just a, a, an awesome color for a race boat. Oh, yeah. All Absolutely. right, Cleveland Construction is out in front by just a little bit. Well, but it's too close to call at this point. And Teague is moving on Cleveland Construction. Here he comes up on the side. might have got him there. Ed Smith is still keeping the inside line. If he can keep that inside line, he's got a shorter course, so he's got a little bit of an advantage there. I don't think Bob Teague will let him keep that very long, though, quite frankly. No, I, I, I don't either. I get a little whiff of oil, too. I'm wondering what that's all about, but we'll see. I don't know. Class two boats are coming down the back stretch. All right, let's see. We've got, oh, there, there they are. Was up is in the lead in class number three. Yes. Running it light. Look at that thing chime walking from side to side. That's pretty much the way those fountains run. They like to run up there nice and light, way up on top of the water. Let's put you got in the water, the faster you're going to be. Yep. Shortly there behind him in second place is Miss PTM, followed by Strictly Business. But was up has jumped out to a considerable lead at this point in time. We'll see how that goes. Here comes our class two, folks. Out to an early lead, we have team 2227. Running nicely in that MTI out in front of 211, the bat boat. And coming up in third place is going to be the Talon. Lone Rush. Danny Bullock. Even though that's not Cleveland Construction anymore, I think that's still pretty much a hometown favorite, so we'll see how they <laughs> keep it up. Yeah. All the boats sound like they're running good. A little bit of a little rev limit right there on, on Blown Rush. Supercats coming into Cleveland construction running beautifully. Yep. There's Amsoil. Looks like Amsoil has finally passed Cleveland construction. Oh. Considerably, actually. Bob Teague has come out to a, a nice lead in front of Cleveland construction. Must have must have gotten him in the turn. As I said, he's gonna let him. He'll he'll reel him in. That's how they work. But I'm not going to count Ed out yet either. Oh, no. Coming around the back side of the course is Was Up, your leader in Class 3. 
Yeah, he's stretching out that lead pretty good on this PTM, but we will see what happens by the end of this. Well, you know, he, he does run the organization, and he has pretty much a, a direct link to, to GPS Frank. So, you know, even <laughs> if he breaks out a little bit, eh, you never know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's your team 227. MTI running strong. Right now, unofficially first place in Class 2. Yeah, that, that's a great place to be for John Jackman. Uh, you know, first race out with us up here this year. That boat is absolutely beautiful. He had nice, nice display in the, the pit area. Just a beautiful boat. Pretty boat. I don't see the bat boat. We seem to have lost the bat boat somewhere along the line. Yeah. So in second place, it looks like we've got uh, Blown Rush now. 229. I'll grab out the assisted glasses here and see if we can find them. Was up boat on, is uh, going by us in first place right now, class three. Here comes Miss PTM with Strictly Business right behind. Now, once again, if we get Strictly Business and Miss PTM starting to dice it up for second and third, then all of a sudden it gets very difficult for, for, for them to get up and, and get anything back on what's up. Yeah, that, that is true. And I did find the bad boat. Uh, they are up in uh, turn two on the inside of the course, so. All right. You going to come back and talk to us for a while there, Mike? Yeah, go do the live, the live interviews for a while through the PA system as we watch Amsoil. Amsoil's up and up a nice lead now over Cleveland Construction. He just got a little lap traffic going in with uh, Lone Rush. It looked like just a few short laps ago, Amsoil put on an inside move on Cleveland Construction in turns one and two. That's how he got the lead. But look at this challenge up in the turns one and two. Whoa. Strictly Business Looks like got a Strictly worse down there. Looks like Strictly Biz is trying to make a move on Miss PTM, and they were having none of that. Steve Kerr and Steve Kerr were saying, nope, I don't think so. Steve and Stevie, I believe, is how they're being Steve termed Steve? now. <laughs> Steve Stevie? and Stevie. I think that's what it says on the back of the T-shirts. Did see the bat boat down in the middle. Tough day for Elliot and Jay in that boat. Still have the nicest paint job on the course. They do. They do. <laughs> I told them that it could have mirrored Detroit. The way that it looked was up, checked out in Super V. They are just gone, barring any sort of mechanical problem. And now Ms. PTM has a nice lead up over uh, Strictly Business, but uh, Louis, I'm sure, is going to figure out a way to, to bring that in a little bit. Good to see the Curves back out here after they blew that boat apart so bad in Solomon's back in October. Absolutely. It takes a lot of work to keep these boats on the water, and especially if you have an incident or anything of that nature, uh, a lot of times it can, be, it can get very, very expensive and, and very time-consuming to get these things uh, back to racing shape. But uh, they've spent a lot of time and a lot of effort, and it's great to see them out. As the Maxed Out team is about to find out this week. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to cut so close to home. That's all right. There's Cleveland Construction on the backside. He's got a lot of space to make up if he's going to br bring Amsoil back in. And right now Amsoil is, looks like he is widening the gap. Was up in an easy run out in front for your class three. In class two though, it, it, or Super V rather. Or class whatever three. We're, uh, we're describing these as class three. Class three. It looks like Strictly Business had made up some ground on Miss PTM. I don't know if Louie and Popoff Stanch are able to turn that boat a little bit better. Well, the next thing we need to see is if he tries to make the move, are Steve and Steve going to shut him down again like they did the last time? That will be the turn to watch. Going by in front of us right now is Amzol and Cleveland Construction shortly there behind. The boat looks good, angle looks good, trim looks good, the speed looks good. I just wonder if Bob might have a little more acceleration out of the corners. Here's the battle you want to watch, though. That's PTM on the outside, Strictly Business on the inside. Strictly Business kind of makes a little bit of an adjustment to make that turn. And there you see Blown Rush. Unofficially, Blown Rush is running in uh, second place now in Class 2. 
But as I said in the live broadcast, remember the, the PA announcement, those boats are bracketed by speed. They cannot go over 105 miles per hour. That's correct. That one just has distinctive sound. Oh, yeah. Always has. Always has. Had a distinctive sound in the pits in my ear, too. <laughs> <laughs> it was up. Is that to an easy lead in class I tell three? you what, if we can go to that back straightaway, somebody is getting a shower Look back at that over back. there. Oh, my. On the back straightaway, you have Miss PTM in Amsoil's wake. With 227 coming up right behind him. Oh, yeah. It is busy back there. There is Blown Rush. A big rooster tail for Blown Rush. I think they have a mechanical problem, maybe. Oh, yep, on the top turn. Yep. Yeah, it looks like they came out of it okay. New team. Not sure of their experience level. Wish them all the best and hope everything goes well for them. Yep, rooster's coming down now. They're bringing the, bringing the power back up. Like they're running pretty strong. That's a learning curve. There's Cleveland Construction on the back side. Cleveland Construction looks like they might be slowing just a little bit. They don't have, they're not carrying the speed on the back straightaway. No, and it does look like Amsoil keeps uh, extending his lead out. There go Ed and Anthony Smith and what's up. There's Amsoil right there. Yeah, and he is, he's running great. Boats trim nice and easy. Right now, it's just a walk in the park for him. Yeah, I think this makes like 1,064 races, something like that something, effect. Something crazy oh. for BT. Unbelievable. All right, so at this point in time, we have lap traffic coming up into the turn. 227 is staying to the outside of Miss PTM and Strictly Business. However, we could have some issues in this turn as they come around, and it looks like Strictly Business is trying to maintain an inside line to shorten up the course for them. Yeah, so we'll see how that works out for them. They've hopped to the outside. Yes. Now they're going back to the inside. I think Louie and Pop Pop Johnny Stancher are trying to do anything they can to get around that PTM boat. As Cleveland Construction looks like, out of my view, is pulling down into the middle of the course. Let's see what happens. Oh, PTM looks like they slowed quite a bit in that corner. And there goes. There we go. PTM is barely ahead of. I think PTM is trying to control that corner a little bit. I think they're pinching down onto that buoy and not really giving Louie the chance. Buoy, Louie sounds pretty bad, but not giving Louie the chance to get to, to that get inside get in tight lane. on it. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's good, and, you know, and that's good driving. When you're in a spec class like this or a, a, a production class like this, part of what you have to do is be able to protect that inside line. There goes Amsoil down the back straightaway. You might see Cleveland Construction in the shot who are in the middle with some sort of mechanical problem. Wait to get word from race control on what's happened there. So now Paul, Paul Whittier, Bob T, can just put that boat on cruise control. Absolutely. It's just a drive now for them. They've got uh, first place because Cleveland Construction is down in the middle of the course. And so now they'll just be out to keep to get points and uh, knock down some laps. Squares up, comes out of that corner. Not rolling on it too, too hard. His, his wake is up a little bit, so he's going to take it a little bit easy. Probably try and save the equipment. Um, he can he can obviously look over there and see that uh, Cleveland Construction is out, so his. <coughs> His first place is assured. Here comes your first place leader in class three, the V1 was up boat. A lot of hours on that boat. Yep, another father's boat team, Edward and Anthony Smith. Boat's been around for a long time, as so has Blown Rush. Remember that yes. boat used to be called yeah. Traffic Light back in the day. Ex yeah, absolutely, yeah. went Traffic Light to Cleveland Construction, and now it's Blown Rush. Had the privilege of going to the Traffic Light facility once or twice in my time. Brian, I'm sure you have also. Uh, no comment. I don't know what y'all talking about. <laughs> Great now, let's look, at, let's look at this here. Miss PTM and, and Strictly Business still locked in. PTM is running that boat really, really loose. A lot of positive trim, run right on the back step. 
And I think 227 might be having something to do with allowing that battle to close up and get a little bit tighter. Well, he does seem to be doing a pretty good job of staying on the outside of the course and not getting into the middle of their mess. But at the same time, I mean, it, it, it's something you just have to keep an eye on. I, I can't believe he hasn't just pulled ahead and given them some room to race. PTM but, is going to go into that corner as we look at Lone Rush. Let's see what happens here. Here we're going into the top corner. That's PTM on the outside. Lou, Louie and Strictly Business on the inside. As you see the pin, Louie makes up a lot of ground right there. He gets within about a half a rooster tail length. PTM being, being wider is going to be able to carry a little bit more speed too. A, li a little bit. But you can see how much speed Louie loses right there. It's almost like he's having to cut that wheel really hard yep. in that last part of the turn which is slowing them. Yeah. But now it's kind of fun to watch 227 run with the two V-bottoms. Of course, with their, limited, with their limited sight lines and whatnot inside those canopy boats, it could be that the, that the Kurs are a little bit freaked out because of, of that 227 boat being right there. Um, and so they're constantly kind of keeping an eye on them, and that's going to that's gonna break their concentration on what they're trying to do with, with strictly business in the back. And actually, he's now run out in front of the 227 boat again. There goes Angel, your, your leader in Supercat. Crossing the start-finish line. You know, Ted and I have been announcing races for a long time. Brian's been doing it for a long time. Should have once again said we pull our tape to count laps, but that well. Bullard. Yeah. When it's, o when it's over, it's over. Right, Brian? When the fat lady sings, she sings. You got it. And it's, it's very difficult to pull laps on three different three different classes right. and uh, the whole the whole table would be covered it's it's hard enough just to pull thing. one set of tape isn't it mike yes yes it is <laughs> <laughs> i had some leftovers today as a matter we're of pretty much thinking time. that boom shakalaka may have taken two extra credit laps today. yes we're not sure uh, but uh oh it looks like strictly business has gotten to the inside of ptm yeah. louie and pop pop pushed him out a little wide coming out of that corner but that was definitely some sort of a pass there and they are neck and neck coming up this front straight. We'll see how that works out. Both boats very closely matched, obviously. Yeah, I'm I'd, sure the Steves are having conversation about that right now. I think if I'm PTM, I might try and make a move back to the inside. But I'll tell you what, PTM is carrying a ton of speed on Strictly Business. But PTM is also very heavily trimmed up. Strictly Business is running a little bit flatter. Well, look over at them, and, and they've chased down Strictly Business. I mean, Strictly Business had a rooster tail, rooster tail length and a half lead on them out of that corner, and now going into this corner, they're going to be deck to deck. So Correct. Louis might be a little short propped. He, he may not have the top speed that he wants, but this will be an interesting battle coming through here in turns one and two, and this will be the race of the day between Miss PTM and Strictly Business. Here we go. Let's see what they do. Strictly Business on the outside, PTM on, uh, I'm sorry, Strictly Business on the inside, PTM on the outside. They lost a little bit more ground than they wanted to. Yeah, yeah they definitely had to back off. We saw that rooster tail jump up for just a second. Louie might have pushed him just a little wide. Which is fair, but let's watch what happens down this back straightaway because I think PTM has more speed. I just don't think they're able to corner yep. as well as... Louis now, and, and you've also still got 227 in the mix. And I, I still maintain that with him sitting sort of in there, it's a little, uh, it's a little, I, I'm sure it's a little frustrating. Well, I remember the seven mile an hour current coming down this river on the Canadian side. Uh, it will have an effect on it. So it's quite impressive that the Kurs can carry that much speed against the seven against, mile an hour yeah. point current and pull up against Correct. it. Correct. Looking at strictly business. And from what I can see in the live perspective, I, I still think Kurs have that speed if they can make up that ground. We'll see what happens as we come across the start-finish line. I haven't seen what's up come by lately. Has anybody else? Very good point. Oh, there we go. Okay, what's there up? Still go. out there going? The, having the monitor is great because when oh, you yeah. look to the left here at St. Clair, or to the right here at St. Clair, it's people. I see heads. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Some, some bald, some pretty hair, some big, some small. Flashy heads. 
Was up running nice and loose, way up on top of the water. Ted, you and I had the privilege of being at the Was Up shop just a few short weeks ago when we were up in New Jersey. Yes, absolutely. Taking a look at Blown Rush. Amsoil <laughs> to the inside of Blown Rush. Blown Rush doing the right thing and getting out of the way. Brian, do you know much about that Blown Rush boat? Uh, you know, that that's the old Cleveland construction boat. And uh, then, he, then he purchased that from Ed. Uh, Ed did some work with him here in the past couple of weeks. And uh, they had to make a determination. Then he did on whether he wanted to pleasure motor to race it. He said he's done a lot of motocross before and some other racing. He said, well, let's give it a shot. So Ed took them out for a little training session during the week, and uh, they're, they're doing really good, good for their first time out. Outstanding. Well, it, you know, our theory about PTM didn't quite work out the way that we wanted to because they weren't able to make up that ground as much as we thought. You know, and it, and. I kind of would think that, you know, you could push it for so long, but if you kind of scare yourself a little bit, especially one of these fountains, I hear that they're very forgiving, never personally run one. But, you know, the Kerrs, they need a little bit of time. They need a little bit of practice, especially with just putting the boat back together. Yeah. So, At this point in time, I mean, it looks like Strictly Business has taken a, a pretty significant lead over them, and that'll, that'll put, we'll put our standings at this point with was up in first and Strictly Business second. And then Miss PTM in third, and 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 Miss PTM definitely has their work cut out for him to try in these last few laps to try and, and reel him back in again. Now, not saying he couldn't do it because he definitely has picked up some speed on him at different times during the thing, but it could be that Louis' setup in strictly business was a little heavier than he would like it to be, yeah. and now that it's starting to drop some fuel out of it, it's it's running much better the way he would the yeah, way he would he, prefer it to run. He could have dumped some ballast out of it or anything like that. The curse could also be that their setup was for a heavier setup, and as they got lighter, they were too loose, you know, and they had to start trimming the boat back in just a little bit. So, you know, this is a, you know, it, it's this is a very dynamic course. There's a lot of things that are constantly changing on this course. It's any race course that you go to, but with the current here, these holes, this picked up amount of speed. I mean, you'll come out of turns one and two, and you know, you'll go in our boat. We can only go over seven. We can't go over seventy, so it'll go five to sixty-nine in a matter of about you know fifty feet. So there's a current, there's a little bit of a current change there that gives it a push. So still have to pay attention to it, but. And of course, this is fresh water, which most of these race boats are not accustomed to right. being in for most of the season. So you set up half the change. There goes what's up, Ed and Anthony Smith. How did you like your setup, by the way, for uh, this water before? it wasn't going to cooperate. Um, I think we were a little overcropped. I don't think we had the acceleration that we wanted to. Uh, we put the 24 on and not the 22 after a test yesterday. The 24 had a little bit more consistent pull, but I think we needed that acceleration coming out of the corners, especially in that first turn, to kind of keep up in that group just a little bit. All right, Louis throttling strictly business a little bit there as he goes by us. He's running pretty light on it. This PTM coming behind. Now the attitude of, well, I was going to say the attitude of PTN changed a little bit. It wasn't quite setting on the back of the boat as much. It ran a little bit more level, but every time I think that, it kind of stands up on the, nose, on the, on the back just a little bit. But I'm not seeing as much set in the strictly business right. boat as I did before, so he may be trying to extend his lead out by, by loosening up the boat a little bit more. There goes 227, Team 227. Yeah, Brian, when we raced in Harrison Township, Michigan, Michigan, does Chip Miller own that marina we raced at? Somebody asked me that the other day, and I couldn't answer the question. I, that's Beacon Cove Marina. Right. And I can't. I think Karen was the lady there. Yes. Very nice lady. Yep, very, yep. very accommodating. Yep. I, I couldn't tell you if Chip owned that or not, but that that's probably one of the one of the best marinas that's, down there. Yeah, very. I mean. Very, very we're nice. A little, we're a little partial to our marinas up here, yeah, but that was a nice one down there. Now it's looking like the bat boat is running, but they're they're basically just floating down the course with the current. Um, he has at least one engine running. Bob Teague, Paul Whittier, Amsoil, number 77, like we said, just kind of out on cruise control now. Just uh, going to run the boat and see how it does. You know, Bob Teague is probably one of the only teams out there that rigs his own boat, builds his own motors, and does everything on his program in-house. The only thing he doesn't do is build the boat. But he'll do everything else to it with his son, John Teague, on board and the entire staff at Teague Marine. And spends thousands of hours testing. Oh, yeah. And thousands of hours towing. Well, that too. 
So that boat went from California to Florida, from Florida to Michigan. It'll stay up here for a while, and then I'm not sure where it's going after that. But Bob actually drives the hauler and tows the boat personally himself. Yes. All right, now we're looking at the race between Strictly Business and Miss PTM. It looks like Strictly Business, it, it, there's no way at this point in time that Miss PTM is picking up any, any distance on them whatsoever. So unless something radically changes, it looks like uh, Strictly Business has this one in, at least for second place in the bag. Meanwhile, what's up is your first place boat in class three. And all the groups have kind of got some good separation to them now. You know, what's up, obviously, checked out, headed to the north side of the course, and then Strictly Business coming. Now, there's PTM right into view of the screen. So I think Ed and Anthony Smith have about a straightaway length on Strictly Business and PTM. But I'm not even sure if Louie and Pop Pop have ever raced together. So, you know, that could be another dynamic uh, inside that boat as they try and get each other figured out. But both of them have a lot of experience racing, so it's right. just a matter of probably just arguing over who thinks he's got the right setup. And <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't get to race a few weeks ago in Manasquan, Point Pleasant area, because they broke a prop shaft. So they went out, they got up on plane and broke the prop shaft, so they never even really got the experience there. We see Strictly Business and Anzoil head into the corner. Strictly Business on the inside, Anzoil on the outside. And there goes 227 into our cam review. And out. And I think that's PTM, the other rooster tail there. Strictly Business lays it over in the corner. Pop Pop trims in the drives. Louie makes the turn and then he'll accelerate up. And that was Amsoil going screaming through the corner. So they haven't, you know, they haven't really slowed their corner speed at all. No, in fact, Kept they're making up. a nice, they're making a nice run of it, even though they really don't have to. Uh, you know, knock down a huge time or a huge speed here. Give it a great show to the fans. There's Ed and Anthony Smith in What's Up. Give a shout out to Anthony who, uh, according to the Facebook posts and some conversations, finally got his house under construction after losing it to Sandy, is that four years ago? Uh, yeah, Sandy's been about four years. The evil, evil Sandy. The evil, evil Sandy. And here is Miss PTM and Strictly Business. Strictly Business based out of Long Island. Louis G. Contieri, the, the owner. Eric Vorhar, sometimes the, the throttle man in the boat, but Eric owns a very, very busy marine business back in Long Island. So it's getting harder and harder for him to be able to make the races. So that's why he asked Johnny Stanch to fill in for him. There is your leader in Super V. What's up? As we'll, we'll look to the start-finish boat, I think these boats should be wrapping up most of their laps here very shortly. All right, now I see on the very far side of the course, it looks like Ms. PTM is down. That would be was up playing. Yeah. Going by the seawall at a high rate of speed, close proximity. They duck back out into the corner. I will tell you that Ed and Anthony Smith in the Was Up boat do put on a good after show for the fans. There'll be a couple donuts and some high rev moves out there. Yes. Let's hope the course is closed before they do that. And there it looks like Gamble just took the checkered flag, Mike. Yep, good day for Paul Whittier and Bob T. And we do have uh, Ms. PTM down in the middle of the course. It looks like they are under their own power, but uh, they are definitely uh, done for the day. That's an unfortunate day for those guys. So that will put Was Up as the uh, leader and probably the unofficial winner. Unofficial they're, winner. They're running GPSs. If they're yep. running class right. three, they're running GPSs. Of class three, and then second place would go to Strictly Business. There's 227. No checkered flag for 227 yet. On the start finish boat. Yeah, one more lap for them. They're running 12 laps today. For are, 40. You, are you actually counting? No, but I'm just kind of. Yeah, he's just. You're I'm making a, he's making an educated you're guess. Guessing. Yeah, you're making guessing. an educated guess. Well, class three only ran 11, so I figured. You're okay. making an educated guess? Yeah, it's a hard thing. It, yeah, I've, I've, yeah, that's. <laughs> Kind of left me speechless there. That's pretty hard to do, too. Telling you. And this would be second place in class two. Would be 
Balloon Rush, the old Cleveland construction boat. Yeah, I like the fact they left the uh, eagles and the flag on there like that and on the, on the deck. That was all hand painted. That was great. You know, nothing bad, but it probably cost more to get it off yes. and repaint it. And probably out of all the expenditures you have in that boat, that probably wasn't one that was quite worth the effort. There goes was up going into turns three and four on the south side of this race course. And Ryan, I would, do, you, do you have an educated guess on laps completed for them? Should this be it? 11.7. 11.7. Where did the point seven come from? Uh, just picked that one out of the air, but I'm going to go on the assumption they're going to get the checkered flag here in just a second. Well, I do see a checkered flag waving on the start-finish boat, so this should conclude the Super V race. I'm sorry, Class 3. I'm too used to saying Super V. I know, Super V. Class 3, your unofficial winner is going to be Was Up. Ed and Anthony Smith will take that boat over to Riverbend. Probably park it in the spot that Max Doubt was going to go in. <laughs> Tough day for Cleveland Construction and those guys. Yeah, they were running really good, too. They were. They had a great start and, uh, you know, looked like everything was going the way that they wanted it to go. Yeah, it's very difficult, unfortunately, when you uh, have a mechanical issue or something of that nature. And as, as, you, as you just found, it's uh, a little hard to get past that. Now, it looks like Was Up and Strictly Business are going to complete at least one more lap because Was Up has not pulled off, the even though I saw a checkered flag on the on the, the bonus lap, the infamous possibly. bonus lap. Possibly. Extra credit. Extra credit. Here comes 227. They will be, they're your winners in class two. This should be the checkered, no, no checkered flag for 227 yet. I do like the paint on that boat. That is a beautiful, absolutely gorgeous boat. Very pretty boat. I know they had Trey Martin up here spending some time with the team trying to teach him how to drive it, learn how to trim it, and run the boat. They've done a nice job. I've seen all their people around in really nice uniforms, and uh, they're, they're definitely getting into it. It's nice to see a professional team out here for the first time. Speaking of a team that has some fancy uniforms, Blown Rush has some... Uh, some very colorful, bright, uh, elaborate uniforms also. How about the graphics on that? Yeah, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. As they come across the start-finish line, they are second in class two. Remember, Batman went out with a mechanical problem earlier. Here come Ed and Anthony Smith getting ready to turn right. What I think, so is this 12.7? Possibly. So, complete the bonus lap. Is this <laughs> like bonus a bonus lap. round on the Wheel of Jeopardy? Could be wheel sixteen. Of it could yeah. be sixteen point two. Wait. I know how he rolls. My wife says <laughs> I'm an idiot. It was Wheel of Fortune. I mean, appreciate that. Thanks, dear. Big <laughs> thumbs up down there to my crew. <laughs> whoop whoop. <laughs> well, guys, thanks for having me. We'll, we'll round out this broadcast. Hope you guys had a good day up here. And uh, I think I think Class Six was some some pretty exciting racing there was, for a while. Wasn't class it? six was very exciting and, and to see the, all those boats go into the turn that wide with all the with all that action going on it was fantastic fantastic show day of, in class six and class five for that matter class five did a great job there's the checkered for was up well that's bonus flag checkered lap you know of wheel of jeopardy remember oh yeah that's yeah, right yeah here comes Strictly Business. Hard fought battle for Strictly Business and Miss PTM. Uh, uh, yeah, Miss PTM. No, not Miss PTM. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Ms. Yeah, Miss PTM. PTM. And uh, Miss PTM. Really, really happy for the Kurs. No, they broke and had a mechanical failure, but glad they were able to at least, you know, get the time in the boat, get comfortable with what they were doing, and get their program figured out. Although I'd have loved to have had a microphone in Strictly Business with Pop Pop Stanch and <laughs> Louis G. Contieri in that boat. That would have been kind of interesting. We would have to make sure we have a uh, bleeping well, the question well, is, yeah, in, the ed in the editing room. The question is, both those I guys get to they get really pretty quiet. Here we go. So you never know. We're going to get a flyby here. Second place in Class 3 would be Strictly Business. 
I really like the red and the yellow graphics. That boat looks just very appealing to me now. I mean, I like the old Cartman graphics and everything, yeah. the old South Park graphics, but, man, the red and the yellow look really, really cool. It's very Hulk Hogan-ish. A little, uh, little upgrade for Strictly Business this year. Yep. And here comes 227, who would be unofficially your winner in Class 2. 227. Yeah, they had a great He's run He's getting the checkered flag. Good for those guys to come out and get the win, their first ever race. Yep. Tough day for the bat boat. Blown Rush coming out, also going to be on the podium in second place. The only way that this could change is if a couple of these boats broke out or had some speed problems. Now, I know uh, in talking to Jay and Elliot multiple times about the bat boat, that boat will go 135 miles an hour, so, and really? they're limited to a speed of 105. So well, not I, the easiest thing to do in the world to, to you know, know you have to hold back. And I would also expect that the other MTI probably is, is probably good for about that kind of speed, too. And so. Yeah, I think that's a 1075 boat. The uh, the uh, other no, that had Sterling motors in it. I'm sorry, 227 has Sterling motors in it. Okay, so he's still probably well over 120 miles an hour oh, if he yeah. if he needed to be. Bob Bob Teague putting his checkered flag and the checkered flag holder behind the canopy. They will definitely come for a flyby along the seawall here. Absolutely. The one thing about Bob Teague is is that he is a he is a phenomenal ambassador for his sponsor Amsoil. I mean, his his team is unbelievably professional. He's very professional. He always is more than happy to give an interview. He's more than happy to tell you all anything you, you ask him about the boat or racing or whatever. He's a great ambassador for this sport. Does a ton of charity work. Yeah, and he's all over the place. I, he, I think he takes more red-eye flights to cities and towns and different places as the Amsoil crew walks away. We'll give a shout-out to uh, his son also, who recently just got married and they're expecting their first child. I think he said in October. Jokingly, I said to him, so the kid will be in the stroller in Key West, right? <laughs> <laughs> and John says to me, yeah, that might happen. There, there you goes go. Strictly Business. Well, so what's up now? I mean, did, did, have they forgotten? I mean, what? What? this is their second bonus lap in World well, of Jeopardy. Well, who knows? Wheel of Jeopardy here in St. Clair, Michigan. Who knows? Pablo must have put the wrong amount of tape on the dash. No, not for Pop. No, he doesn't do things like that. He doesn't do things like that. He did, Pablo did win the Jimmy Welsh, not Pedro, by the way. It's not Pablo, it's Pedro. Pedro, I'm sorry. Jesus. He did win the Jimmy Welsh trophy at the awards in 2015. So that was, uh, or 2014, that was a well-deserved award. He's, he's a good dude, does a lot of work for Louie and for that team. And uh, Strictly Business is uh, slowing down. It looks like they finally decided they've taken enough laps today. You know, sometimes I think these guys just do it to run out of fuel so the boat's a little lighter to tow home or to tow around or whatever. But Quite possibly I see uh, Elliot and the bat boat going across the course. And they have definitely slowed considerably, but remember their race is over, so they will probably turn into go, the Pine River. I see what you mean about that, though. Sat. Those guys over there. Yeah, yeah, you get a little of that. Get a little of that. I don't know where where would it come from. Uh, all those Behind speakers you. up there. Uh, in the oh, yeah, uh, there's a whole bunch of them. On the Voyager. Yep, 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 yep. And we want to thank the Voyager for being our headquarters for this live broadcast of the OPA BWORA Saint Clair River Classic. Say Claire, glare. Say Claire. Claire. Kind of there like, is a little glare, but a little glare, yeah. It's kind of like Pedro Pablo. Pedro Pablo, Brad, yeah. Brad. It's been Brad. a it's been a war of words today. A war of words. You guys have played the name game quite a bit here up up uh, <laughs> up in the up in the announcers <laughs> booth. Absolutely, and everybody's sort of taking their time out there and 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 milling around a little bit. I think we'll probably see Bob Teague. Come down along the seawall and give everybody a little uh, checkered flag parade. Tough day for the Cleveland Construction Day. Tough day for this team also. Miss PTM worked so hard to get that boat back together. Uh, you know, did a lot of things going on on Facebook there. And, and I know Craig Williams was trying to help them out and yep. get it done. So, you know, they'll get it dialed in. Obviously, their first race is going to be a tough one to get figured out back in the boat after an incident like they had in Solomon's. They're strictly business. Johnny Popoff, Stan Louis G. Contieri on board. Good day for those guys. A good, good fought battle there is Blown Rush, formerly known as Cleveland Construction. Yep. Denny Billick and Ken Pluff. Now, some of them are taking their helmets off. As long as they are off plane, they can take their helmets off. They must leave their life jackets on, but they can take their helmets off. So. 
Are you saying that in case Felson's watching? No. Just trying to inform the inform the crowd. Some guys have them on, some guys have them off. If Just he is, hi, Rick. Hi, Rick. There is 227 getting their checkered flag. There's BT. Paul Whittier down inside the boat. Maybe Bob won't come up here and make a pass. I don't think he's going to. Hmm. Might be out of gas. Well, you know, this race went a little bit longer than they thought with the start uh, yeah. being delayed at 1230, and then the second race being delayed as much as it was. They, you know, they may, Coast Guard may be looking at them going, hey, guys, we got to open this thing back up and get it going. Remember, these events do take place under the blessing of the United States Coast Guard, also the Canadian Marine Patrol, or I think it's OPP. called? OPP. OPP. And we do appreciate all of the first responders, the Coast Guard, uh, on both sides uh, of, the, of the border. Um, just going to give a couple of shout outs here. I want to I want to thank the CTV production crew. They've done a great job today. Paul Degeman, the uh, uh, executive producer, um, unbelievable job. Bruce Holiday, John Rowling, the graphics operator, Brad Friedel, one of the camera operators. Your director today has been Logan Mead, Matt Olick, Ed Urban, Logan Joaquin, Kenny Young, Jake Vigna, um, all camera operators. Shelby Newman was our beer assistant. Ted, oh, Ted Kennedy and Brad Kozlowski. Kozlowski. That's it. Uh, hey, camera guys, can we get on that helicopter down there? Yeah. Uh, we're on it right now. There you go. Yeah. Let's get on that Diver, helicopter. Divers are oh, taking diver a Diver in the water. Got some jumpers going off yeah. there. <laughs> Trying to walk. Don't do it, guys. Don't do it. It's not working. No. Oh, oh, no. Wow, that was, a, that was a high one. I can tell you, Ted, you've never had the privilege of riding a helicopter for a boat race, but I've done it once, and it's a pretty cool experience. I know before your time is retired of race, Mr. Race Director for the CBPBA, we'll have to get you up on one of those. And, and ladies and gentlemen, just in case you are watching that, what it is is that, that those divers are in that helicopter all day long looking over these race boats to make sure that everybody's safe and everything, and, and they just do it as a crowd pleaser. They'll expect that helicopter from what is obviously a fairly high distance. They've trained for that. Um, do not try this at home if you have your own helicopter. Um, <laughs> well, no, if you have your own helicopter, you can do it. I, not while you're flying the helicopter, yeah. possibly. But there you see Mark Smalls. You know, you got to give a shout out yeah, to Mark Smalls absolutely. in Cleveland Construction. Absolutely. Also, he went from having his personal 35 foot scarab as a patrol boat to now he has two scarabs and also what's similar to be a Coast Guard rib that he takes to every race and he's the patrol asset he has it set up with divers and air tanks and it's lights great shot and right everything there. it really it really really is and he also paid for the helicopters event huge shout out to mark smalls cleveland construction great guy good friend uh, and another you know brian you said earlier about bob being an ambassador sport for, so is mark smalls mark oh, smalls is a absolutely. great ambassador for what we're trying to do absolutely mark uh mark has really stepped up the the level of commitment on the owner's side of it just putting the pressure on the other guys to do the same, and he is uh, great with the sport. Well, this is just about going to wrap it up for us, everybody. We're, uh, we're, we're pretty much out of racing. All the uh, fun has happened. We've dropped guys out of helicopters. We've had a few <laughs> boats break. We've had a bunch of boats win some cool checkered flags. Yep. Um, for anybody who's there. in the area, we're going to have the award ceremony tonight at 7 o'clock and be giving out all the trophies and all that kind of stuff. Um, we want to thank CTV and their whole crew for doing such a great job on this live broadcast today. Um, please keep up with oparacing.org for uh, our schedule of events and our schedule of live broadcasts. Um, if you have any of your friends who missed this today and you'd like to let them know, if they go to oparacing.org, they can see our YouTube channel and uh, they can watch this race over and over and over again like I do when I go home because... I really enjoy hearing myself on the on the TV. <laughs> that was Mark Smalls driving that boat as he went by. Yes, that Mark is Smalls correct. Mark Smalls personally out there driving the boat. Yeah, he's he's an unbelievable supporter, and and you see Cleveland construction everything all over town, and that's that's awesome. I mean, you can't you can't get you can't ask for someone who loves it and 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 loves it with his wallet as much as 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 that is just awesome. Just some beautiful equipment. So we do want to thank everybody, and we appreciate your time here uh, coming out to watch this race. And as I said, if you have a bucket list of races that you want to go to, this should be on it, absolutely. 
Brian, thank you very much. Thanks it's been fantastic. Me. Mike, thanks for stopping by for the end of the uh, broadcast here. We're nope. always happy to have you. No problem. Thanks to Blue Water Offshore for everything they do for the sport up here. Brad Kazowski, it's great to meet you. You too. Dude, so glad you were here. Yeah, oh, Brad. Oh, boy. It was, oh, 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 boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. a lot of pushing uh, going hey, on right hey, there behind hey, you. Hey, watch that stern there. Oh. Oh. And uh, there you go. Okay, I don't think any fiberglass was exchanged. We're good. I don't think so. And uh, so that'll probably be it. We look forward to uh, seeing you again on the next OPA live broadcast of OPA Racing at oparacing.org. Wasn't that a chick last time I looked back there?